a pinkular arrangement with Quill with Larry Lawton. Taylor. This episode of PKA brought to you by Blue Chew, Death by Gummy Bears, Wonky Weeds, and of course, the premier cum pill, Lock and Load. Check that out. We're joined with Larry Lawton, the most dangerous man in the world. <laughs> Larry, uh, I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I've been watching a bunch of your videos this week, and uh, and, and I messaged uh, Chiz, and I was like, "Man, could we possibly get this? This there's this guy, Larry Law, and he goes, Larry Lawton. Yeah, yeah, I know Larry Lawton. He's got the best videos. He's like, he's like a world famous jewel thief that went away for like a fucking decade. He did like a year at a time in the hole. Like, and he starts, and I'm like, yeah, I know. Could we get him? He's like, I don't know. I'll ask. And so here you are. So I'm, I'm glad you came on. Um, it should be fun. Um, I know a, I've watched a lot of your videos about, I don't know, the, the, the prison stories. And I'd love for you to tell some of those. But I'll be honest, I'm a little bit ignorant about your jewel thievery. And you're like, early, you're criminal. What got you into prison? And that and to I, me, because I've talked to the guys have been in, I, I've heard those stories a lot. And don't get me wrong. I love yours. You've got some unique shit. But I'd like to hear about what it's like to be a jewel thief and, and like how you got into all that. Everything I know about jewel thieves, and well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it comes from movies. So I wonder what his role was. Was he the IT expert? He's not looking like the acrobat, right? I don't think that. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to need a little Asian man who can Were fit you... in a box. <laughs> <laughs> Were you the muscle? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm joking. Please tell us about your jewel thievery. You know, it's really funny. I, I... My son calls me the other day, you know, we, we talk every day, obviously manages everything we do. We have the editors and shit. And he, he says, Hey pops, yeah, we talk like that. You know, well, he's called junior, but you know, he's my son. And I'm so happy that the best thing in my life is actually working with my kid. And he knows how I love working with young people. You guys, I, I, I went on and he says, Hey dad, he gets pops. He goes, Hey, you're going to go on a show. I, I'm going to line you up on a show. I go, when I said, I'm away. He goes, uh, can you go do Thursday? I looked, I said, oh, I'm in Fort Lauderdale Wednesday. I'm coming back Thursday. I'm, I'll make it back. When he said seven at night, I said, yeah. I didn't have to rush back. You know, I came back during the day today. And then what I did last night and today, I, I watched some of you guys' videos, you know, and I love the fucking, the lightness, the comedy, the uh, off the cuff kind of shit. The, you know, I believe in, you know, my biggest thing, and I spoke at Congress. I speak all around the country. Uh, I'm the only ex con as honorary police officer, and I'm not a cop lover. I'll tell you that. But uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> it's funny because I believe in young guys. I really do. Young people, you know, they they just learn different. I was a great quick story. I was in. I'm, I was on a board with the Department of Justice for cops. It's called Community Oriented Policing Service. So you could say, I'm not fucking refined and all that bullshit that they're going to fucking come up. I can speak to whoever I need, you know, mean, meaning a CEO or a gangster. Mm -hmm. Well, I go to this big meeting in the DOJ and the fucking we're all around this table. And one of these fuckers says, you know, some of these young people we got to give up on. Fucking piss me the fuck up. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting here saying, I don't give a fuck about this. I hope they get rid of me. I fucking stand up and I'm kind of a pretty wide guy. I'm pretty noticeable. And I fucking grab my phone and I slam it on the fucking table. And they all look at me, oh, what's this guy doing? You know, I says, can anybody in this room program their phone quicker than their kid? At the time, I had a 15-year-old daughter. And they, they all look at me. I said, not one of you. I says, how do we do it? We get the directions. Page one, hit this, do this, fucking do this. Next page, we get it done. How does my 15-year-old daughter do it? She takes the phone, she starts playing, reboot, 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 does it, says, Dad, here it is. I says, what does it tell all of us at this table? I says that these young people, they learn differently than us. They're smart. They, they, they have different talents. You people at this table are all, I just said it like this, you're all bullshit. I said, the only thing we have over young people is experience. My experience is in a place they don't want to go in my life. Your experience, we might be in the government for 30 years, well, you know how government works, but you're not smarter than these motherfuckers. So don't ever say you're going to give up on somebody or I'm out of here fucking. Everybody look. So we take a break. The heat, they said hey, it was too hot. Now. You know, <laughs> meaning I made it a little bit uh, anxious. And uh, the guy come up. I didn't mean it like that. Bullshit. Hey, bullshit. You said what the fuck you said. Give up. How do you fucking get? You're talking about allocating money for kids and this and some of the bad kids. I, I don't believe in bad kids. I always say that. I believe in bad choices. Mm -hmm. 
but not bad kids. I mean, I've been around bad people, trust me. But most part, young people, I believe, are bad choices. And who the fuck doesn't make them? We all make them. Right today. I'm, I'm guaranteed today I made a couple of bad fucking choices. But, you know, I'm, I'm I mean, you're here. here. <laughs> <laughs> Is this one of them? Yeah. Am uh, I yeah. going to get roasted or some shit that I don't know about? So uh, uh, remind me, how old are you, sir? I am six. I'll be 61 in, in a month. Okay. So, so you're, you're <laughs> I'm your parents' age. Uh, my my dad my dad's on the older side. So uh, both of our dads are on the older side. Yeah, Woody is uh on the right older right. older side himself. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> um, so when did you start your life of crime? Like 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 what was the? Yeah, when I was a kid, I'll say this. Um, I used to steal batteries. Batteries are very expensive. Nine volt batteries for my paintball guns and stuff. My little hobby. It was like fuck this this battery's twelve dollars. Fuck that. I'd steal that shit. Like that, but I never progressed beyond that. I, I wasn't going to get into stealing TVs and cars. How do you I think get we need that? to give up on Kyle as a thief? Yeah, yeah it's not happening. <laughs> he doesn't have a future. Uh-uh. <laughs> Probably a good thing. Uh, you know, it's it's amazing. I was 11 years old. I grew up in the Bronx, New York, which is a rough area. And, and you know, I was people know and it's been I was abused at 11, but I never ever make that a, a part of what happened to people. I mean, some psychologist said that's when you went off the deep end, and it's, it's not true. Uh, I believe, you know, listen, I come from, I was a rough kid. I was the youngest brother of five kids. I was the second young, uh, almost at the bottom. I have one other sister. Well, she passed. But so my, my point is, we grew up in a neighborhood. We didn't have money. We lived in a two-bedroom bungalow with a fucking basement and an attic with five kids and a parents and a dog. And, you know, my dad was a construction, he built the World Trade Center. He was on the job, you know what I mean? He was the foreman on that tin knocking job. Mm -hmm. So then he built, in the attic, he built two bedrooms, my brother and I, and this, we fucking always in mischief. But, you know, I was a kid that, my dad used to take me around back in those days. Uh, they were paying off the mob to do the World Trade Center. I mean, the, everybody doesn't understand how building works in New York. In New York City, if you want to build a building, you better pay the mob. And here's how the shakedown works. It doesn't shake down like, well, I'm going to break your leg. Listen, you're going to pay us 2000 a week. If you don't pay us 2000 a week, you know, something will happen. Okay, uh, fuck you. I ain't paying 2000 a week. That's why the Ro Coleman rink could never be made for 10 years. That's the ice skating rink in New York that took 10 mm -hmm. years. Trump did it in six months. And Trump, Trump's a moron, too. But I ain't going to get into that. But. <laughs> the man could build an ice rink, though. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is in New York is how it works in extortion is if they control the, 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 the cement trucks. So all the truckings or the trunk company. All of a sudden, when you do a building job in New York, that the reason it built so good and they're not going to fall down is – Every truck of cement that comes on a job, they have to pour it into a cone. And if it doesn't stay in certain timing, whatever they do, they have to send that whole truck back. Can't be approved for the job. It's just not common, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So what do they do? Subliminally, they just, every other truck is not right. So they got to send that truck. What happens? You can't pour cement. You, so the carpenters can't go to the next floor. The electricians can't work. The, my, my dad's trained mm -hmm. tin knockers, the, the duct work and stuff. That can't go up to the next floor. It stops a whole fucking job. You know, and first they do is slow it down. And the guy said, what's going on? Hey, the trucks are coming in. You know, they're not right. We can't do it. The, the code guy's right here. You ain't fucking paying somebody for that. And sure enough, the fucking then, you know, before you know it, the guy. Now, most buildings in New York, if they're not done by a specific time, date, because they're that's you know, they already bought all they sold all these condos in this building. Mm -hmm. These people want to move in. If it's not done by this, they get fined like ten thousand a day, twenty thousand a day, big numbers. So this this guy who's the builder, the contractor, he wants to get this fucking building done. He won't want to get fined, it's eating it to all his profits every day that goes by. And you're talking about millions and millions of dollar jobs. Sure enough. Fuck, part of doing business, pay him the 2000 a week, treat that, whatever it is, you pay off. Well, my dad used to do that for the Tin Knox. He was the foreman of the World Trade Center. So he used to go around, pay certain mobsters. I don't know the whole deal. I was a kid. I was mm -hmm. a young kid. And then I learned uh, the, the World Trade Center was built from 68 to 72. 
both buildings, two biggest buildings in the world, took four years and it was done. And uh, well, I used to go around with my dad and they were all mobs to buy it. I'm talking typical shit you see in the movies. I even laugh about it. They got the hat and the cigar and the fucking, you know, <laughs> takes you in the bathroom to make a bet. You know what I mean? Like, they had yeah. flash paper back then. They call it flash paper. You could write on it, they, uh, a spark hit, boom, just flows away. Oh, yeah. So and, and it would be gone. So we we uh, I used to go around play play pinball and stuff and and with the mobses and stuff. So I I understood that already that things are going on. So at eleven years old, a guy in our neighborhood is a big mobster. Well, his son was like 22, 23, and he ran the football tickets. You guys know what football tickets are? You pick three, you put a dollar, you get five dollars. You pick four, you put a dollar, you get ten. They're, they're called football team. I even did them in prison. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I was running tickets, and this is 1972, 73, 11, 12 years old, and I'm going door to door to the teacher, to the fucking sanitation, the electrician, the, you know, a whole neighborhood. Hey, you know, you want to play a ticket? Everybody, yeah, kid, here's two dollars. They put it on, and I was making twenty five cents every dollar. 24, you so, so whose game is this that you're running? Like, I mean, that you're that you're selling tickets for? Is this is this yours or is this somebody else's that's scared? No, no, no. This is the mob guy. The yeah, guy's son. So how do you cool. hooked up with that guy? How do you how do you? They live in the neighborhood. Guy? My mom oh. actually took care of the the mobs for himself. My mom was a nurse. Okay. So when he she was like in that area, she was almost like the doctor in the area. You know, I didn't have a doctor. Mm. She ever patch up some bullet wounds? <laughs> she actually did to my brother. That's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, I actually, in, <laughs> I'm in my studio. I don't know if you guys, uh, what I did was I built a studio here, right? Into the whole place, right? It's pretty cool to do that light. Are cool. You guys mm-hmm. can't see the light. But anyway, we built the whole studio. And I did it because I live with my mom. And uh, my mom is 89. And I lost two sisters already to cancer. So I was pretty much the only one who could come back and help my mom. You know, so it's really and, admirable. You know, it's I'll never regret it, but it's funny. You know, she when you you know when are you gonna be back? I said, Mom, I'm sixty fucking. I don't say fuck, but <laughs> years old. I, mean, I gotta tell you when I'm coming back. What is what the? I'm the but, uh, you know, you know, if you want, if you don't like it, move out of your mom's house. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Living under my roof. Gonna... Yeah, but you know, she, she can't say that now because if I leave, true. she has to leave. She has to go live with my sister and she don't want to do that. So, but she has to, you know, she's pretty much on her own here. I don't bust her chops. My mother's been smoking cigarettes for 70 years. You think I'm the fucking teller? Don't put, don't smoke. Get the fuck out of here. Smoke a joint, ma. You want a little heroin? You want a little. (laughs) At 89, who gives a fuck? You want some crystal? Anything she wants. Anything she wants. No, so so I uh, I wanted to understand, like, how old are you when you literally have a job for the mob selling these football tickets? Well, let, you call it a job. It was a kid who was hustling the football tickets. Yeah, now, but you know to show up on time. Oh, you no, know you have you need to, to get not done only show and up. you're getting paid. Not only show That's up, you job. pick up the tickets, you got to do collections. That's a job. <laughs> I, I was 12 years old and I was, listen to this, in 1972-3, I was making $125 a week. That's cash money. That was a lot of money back then, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think back at that. Obviously, that's a fucking thing. Then you're around. The neighborhood I grew up with, everybody was a fucking, I hate to say everybody, but every, we hung on the streets. We fucking did the drugs back then. It was the acid and shit like that was coming out. You know, that was 69, 70s, you know, into the, you know, mid-70s. We did a lot of that. Matter of fact, I remember streaking was big. You guys don't even know what streaking is, do you? Streaking. Yeah, running naked through Oh, somewhere. yeah. Yeah, that was like a major thing back then. We used to streak on the highways and shut down highways. You know, <laughs> literally, a bunch of fucking They make you a sex offender, you do that shit now. now. The what? <laughs> they make you a sex offender, you do that now. Oh, I know. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Listen, our dicks were so small back then, they didn't know what the fuck. <laughs> uh, it was the 70s. Everyone's dicks were small. Yeah. <laughs> the weed right. was weak and the dicks were small. Those classic <laughs> 70s dicks. <laughs> <laughs> the bushes were big. Hairy and small. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hairy bushes. <laughs> so at, at 12 years old, I was making money, you know, and we did other things. Then we used to rob the stores. Like we had a big avenue, East Truman Avenue. 
When I say rob the stores, we get a kid that was working in there at 15 years old. So when that kid worked, we already figured out a scam. One kid was bringing out all the fucking the lobsters and the steaks high end out the back door into the dumpster. We'd pick it up at night, fucking do it, sell it to people on the street. We're making money. And we're all gambling and doing shit. We were just hustlers. You know, we didn't come from money. No, we had no money, like I said. And, you know, I remember my dad gets laid off, you know, and you're trying to raise five kids in a house. And, you know, it, it, it's, I understood it. I remember, and, and it's, oh, my parents are the greatest, meaning that way. They gave us the, the support. You know, there's no prejudice in me. They gave me things that I think I look at now that I try to give my kids or whatever. But, you know, I remember playing basketball in my slippers because at that time they couldn't afford $2 Ked sneakers or whatever the fuck they were in the, in the Kmart. But I'm not ever bitter, you know, I, I, but I like the money, you know. Well, <clears throat> what let me ask you this. Huh? You've got you got your dad who's got like this straight job and uh, then there's you who's running around hustling. Like, is there ever a convert? What does he say when he like figures out what's going on? Is there a well, conversation like it, it just sounded so much like the movie A Bronx Tale because <laughs> you're literally in the Bronx and you're you're running around the neighborhood with the mob doing little jobs for him. And your dad has a real job. So it's, it's we're, so far we're beat for beat with the Bronx too. Yeah, I really really had that Robert De Niro talk where he where he was like, "That's dirty money. You don't want that. That's my money, Dad. And I leave that money in there." Like, you know I love the movie. He knows the fucking movie real good. That's good. Oh, you'd be surprised. See, uh, he knows them all. No, absolutely not. What it was? Of course, I knew where that movie was made, and it is, and it was that kind of era, same time. Uh, we didn't have that prejudice that was in that movie. We didn't, in my neighborhood, we didn't give a fuck if you were a fucking green Martian. If you live there, you were in. If you didn't, you were out, period. End of story. You know, it didn't matter mm -hmm. what you were in that neighborhood. It just mattered that you were in that neighborhood. So sure. my dad, you said like Robert De Niro was this guy. No, nah, my dad was paying off mob guys. My dad was doing the money. He was a, you know, he ran that job, which is the World Trade Center. He had 200 guys at the time. So he understood that was just part of life. He had that. Yeah, you know, in New York, that even his life. I mean, he took yeah. me to the bars where he went betting at 12 and young. And even I used to drive him home at 14, you know, because he'd get fucking hammered at the bar. And I'd fucking, you know, I made my first bet in a bar at 13 years old. I remember when I did it. It was a 12, it might have been 12 or 13, but I... Fuck, it was with Vinny Tremamuno, who's the guy. He's in the Triangle Bar at Bure Avenue. And, you know, how betting works, if you make a 20-time bet, that's $100. Every time is $5. So if I say I want a 10-time bet, it's $50. You got to pay 50, $55 when you give them the money because you have to pay the VIG. It's a 10% VIG or interest, whatever. Now, if you win, you're going to get $105 back. You're 50 the 50 you won, and your VIG. You don't have to pay the VIG on the win. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get that back. So, but see, a book, you don't give a shit. He gets $50 on this team, $50 on the opposite team. He mm -hmm. automatically makes five bucks. He don't yeah, give a fuck. Like winning. running a poker game. He doesn't care who's winning. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, it, and a real good book is like that. I end up, that's deeper down the story. But so my dad was... He's on the fringes, if you want to call it that, with paying yeah. people off, betting. And so and, he's definitely not taking you aside back at home and being like, hey, he's being, he's probably saying $125, huh? That's not bad. All right. I didn't tell him. I didn't oh, tell good. Him. <laughs> <laughs> you got I might have got dollars down by my dad. <laughs> you got like 500 bucks under the mattress. Your dad's like, your dad's probably got 500 under his. <laughs> you, you said you, you think he would have actually shook you down, took some money from you. Yeah, I was very, very close to my dad. Uh, so, you know, he so you go from this 12 year old, you go from this 12 year old running around the neighborhood selling these tickets and doing these little things here and there. How does that get to being world famous jewel thief? Yeah, well, you, you, you missed the whole fucking area. I know, I want it. You know, Kyle. <laughs> Come with me. <laughs> Come with me. There you go. He's here now. The, uh, no, from 12 years old, we started rob robbing shit in the streets. You know, like I said, the hustles. So then we even got a guy with a car hustle. We were getting 500 bucks a car. They'd tell you to rob cars and get five. And then we would take him to a chop shop over near Pelham and Split Rock. It's in the Bronx. Literally two golf courses in the Bronx. Figure that fucking shit out. But in the fucking <laughs> backwoods, there was a chop shop. Any car? So, huh? 
any car? Like you you get five hundred dollars a car, just whatever car. No, they you tell they tell you what not specifically any of these, any of these, any of these. This year and up, five hundred bucks, no questions asked. Mm-hmm. Boom, walk in, drive it. And here's how we rob them. In New York, in the in the summer, in the winters, people would go out and start their car and go in and get their coffee and get warm <laughs> and heat their car up. We'd go right down the block. You'd see the smoke come up. Drop me off. Jump in the car. The guy's up there. Ten more minutes. That car's gone. <laughs> yeah. It's warmed up. It's warmed up. It's <laughs> really nice. I mean, you know and we even got so brazen with that, Woody. It was crazy because what we did was we would go like people also pull up in front of a bagel store or a, or a luncheonette and run in to get the paper and a, and a bagel and the shit. So what do we do? We watch, you know, hanging out right out front near the meter there. He pulls up, double parked. Nobody's in front of him. He walks out. We're walking right by him, jumping a car. He <laughs> right, come, some of them, one guy almost got us, turned around, saw what was going on, I was hitting the car. But, <laughs> they, you know, it was, and we had the keys. <laughs> yeah. We didn't give a shit about it. They didn't care about that. But we would bring it into this area, $500, kid, $500, kid. You know, no wonder I fucking said fuck school. I mean, I was very, yeah. sc- I mean, I have a very high IQ. I don't mean that to be, you know, smart ass or anything like that, but I didn't go to school. I hated school. I got my degree and all that shit later uh, from prison, really, more than anything. But uh, mm-hmm. what happened was I'm saying fuck this shit. And then my brain's saying, wait, this is trouble, man. I got to get out of here. So I go in the Coast Guard. I go, I'm a retired veteran. I didn't, you know, matter of fact, some fan sent me this. Look what he wrote. Larry Lawton, Semper Paratus. U.S. Coast Guard retired. Uh-huh. I'm Fair retired enough. Coast Guard. Well, thank you for your service. Thank you. For I your knew service. that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> you get That's discounts with that. You read the book, you get to see how good that service did. I, I, I robbed. We robbed three uh, bales. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, <clears throat> so what happened was I go into service. I actually liked it. I, I did well in it, rose in rank. I was a boat captain. I was on the Freedom Flotilla with Cubans. I was on the first, the, the Sunshine Skyway Bridge in Florida, getting hit by a tanker and all those people. I, was, I got a bunch of medals and shit for that. But I liked it. Went to Alaska on a ship. I had 60 guys working for me. Of course, hustle is always in my head. So who didn't want duty would be paying me 20 bucks and this guy and this shit. We had this kid named, I'll never forget, I won't mention his name. He had the biggest dick I ever saw on a phone. <laughs> oh, say his name for the love of God. Yeah, Give his address out. So <laughs> what happened was he was fucking some weird. We're stationed in Hawaii. I'm on the Coast Guard Cutter Jarvis. And the, now I had all these guys working for me. He's like 55 seamen and all that. Well, when we'd come into port, you know, I have to sign duty. He'd always say, like, give me 20 bucks, both, please. Come on. I, he was fucking some 50-year-old lady. This kid was 21, 22. He's fucking some 50-year-old lady whose husband died, left him. He, he could use the condo, use the Mercedes, use everything. And this fucking kid was banging the shit out. He was a jiggle. It was really what he was. <laughs> and we, we loved it because we'd see the captain fucking drive out with a fucking, like, Volkswagen. This kid is a fucking... You know, E threes running around on a Mercedes Benz and fucking <laughs> going to his condo on fucking Waikiki man. Beach. But uh, so I go to the Coast Guard. I did. I fell. I got hurt in the service. I fell and crushed my spine. I can show you pictures. The whole spine. And I ended up getting retired. And that, right when I got retired, this is 1985. I go right back to the fucking Brooklyn, and I'm fucking back in the game. Because what am I going to do? I'm sitting there. Now, mm-hmm. I had actually about a year before I was actually retired to because they didn't know what to do with me. I was getting blood taken for future surgeries. Used to have to, they, every three weeks, I used to have to take a train from New York to Bethesda Naval Hospital you mm-hmm. know, in Washington, D.C. and from, the, from New York. And so I, was, I had no duty or anything like that. And I just, mm-hmm. you know, fucking was right back in it. I start collecting and I start fucking muscling. I was a pretty big, tough kid. I was collecting and muscling for a card game in New York, down in Queens, underneath. You had to have, this is back then, you had to have $10,000 to get in the fucking room. You know, I used wow. to see 20, 30, 40 people getting this place. I'm thinking, 
all that fucking money down there. Holy shit, mm -hmm. you know? But I'm up there. I'm one of the, you know, the guys. You know, had, You're watching after the money. What's money? Yeah, yeah. You know, but <laughs> are musclers ever required to use it? Or is it just intimidation? Like No, no. I mean, listen, if the guys are coming in packed with guns and stuff, there's a war going on for that because that game is protected. You know, that they're, they're mob family run games. They're not. Mm -hmm. You can't. You couldn't. Woody. And Kyle can say, hey, let's get this nice poker game going over here in Brooklyn, you know, and we get all these guys. Oh, you can do it. Once it gets good, making money, they're going to come see you, and now you're going to be paying people. Or, You'll be their game now. Huh? You'll be their partner now in, in your, in, in your uh, own game. Absolutely. Like, oh, you've got a great game here. I'm, I'm glad you did that for us all. Let's, I uh, hate to see something <laughs> happen to it. It's every Thursday, right? You'll pay us. <laughs> um, so, so did you ever have to go and, like, collect on, on debts for people? Because that, that part of, like – that's the you hear about organized crime and, and it's like uh, there's always the oh yeah well what if i don't right and so the guy who shows up is the this is what if you don't so like yeah. when, the, when the rubber hits you know, the road there what is that like you you know kyle that's a great question and it's something i sometimes struggled with a lot in my life now because i did bad things to people i laid a kid's arm on a curb and snapped it like a fucking twig i took an iron and i actually tell that whole story in the book. I'm going to send you all books. You just give me I appreciate that. that. I really Thank do so much. Yeah, I'll yeah. sign books. You, yeah. you, you'll love them. It, we'll it, send you cum pills. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to love them. They're great. We'll send you uh, cum pills and drugs. Ten, <laughs> ten pages? Yeah. How many pages? Ten? <laughs> hey, listen, if, if it's about drugs and women and booze and crazy shit, I'm in. I don't, orgies, threesome, oh, we don't, pipes. And we don't have any liter literature per se, but we do have a product that will increase your se your semen volume. And we have uh, we have some really powerful weed gummies. That's about all we do around here. You know, it's great. I saw Tyler in one other one, one other show talk about, the, you know, you're talking about, and I'm cracking up fucking saying whatever this fucking, and then you're whatever commercial you're doing. I know how they work. But it's funny, I'm thinking, oh, yeah. If I take the shot. Fuck the fucking pills. You know, the shot's the thing. You, what kind of shot? Look at you guys. Are all Look, I shut them shot. up. That's what I wanted to do. <laughs> I want to know about the shot. I'm yeah, not aware of, of a shot that increases your Yeah, it's level. called Trimix. Actually, a male porn star told me about it. Trimix. That's what they use. If you look it up, it's called Tri, T-R-I-M-I-X. It's a needle you put in your penis. You oh, your this shit. isn't the same thing. Okay, and if that's our competitor, I feel safe and sound. <laughs> <laughs> Are you tired of injecting your cock with enormous needles? <laughs> Never. Look no further. They're yeah, not this small. It doesn't hurt, you know. Looks like so, they're mostly about getting your dick hard. Yeah, that's what I saw, too. Not about... Listen, the reason, <laughs> listen I get my dick hard all the time. Mm, Me so too. We, if I have too much to drink, too much to smoke, too much partying, whatever, then I can't get it up. I said, fuck this shit. I want to party, have fun, and get it up. I don't want to be sober and have to be perfect to get it up. Try that it. takes okay. the fun out of it. Okay, so, so this is for like for getting a, a big hard one, huh? Is that that's that's the point? The longest one I had, Kyle, was seven hours. Oh my god. I'm, I'm they direct you to the emergency room after four. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm pretty oh, sure they send you a certificate after that. No. <laughs> you get a purple heart. <laughs> That's what, what they told play you, buttons for. <laughs> what they give you is a reverse shot. They, uh, gonna... Purple hard would have been a better joke. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> purple cock. <laughs> purple hard. See, the needle purple. guys are not bad. Oh, you're not even fucking kidding, Larry. I mean, I'm... I... <laughs> I mean, I, I know all about insulin pins, but I'm just saying, like, I'm not sticking this motherfucker in my cock. Where, Why where not? In your, where in your penis? Because it would hurt like a motherfucker. Nah, come on. I, I've threshold. stuck it everywhere. I put it in my belly fat for for certain That's stuff. That's very I'm important. I'm actually curious. Can you tell Everybody me where in your it. dick it goes? Does it go yeah. in? Yeah. Like, is it sub Q? Like the base? base like, 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 around your balls area? Woody, like, good question. There? It goes in the, into the base but not on the top. What is the thing? It's got to go into the. There's a, they, they call it sir. So I don't know. The, you know, medical name. But there's a chamber in between is where it goes in. And if you have to reduce it, you shoot the same chamber. All it does is really <laughs> it opens up blood vessels, and it lets your fucking. Oh, I bet it does. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Well, I'm telling you, I I'm should stick to the oral. This shit. I want to fucking get a sponsor from them. 
<laughs> I, I'm gonna stick with the oral pill because I don't have to We're put that in my, in my head. What if, what, if blue chew wor- <laughs> what if the way blue chew worked is you had to take that pill and stick it in the head of your penis? You had to yeah, get it all the way in there like a cock suppository. You know, I, I bet that would be bad for sales. <laughs> Listen, I hear sales plummet. <laughs> and I told this, and they do, and all I found out all the porn stars do it is. Anybody who's ever done, they go, I understand now. I didn't even hurt a little bit. It really is like, you know, pink, you know, like a pinch on your fucking thing. It's not everybody's, okay, so, you know, it's, so it's the mental injection, thing. This is an injection that's going to give you a hard on for probably longer than you want. But but what, what happens when you finish? Does it just stay hard? Uh, yeah, I mean. <laughs> this this thing's just staying at attention no matter what? Like you can go two, I three, usually, four rounds? I usually can ejaculate two to three times, but. Obviously, at my age, not much is coming out. I need that shit. Right? Just a poof. Yeah, God, yeah, the, yeah uh, you need some of this. Some lock the, up. We'll send you some. We'll send you some. I wish it was that easy. The uh, but it is. It works. You got to take nine pills a day. You got to want it. Yeah. What, what is it? Put come in me, and then it fucking just yes. out there. It, it stimulates your prostate to create more seminal fluid, so that your orgasm is going to be longer because you're going to be pumping a higher volume of cum out. You you're going like to blow. You're going to blow the mind of everyone out there. If we were trying Look to fool people. <laughs> If we were trying to fool people, we'd say to take one pill a day. The reason it's nine a day is because it's an efficacious dose. That's all there is to it. It's ridiculous. It's it, it, there's a couple benefits. One, like he said, the volume is higher and the orgasm is longer. It, listen, the, the I've tried every shit in the book. It's white. It's a it's a beautiful load you'll be dropping on her. Pearlescent. Pearlescent. And and I I like the propulsion. I like the fact, you know, they did. I, if you're thinking it's on her belly and all of a sudden it's over her shoulder, then you win. Oh, no, on her face. Yeah, I was trying to be polite, but you know what? You're right. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. All I don't think head. you aimed for her left or right shoulder, did you? I went over her head. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, what he's coming in vats. <laughs> you know, the pillows. I'd love to know, and, and believe me, I've done stuff. I have doctors. We hang out with friends, and, and obviously I asked them. Actually, a porn star friend of mine told me about it, and he said, I asked him, I said, man, man there's something wrong. How do you fucking do it? He goes, everybody's using Trimix. I go, what the fuck's Trimix? Like, you guys. Are. And he goes, come here, I'll show you. And, he, and I Google it and fuck and I'm you stuck it. it in your dick. Come here, I'll show you. Do you, uh, so, so um, do, you, do you also do testosterone replacement or anything like that? No, no, I'm not a replacement. I have to take testosterone because of my age. I well, mean, same thing. Yeah, yeah. So you're replacing the testosterone that you're not mm-hmm. making anymore. Yeah, yeah that's, yeah. Now, uh, even even with low testosterone, Kyle, and everything, I never had a problem getting it up. The testosterone yeah. has helped me with any like energy more than anything. Not mm. anything sexual, actually. You sure. Know? Yeah. Uh, but um, it, energy, energy. You know, it, it kind of replenished my energy a little bit. And the trimix was something that you know we were all at a party, is what happened. And when you're at a party, sometimes you can't get it up. Whatever the fuck happens, because whatever your party. What kind mm-hmm. of party is this we're, we're describing? Because at first I pictured balloons and cake, and I don't nah. think that it's that kind nah, of party. I would call no, it balloons. Really I'd call it drinks <laughs> and libations and uh, ladies and music and uh, orgy okay. rooms and whatever. There's, oh, see, there, why don't we just skip straight to orgy rooms? Why don't you mention music you, and you, like you, You've got to lead with that. You're burying lead the lead. <laughs> no, 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 no. Gentlemen, you know, in those kind of places, in those kind of clubs, you have to go in and you – you get into it, you know. Obviously, people don't know that. Uh, any kind of swingers club or anything like that, they have the high least STD rates. The actually with within the in the marriage community, those people who are, are swingers and stuff have a less divorce rate uh, than all the because they take sex out of the equation pretty much in any marriage. You know, the guy wants it every minute of every day, the girl never wants it, or vice versa, what happens, you know, there's friction that goes. If you're both on the same page, you're both swingers and whatever happens, you do your shit, everybody's there. Yeah, I mean, you have your other issues, obviously, divorces with money, communications, and a lot of that. Mm-hmm. But you usually don't get the cheating aspect of it. I, I, I've been married tw- uh, twice, mm-hmm. and I, I, I just actually broke up with my girl after 14 years, so I'm on the wow. market. Oh, no. Like, like, like how recently? A week, Two weeks ago. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Really yes. recently. Yeah, okay. 14 years. But you know what? It had to happen. Forget it. it was And it, Again, nothing over sex ever or money or even, but, and any of my marriages, I'm great friends. I was just, I said yesterday I was in Fort Lauderdale and I was visiting my daughter and my ex-wife and we're great friends. And my first, my son's mother, which is my first wife, 
We're all good friends. We all, uh, what I mean by that is we never had an issue. Like, you know, it was that money. It was me. I was a gangster. I was a bad guy. He didn't mm-hmm. want to be, I don't want bullets coming at your house. You know, that, you know, it, I was just, I, I wasn't a good guy. I want to emphasize that when you read the book, you know, I hope you all read it. I will. It's, it's a crazy ride. I was just talking to Netflix about a, a movie or a series, Ooh, but wow. Ooh, that'd be fun. you know, I was a bad and I look at it and I want people, you know, I had a judge friend of mine, good friend. He reads the book after he knows me a while. I do my program. I developed the number one program in the country for young people. And I thought it's used in court systems and stuff like that. So they use it and the judge comes to me and you know, we hang out, we golf. And he says, you were despicable. I go, what the fuck are you talking about? That's what I tell him. He goes, you only got arrested for about 10% of what you did. <laughs> I said, judge, statue of limitations. <laughs> so, but, you know, listen, so in that game, we were on the penis game and in that game, the best stuff I've ever done in my life is that. The okay. Trimax. The Trimax. I, so- you, when, when you all hit 60, mm-hmm. I, I won't be here, but when you all hit 60, <laughs> fucking remember what we talked about. You're not going to be here in 11 years? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Probably <You'll> not. <laughs> Yeah, me neither. <laughs> you you mentioned uh, <laughs> very good, Woody. <laughs> I, I want to get to the the jewel thief thing, but just to go back real quick, you you kind of mentioned in passing that one at one point your mom had to remove a bullet from your brother. How did that happen? Could you well, lay you that? Know, out? That will get into I think with the robberies because that happened at a robbery, and I'll explain the whole situation how it happened. The bullet went okay. skimmed through my head. I got blood here. And I'm ducking and it goes in him. And and back then it was different. I, I, I'll get into the story when I talk to sure, you about sure. the last robbery. That was the last robbery, actually. Uh, All right. So where then, were we? Um, you, you had uh, you had come back from your 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 heroically your heroic tour of duty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I came back from the dirt. I was doing the card games. I was mm-hmm. muscle in the card games. I was doing collecting. Uh, and again, that's kind of a little bit. But, you know, people ask me all the time, do I regret anything? I don't believe in the word regret. I don't. It, it, you should learn from everything you do. Would I change things? Obviously. Wouldn't want to lose my children. Wouldn't want to lose certain things. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't regret it. It makes you who you are the next day. No matter who you are, who you become, you start regretting things. It changes the whole kind of – it's like that old dynamic. If, if, if somebody got killed, that – was your father and couldn't have been born and how many things change. Sure. So I just think uh, I, it's not about regrets. You know, I would totally change that part of me. And I don't know if I was kind of a little crazy, crazy because I didn't feel anything. You know, it's not like, you know, I'm thinking, oh, fuck. I always justified it because I never hurt somebody who wasn't in my game. I never heard a robbery uh, person in a store or a fucking old lady. We protect people. I protect kids. Uh, that's my thing, you know, mm-hmm. and, but if you were in the fucking drug game, the robbing game, the gambling game, the whatever the fuck it was, I kind of figured you know the fucking game, you know, and, and you shouldn't mm-hmm. fucking be in the shouldn't have been here. up for. It's but, you know, game. what I did was a little extreme, Kyle. That's why that's what I, I wanted to ask you about. So, like, what did this guy have to do? How much money did this guy and, and like, how did he uh, get this debt where you take an iron to him? Well, that iron case was a guy uh, stole 75000 from one of our bookies. It's quite a bit. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, so somebody's deserved, mad now. actually. Yes. <laughs> no, somebody stole 70, 70 but he, he this guy stole seventy five thousand. Okay. And of course we got the word out. You don't do this shit and you know that's bad shit. Anyway, of course we find some kids, they snitch on them right away. We know who it is. And uh, I was told to Larry take care of this and in my way. And I said, Okay. I took the guy. Yeah, I don't know if you know New York City, any of you guys. They have cellars. There's like cellars. You go down the stairs underneath. They're in they're like mm-hmm. cellar. You know, there's a grating and it opens up and then you walk downstairs. Yeah, actually, downstairs. yeah. So we had a cellar below the bar and uh, I went and told a kid, a guy named Joe Cass. I said, Joe, go get the iron. He gets an iron. We had a couple of things. I got the guy sitting in a chair in there. And he's 21 years old. He's a young kid. Now, I'm only 27, maybe. What's holding him there? Fear or is he bound in some way? No, no. I'm going to tell you. He, he's tied to the chair. Mm-hmm. I got him tied to the chair like this. He had his hands behind his back. And I had his pants down to his ankles. Everything. He's naked. He's naked all up here. And he's like this. Tied. 
And I said to him, uh, I was just talking to him. I said, you know, pretty stupid to rob these people. You know, well, why do you do this? What? I didn't do it. I swear to God. I swear to God. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I said, really? Yeah. So the iron's getting hot. I said, listen to me. I'm going to ask you one more time. Where is the money? I didn't do it. Right on his chest. I smell it when I tell this story. A fucking, there's a, there's a, uh, uh, an iron mark right on his chest. Mm -hmm. And it, I could smell it. And I fucking, he screams. I hear that scream. Matter of fact, some people who've been with me said, man, I heard you at night. And that's that and a scream in prison. I'll tell you about that story. But so you do that. <laughs> then Jesus. everybody's just sitting there. Quiet. Stuck in the middle with you is let, playing. Now, let me ask you this. <laughs> I'm sure there's a yeah. couple more goons watching you take the old uh, iron to this guy. Yeah. Nice and wrinkle free over here. Now, are they <laughs> are they reacting like, holy shit, Larry's hardcore? Or are they like, yeah, Larry, make him talk? Just nah, how Larry just, rolls. Larry nah. fucking gets some smooth nah, shit. But, you know, it wasn't like that. Anyone Hit him with the steam there. button. <laughs> <laughs> Any one of us would have did anything. Okay, okay. okay. So they're so, not... Uh, but they're, I, they're just like, was, I was a little bit more... Fucking didn't give a fuck. I mean, I, I mean, was, you were the man with the iron in his hand, you know. Yeah, That's they put it. you well, in I mean, charge of handling it. And then I looked right down at his dick. I said, I'm going to ask you one more fucking time. 69th Street, 12th Avenue, on the third floor. Because he knew I wasn't playing. You know, I tell everybody, everybody, I love guys who think they're tough ass. And they say, oh, man, I, you can never get that out of me. Trust me. I will fucking get it out of you. <laughs> I don't you'll doubt tell it. On your mother, you'll tell on your sister, your brother, your kid. Yep. You, you want to know, Larry? Exactly. <laughs> you know, Larry, you know, honest. All yeah, you, you got, got to me. do is show me. You know that thing in movies. You just that, email the, me, man. The guy, they bring in the torture. <laughs> they bring in the torture expert, and he like unrolls that little wrap of tools. When I see that wrap. It could be the motherfucker. It could be his lunch. But oh, if I yeah. see that cloth, I'm like, hey, hey, I see what you got there. Let's talk about what you want to know. <laughs> yeah. And you, you know, it. you know, that guy is not a fisherman in his spare time. No, he <laughs> just has the accoutrement. No. Larry, he I want to know this. This is, this is funny. So you're there. The guy's bound to the chair. He's is there anything the he can say that. to just what make said, this go he, away? Right. Can, can he if he spills the information you're looking for, can he get away without punishment or he's going to get one burn regardless? No, he would have got away with maybe a beat, but not not what happened. Okay. He's walking around with a fucking iron on his chest. Now he is. But he could have just had a, you know, black eye. You know, yeah. a fucking black back eye, a couple of broken ribs, something, nothing being good. A beating you could walk away from. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he walked away. This one was a little bit rougher. Yeah, uh, I'd take the beating over the iron every day, though. Exactly. What happened with that, you know, you just made me laugh. Four friends of ours, we went, we took us, you know, one of the guys that plane. So we fly down to the Keys from where I live. And we were talking just about that torture story because they go, Larry, man, I, you know, it's in your book or it's in places. And people talked about it on one of the big shows. And he goes, is that fucking guy crazy? He goes, all you would have had to do is say, listen, hey, I tried. I didn't get it. Here's the money. What do you want? Let's talk about this. I don't want to get tortured. Yeah. Because I don't give a fuck who you are. If you got me in that position, you get whatever the fuck you want. I mean, and if you're a smart person, all they'd all you'd have to do is is call me and be like, hey, Kyle, I know that it was you <laughs> with that 75 grand. Now be a good boy, package it up real nice, count it before you come, bring it over here. And hey, bring 2500 extra. You could say that, and I would. Because I would know, I would know that all right, it's either that or I yeah. leave New York State, A or B. Maybe I need to go to Canada after I pull this. And yeah, it's seventy-five grand at the end of the day. I'm bringing you, know, you the money plus interest. You know, it's funny me being in that business. And one of the one time I did a lot of robberies, you know, and they paid me in cash with fucking a, a, a counter machine. I don't know if you guys ever saw the counter machine on TV. No, yeah. they go like this, and if it's a counterfeit, it shoots out the top. That's how it worked. Yeah. So they would pay me, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand in a bag. Maybe. They take out the suitcase of, I don't know, maybe four or five million in it. And I come back up to my crew and I go, man, I just saw four or five. I'm going back down. Let's go fucking get this fucking money. They plead with me. No, please, Larry. No, no. Because I was crazy and we would have been dead. You know, yeah, you know, what do I do? Go down there and get five million and then. I'm dead, like you said. I, I, yeah. I don't even left the country. 
you know. wouldn't do it. You couldn't just go to Italy, live out the rest of your life. No, no, Maybe Italy's no. Italy would be the mum. Bro- they don't run out of the mum for me. They didn't really think this through. I never <laughs> suspect that right under the nose. <laughs> yeah. I got a ticket to Sicily. I'm out of here, suckers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm terrible at this. I, I, w- I want to know about, like, so once. Once the situation has occurred where he doesn't want you to burn him anymore, and so he goes, it's on 68th Street at the third floor. Is there any sort of weirdness where you're like, all right, well, we'll untie you? What's that like? Like you no. just untie him and you say, get the hell out of here, no. or is it? No, I I look at his dick and he blurts it without a kid was sweating. You, you know, I remember vividly. And he goes, uh, I said, Joe, I said, Joe actually got the keys out of the kid's pocket. And they were on like on the floor down there. His ankles gets the keys. Goes now. I got 12, fifteen minutes because it's you know, mm-hmm. not far. Fifteen minutes to just. I'm talking to a kid. I go, why the fuck did you just fucking tell me where it is? You fucking tell me. You don't think I knew that it was you, you motherfucker? I told you, your fucking friends told on you. Mm-hmm. And he's fucking crying. He, he still don't know what's gonna happen. So he's you know you could see his wheels turning. Is he gonna get killed? Is fucking this? Mm-hmm. And I just let it back. Listen, the money comes back. And it's only 70000 now. No big deal. Didn't nope. charge him. Didn't do anything. Counter it. I, I says, 5000 missing, you know. And he didn't say anything. He did, what, what are you going to say? You know what I mean? He yeah. mm-hmm. used it or whatever it was. I didn't even say anything. I said, okay. I says, Joe, let him loose. And I said, listen, let everybody know if they ever fucking rob one of the guys in this crew, They'll never walk out of here. And that was it. He was our warning. He was the warning to anybody else to fuck with a bookie or any. I mean, people knew it. Most people. That's pretty fair, to be honest, because I think that a lot of people think that that story would end with him just being dead over 5,000. But yeah, but but, on TV, it would. But it just doesn't seem like that. I think you saw and you just knew that 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 wasn't necessary there. Like the message was sent, right? Like, Like, dude, I you don't have to cut my toes off. You beat the shit out of me, and I'll get the fucking message. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in, in, in this case, in, in this case, these uh, it, I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> okay, in this case, uh, listen, it, it was a message that had to be sent that you can't fuck with, you know, any of the bookies. Bookies are all controlled by somebody in New York, and they have them all over the place. There might be one at the, the this bar. There might be one at the. Uh, the car service, they had car service, they didn't have Uber, uh, you know, that this one, or it might be at the flower shop or wherever the fuck it is. So it had to be known that you can't fuck around with the people. And and it was, I see what happened was I used to come back in 19, I get mad when I got married, it was a big mob wedding in New York on 18th Avenue. It, it's called uh, the Oriental Manor. We had, we had the three halls. We had them all. One for the cocktail hour, one for the wedding and one for the, uh, uh, fucking uh, reception. Like just the gangs to hang out, watch football, and do whatever the fuck we want to do. And we, it was a mob wedding, two two crazy families. So we're sitting there, and fucking my 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 new brother in law. I don't believe I'll tell you. Yeah, my brother in law is now my brother in law. You know, friend. Mm-hmm. Him and now on the dais, we all fuck. We had a, a prime rib and lobsters on the dais. You know, you know, for the whole wedding and all sure. that. Nobody on the fucking day said ate anything because we're all fucking coked up. So my new <laughs> brother-in-law and I are in the bathroom doing line. In comes my new father-in-law. <laughs> seeing his son and now his daughter's husband <laughs> doing fucking lines in the fucking bathroom. I give that man credit. We're friends to this day. He's 80, I think 80 something. And uh, he, he, he says... They need you to cut the cake, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Never mentioned it once. But like you said, Kyle, a message was sent. I knew it. We fucked up. No more words needed to be fucking said. And to this day, I, I talk about it because it was amazing. And we've always got a long break still to this day. I mean, I had to have a sit down with him when my ex-wife didn't want me to see my kid, really. But that was taken care of one time. And that was it. All my all my divorces were never a lawyer, cash in a bag, this thing, you know, whatever the fuck it is. You do your own thing. Cash in the uh, bag. Cash in the bag. That's probably so much easier. 
<laughs> Honestly, lawyers don't we like already you. have the bag. Yeah, the lawyers <laughs> don't like you. But the, so now let me get where we're at. So do that guy. Uh, no big deal, obviously. Do did stuff like that. But I'm in Florida now. This is 87. When I go down, I get married, and then I go down to Florida six months later, open a pizzeria, a fucking Lenny's pizzeria. I end up burning the whole plaza down. I didn't like pizza. But no, not on purpose. It was a thing. I was doing hot diamonds in the in the day. I remember I had a good pizzeria and fucking people would come in for a pizza on a Friday. I said, get the fuck out of here. What do you think this is? It's a pizzeria. You know, you can really <laughs> like some fucking coke, you know? No. Uh, I fucking was doing hot diamonds. So it was really became a front. I don't know what that, that means. A stolen diamond? Stolen diamonds. Right. Oh. You can see. Oh. You can see yeah. Taylor come from the shitty neighborhood. <laughs> from a blood diamond neighborhood. That's, that's oh, the only no, way we I, made. That's the only way South we made. You know, that's such bullshit, dude. That's another fucking really? made up crap from the U.S. Just like the bullshit that the fucking U.S. has with this live golf because of Chicago. They don't want to deal with Saudi Arabia. Get the fuck out of here. All these fucking people on, on fucking. Listen, United States, love my country. But we came to this country and wiped out a whole fucking uh, a, a, a race of people to take over. Now, in God, we trust where these pure people get the fuck out of here. Doesn't mean I don't love my country. I, I mean, they were it. cannibals. They had to go. But, but my, you know, it's just <laughs> everything is. It, everything, maybe I'm getting old yes. at the point in my life where I'm saying it's such bullshit. We, nobody should judge anyone else. I, I, I think, listen, my biggest thing, and you'll ever get anything. Is I don't judge anybody. I don't give a fuck what you do. I don't care where you do it. I don't care what sexuality. I don't give a flying fuck what. If you hate you people who judge, treat people, <laughs> treat see. people the way you want to be treated. In common sense, and don't fuck with a kid, you know, or an older person. Other than that, I don't give a fuck what drug you do, what you do on this house. I don't give a fuck. You put fucking cages. You want to fucking go any? I don't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. I'm a true. I guess you could call it a libertarian. So. As a person that sees so much bullshit when the United States says this or this, I'm so back. I was in the Coast Guard. There was so much propaganda about Russia back then uh, in, in when I was in the service in the early 80s. It was during the Cold War. We used to board Russian ships during the, what they call the uh, 200 Miles Fisheries Conservation Act it's in the Coast Guard on a big ship. And we board these Russian ships. And I used to tell them, hey, listen, jump in the fucking water. If you jump in the water, I can get you asylum. <laughs> and, and they're looking at me like, what the fuck? Because they're told the same thing by their country, that we're the evil. We're both countries mm -hmm. doing propaganda on each other country. I got to speak to these people after a while. I said, what the fuck? They think? What? I sat down. I said, what are you hearing about us? And then I'd ask them. Most of them spoke English, broken English, all drank vodka. Every fucking one of them. <laughs> but, you know, and I just... Learn about the, the hypocrisy of the bullshit, uh, you know, what's right and what's not. Listen, like you just got fucking Kyle goes to jail for pot. It's mm -hmm. fucking legal now. How about guys who got life sentences for this shit? It's bullshit. It's a money thing. It's, and, and if you're rich, you ain't fucking go. You're a senator's kid. Joe Biden's kid is so fucked up. That guy could do anything on the Internet. He's cool. <laughs> He's the coolest I don't care. presidential I don't want to see him we've seen. I really don't want to see him get in trouble. He's not the tallest, though, and that's all I give a damn about. That'd be barren. <laughs> it's about how tall you are. <laughs> then, then Baron Trump's got that one. Yeah, <laughs> he does. It's hard to beat. Jesus Christ. That's how we should pick leaders. It'd look more like the NBA draft. And, I, and I, That's a better system for picking a, a guy who's good at Let's a job, go by if height. you ask me. The tallest? Yeah. No, why don't you give it to the shortest? What the yeah, I was you? thinking the shortest. Because he's probably got a complex. No, no, no. You want a, you want a tall guy with friends. A tall guy who's not a bully, right? You you want you, so you're you trying pick to pick because he has self confidence. That's how you get right? Napoleon, right? You put some <laughs> little short Kyle. I hear you. Know, you're slightly Napoleon, misguided, Napoleon, right? Get the longest. Woody, the get longest, Woody. the biggest That's dick. A, yeah, biggest dick. That guy can lead. We keep That's going. The I was. You guys are gonna hear a story right here. <laughs> Never heard anywhere on any show. All right. So, Hit us with it. True story. <laughs> I was in prison with the guy with the biggest dick in the world. His, his name claim. is Roberto Cabrera. He's a Mexican. Five foot fucking six. Fucking size fucking six shoe. And you can look him up on your phone right now. And just <laughs> type in TMZ biggest penis. 
I am in bed. Okay. <laughs> I am in bed with my. With, I used to do his legal work. I, I, I was in bed. I used to talk about him all the time. You know, friends. Go, yeah, 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 Larry. I'm in bed. My my girl hits me. Says, Larry, get up. That's the guy you talk about. That's the guy. Sure enough, in the article, Yazoo. I was in Yazoo prison with him. He came the way he got arrested. That wherever he fucking. He, <laughs> He had his his dick was 19 inches long, mm, I fat see. as a fucking Coke can, what? and the ugliest motherfucking dick you ever fucking saw. Oh my God. What I a curse. <laughs> and oh, I hate was, that. was this the guy that we looked up that it's... one time that inject a bunch of stuff into his like, no, dick skin? No, oh this my is goodness. A natural guy. Different guy. I was in prison with just look up TMZ biggest penis. His cop you, was a kilo. Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> His cock was two pounds. Yeah. Oh, you're seeing him weigh it, right? Exactly, right. And oh. fucking, I, that's the legitest shit. This is a great story of prison with him. <laughs> he used to have to, you know, when you're in prison, you have to go through three metal, usually a couple metal, two to three metal detectives to go places, different places in the prison yard. So he's in the middle of the yard. They have a, a, a guard station with metal detectives. And like, it's like a point where all the play, like if you were coming from the library or the kitchen, or the wreck, mm-hmm. or you have to cross into this little spot, then you can go back to the units. Then they might shake you down in the units. So <laughs> he comes through the metal detector and they head him down. And the guy goes, Give it to me. He goes, No, no, mine, mine. Give it to me. Mine. They send him <laughs> to the lieutenant's office. He goes into the lieutenant's office, strip, you know, for search now. His fucking dick, they fucking put a, there was a picture of him in the, in the metal, thing. they couldn't do that. Girl guards were, girls were, girl guards weren't allowed to, you know, <laughs> hear. they had, they sent him to laundry to make a sock, like underwear. Cause he used to do this. I don't know. A support that. garment. Yeah, like this. <laughs> His fucking dick. <laughs> Swinging around. Work. So a couple of black friends of mine, I knew him real well. He used to do gambling shit. I'd say, yo, motherfucker, there's my man. Put your little dick over there away, motherfucker. Here's my man, Roberto. <laughs> it would be below his knee. That's why they had to build a sock oh, for it's him. Huge. Bigger pants That's disgusting, there. actually. I, yeah, I actually, this is a, it really like a was a disgusting looking penis. So I had a seat. Yeah. I told it's him. I did his legal work. I don't have a small dick. It doesn't look to, like it works. His dick used to hang over the side of the fucking mug. Literally, ah. <laughs> See, like, like you know when he's like sitting on the toilet. Like, wh- imagine where does his cock go when he sits on yeah. the prison toilet? He's got to stand up, or it could get. He's got to like hang it over. Yeah, no, no. It, it's again. We used to ask. I said, "Hey, you, you have a fucking boy. one one girl, only nine inches. One girl, she couldn't do it all nine inches. This is the truth. He used to fuck a horse." In Mexico, he's the fucking That's, yeah. He's an outside the box thinker. Respect. <laughs> well, modern problems require idiot. modern <laughs> solutions. <laughs> I, I gotta write a show. <laughs> is he gonna get the horse? Like, I know, is he he if he comes I'm back with a little horse. pony, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> lose it. Just a, a limping <laughs> pony. <laughs> I feel like I'm actually at a friend's house smoking a joint with telling stories and laughing. <laughs> <laughs> So he I, would I, he would do it with a horse to kind of relieve some pressure sometimes. Yeah, I had to get out of there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say you testified in front of Congress? Yeah. What was that like? What, what, what were you there to talk about? I developed the number one program in the country. It's called the Reality uh-huh. Check Program. When I got out of prison, you know, first of all, I didn't know what to do. What are you going to do? I, I had a law degree, though. Well, I still can't get my license, so it's a paralegal degree because I'm a felon, mm-hmm. convicted mm-hmm. felon. So I get out of prison. My thought was going to go work for a law firm, write briefs, all this shit, but because I didn't want to get back into business. So I have a friend come up to me. I'm, a, I'm out very short time. Comes up to me, says, hey, Larry, I can talk. Yeah, okay. Does I need a favor? I get real mad right away. Come out of prison. I'm not the right state of mind. I said, what the fuck? You want me to break somebody's legs and do some shit? Get the fuck out of here before I break your fucking leg. No, lad, no, lad. He <laughs> says, I, 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 my, I, Caught my 16 year old kid smoking weed back. This is now 14 years ago, smoking weed. And he told me, Fuck you, dad. Where you ever been? I go, Your kid told you that? I'll talk to your kid. That's what he wanted me to do. Mm-hmm. Talk you about get him with what? the iron. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, come on, no iron. He's a kid. Wait till he's 18. 
<laughs> I have a code, Kyle. No. So he, uh, so what happened was I went back. It just so happens I end up, I used to send pictures of, from the prisons I was in back home. And now I have them and I'm, I'm with mob people and fucking gang leaders and fucking, you know, prison fucking raw. I mean, some killers, you know, I was in maximum security mm-hmm. prisons. I, my one prison, we had 2000 inmates, 880 at life. And I'll tell you about that later. But Jesus. so anyway, we're sitting there and not like yours, Kyle. So <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yours was summer camp compared to this. <laughs> it, it, it is a camp. Yeah, it was a camp. <laughs> so anyway, craft days. So we only that, had s'mores two days a week. It wasn't that camp. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I I take the kid. I take the pictures. I go see the kid. Dad was a golf pro. I'm a golfer anyway. I used to be I mean, pretty good too. Anyway, I go in. He has a gazebo. He talks to me for a few minutes. Says, "What else is going on with the kid?" No, no, you know the typical kid to me. I said, okay. So I walk in and the kid's a big kid, but I'm a pretty intimidating big guy. And I walk in, I say two curse words the whole time. I said, you told your father where the fuck he's been? Let me show you where the fuck I just come from. Sat down, storytelling. This kid's dead. This kid's anus was cut from the top of his anus until it scrotum, him and he found seminal fluid. Because fucking, they, they cut his fucking anus. I mean, I read the report. I was there. Yes. Heard the screams beforehand. I talk about that all the time. Anyway, so I tell him these kids, and, and I was there a couple hours maybe, and you could see the kids fucking wheels turning and changing. I leave, I, and I, the dad says, hey, man, I really appreciate Larry. He goes, you know, he goes, I'm going to give you a hundred bucks. I got no fucking money. Give me a fucking hundred bucks. I mean, I got out of prison. I, you know, you don't have anything. They, they took everything. The government took six million from me. So yeah. I was sitting there and uh, I fucking get the honey. He goes, can I give you a number out? You know, I said, sure. Fuck. Sitting there and I get a call, phone call from him two weeks later. He says, Larry, I don't give a fuck what you do with your law. My kid said, I don't want to go where Mr. Law went. I don't need help. I, I, and he got the kid. The kid's great now. He's married, 30 something years old. And, you know, he'll even tell the story. So, but anyway, from there, I'm starting to, people calling me, friends, and hey, talk to your kid, talk to your kid. Hey, this is fucking great, man. I'm fucking doing my own thing. I'm on probation. The guy, will you make it's legit, motherfucker? Because I used to have to show him where I went because I'm on federal fucking yeah. probation. And I had a bad one. I had organized crime shit. So, anyway, I get a phone call. And it's from Judge Ryman. Never forget it. It's her, her uh, a judicial assistant named Jean Bandish. Jean Bandish, she goes, Mr. Lawton. I said, yeah. And she goes, this is Jean Bandish, uh, Judge Ryman's uh, assistant. Judge Ryman, yeah, cling. And she goes, the judge would like to see you. I said, I don't want to see no judge. <laughs> she goes, no, she just wants to know what you're doing. I said, listen, I know the law. You have a warrant. Do you, you, you Some other way you're going to get me to, to come in? Is the judge going to subpoena me? Whatever you can do. I ain't seeing no fucking judge. I was getting mad now. Mm. She goes, no, Mr. Lawton. I think you don't get it. She wants to know how you're helping the people. She heard about how many people you're helping. I'm still suspicious. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, yeah. all right. And they set up an appointment. It was on a Friday. Now, since since this happened, my nephew has passed. He was 24. I lost two sisters and two nephews, both at 24. Well, anyway, my nephew was here and I don't know what a fuck computer is. No less had to turn it on and do shit. And mm-hmm. you got to remember, I went away during the biggest time of technology from 96 to 2007. When I went to prison, there was really no internet. When I went to prison, no ESPN, no phones. Mm-hmm. I had a phone when I went to prison. I could, it was the bricks. I could beat you and make a phone call. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, used to, I used to do a great commercial for Motorola. Beat a motherfucker, <laughs> make a phone call. You remember the phone <laughs> ring for, uh, you might not remember. Nokia's oh, yeah. Here. And then I even had the one on the strap. But anyway, so you get out of prison. This shit's fucking Star Trek. Lady on the bus. She's got a phone. And I'm looking at it. How does this sound? I said, hey, can I see that? <laughs> <laughs> you know what the fuck? I think about that now. She's nervous. Obviously, you can spot an undercover cop car. Well, you can spot a dude who just gets out of prison. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> that day, he's got the bobo shit. He's white. He's fucking, you know, he's looking around like he's fucking lost. Yeah. He's fucking, you know, and he comes from a rural area like fucking Arkansas or fucking Mississippi. Mm. So she, I go on the bus, actually. In that case, I go on the bus. I haven't been on a bus in fucking all those years. I've been on Con Air and buses and shackles and fucking leg irons. I've been on Con Air 16 times. So I fucking... 
<laughs> I, get, I, I see this girl sitting there. Holy shit. I haven't seen a fucking girl. But don't let anybody kid you. The most thing they miss when they leave prison is food. That's the most thing you, you miss. Anybody who's been in prison mm-hmm. will tell you that. So, but pussy's a pretty close second. <laughs> I fucking sit down and I fucking t- I, I'm looking at this girl. I'm doing shit like this because I got no shackles. I used to have to eat like this shit. You know? Now I'm looking, <laughs> I'm fucking free, man. And I, but I have a bus ticket to go from Forest City, Arkansas to Tampa, Florida, or the half of hospitals. So then I get, you know, I'm looking at she's looking at me like I'm not something blonde girl. She has the phone. I what the fuck? She gives me the phone. Now I'm thinking, how do these big fucking hands touch these fucking little buttons? This is Star Trek shit, you know. Nothing. I, I mean, you know, you fold it closed. It was a razor flip phone. So you close the phone and fucking I close the phone. I give it away. Of course, you next stop, she got up and looked. Big get off the bus. <laughs> and guess what? <laughs> Nobody sat next to me the whole fucking time. But I looking out the window, I used to think a Chrysler 300 was a Rolls Royce. Because that's what it looked like back yeah. then from the day. But anyway, so I'm just fucking, this is like, holy shit. You know, you, you are so out there. In the prison. only glimpses of the mm-hmm. outside world you'd had for like a decade were out of those like prison buses, right? Yeah, prison buses and planes when I got transferred. Exactly right. I remember not seeing a vehicle or anything. I was When I was in Atlanta, <laughs> there's my plane with fame. Some fan sent me a thing that goes, I didn't know you were on the same page as Al Capone. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Sure enough, on Atlanta's website, I'm one of the notable inmates that was in USP Atlanta. They got my charge, my number, and all that shit. And who's in there? Whitey Bulger, fucking Burke from uh, uh, Goodfellas. Uh, You know, played Jimmy Conway. Where was Whitey when they killed him? Whitey was in Hazleton. I knew the guys that did that. Freddie Geese did that. Uh, It didn't take long, did it? Fucking, he wasn't on the yard for 12... I'm here at 12 minutes and I've heard 12 hours, whatever. Yeah. He wasn't on the yard. Fucking every time on a lot of people, for those of you who don't haven't seen the, the really good Johnny Depp movie, you know what people don't get. And, and, and a lot of, I know state and fed prisons. Mm-hmm. There's no worse than federal maximum security prison. I'm not talking. Everybody thinks, Oh, I'd rather go to the fights as a state. No, you wouldn't. Cause what's in the feds, mob bosses, fucking drug kingpins, hit men, mm arm robbers, guys like myself, they, they don't take the fucking crackhead guy that's got his third strike and he got fucking three pieces of pizza stone. You know, the feds, they have the work and money doesn't help you in the feds. They don't mm-hmm. give a fuck. You got to remember, if you're in a state, somebody knows somebody who's working in that guard with the high school with them, did this shit, all this kind of crap. The feds is very rare. And if, and if you eat notable inmates, I was in prison with Willie Falcone. Willie Falcone was the biggest drug dealer. was worth a billion dollars. Him and Sal Magluto were the biggest drug dealers in, in the country. Billion dollars. Billion. And they were uh, out of Miami. Cuban guys. Two Cuban mm-hmm. So people say, oh, I'd rather go to the Fed. No. I saw fucking more fucking sad shit in this. Pen- I'm talking to penitentiary, not where Kyle was, obviously. That's mm-hmm. fucking, you know, we, it, I have a buddy who's a doctor. And he goes to prison for tax thing for, for a couple of months. He goes, I was the best dude. Two months of my life. I got in shape. I didn't, you know, I didn't have any pressure. <laughs> um, you know, no. It, the penitentiaries are fucking so bad. We used to talk to the guards. Now, every penitentiary. Do you know what penitentiary means? It's 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 about, uh, it, it's a place that's meant to make you uh, do penance. You're supposed to be in there suffering and reflecting on what you fucking did. The, 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 what well, you uh, are. Yeah, <laughs> I, never, I never put that together. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm the if we talk about prisons because that's what I testified in Congress too. We have by far the worst prison system in the free world in any metric you can even fucking come close to using. It's the biggest, ha <laughs> <laughs> ha, the biggest, the fucking most corrupt, the fucking most a uh, percentage, uh, every fucking thing. First or last. And when anybody tells us, oh, don't we, we live shouldn't go there. Human rights. What the fuck about the human rights right here? We are incarcerating our own people at this kind of fucking rate. Think mm-hmm. of that. That's sad. But everything, no, nothing is perfect, as I always say, right? So I want to know about I want to about know about a jewel heist, like like like, like how that goes down. Okay, you want to go before prison? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you really had me back. talking a story about out of prison with the program. With the oh, kid. I know we're bouncing around everywhere, but but it's That's okay. okay. I'm into that. I, I, I like all the little anyway. kernel, the little fascinating kernels. I, but 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 I want to know like. How about this? Like, 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 how 
today where if you wanted to rob a jewelry store like we're going to be your crew right the four of us are going to knock over uh, a jewelry store where would we like like what's step one we got to pick the place out what kind of place are we looking for uh, uh you're going to go i'm gonna give you two of those things first of all when i got out of prison i had a couple of guys who knew me from the old days say hey listen i got a robbery it should be five million man i looked at them both i said let me tell you what motherfuckers if I do this, I'm going to kill both of you. And they looked at me. How you think I'm fucking with you? I'm going to kill both of you. Because three can keep a secret if two are dead. I'm not going back to prison because one of you scumbags fuck fucking somebody's wife and they're all pissed over and I know something. You get fucking caught for fucking smacking your wife around. Now you want to get out of jail. You know, Larry did this mm-hmm. fucking Go fuck. I'm going to kill both of you. And I have a T-shirt that says, in my gut, three can keep a secret if two are dead. So, I, <laughs> and, and I believe that. Now, what you just said, now I'm going to go, Kyle, I'm going to go to the other way. I actually, on my channel, did that. Uh, yeah, I could rob a jewelry store today easily. Yeah, and I mean, let's yeah. forget about the fact that, you know, you, you did all that time and you reformed and you, and, you, and, you, and all that. Let's just, say, let's just start. Let's, you, you and your prime, how are we going to rob this store? What are we looking for? What, what, what's a, we, need to, we need to pick a place that's got some good jewels in it, but also yeah. a place that's not Fort Knox, right? Like, like well, how do we okay. First, I'll give you an example. First of all, we're assuming I already have my crew. Uh, that picking of the crew is very important. Mm-hmm. So anyway, you have your crew. and we I all have made... intro montages. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first no, there was no YouTube back then. <laughs> 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 and uh, so what we first thing I did, I did them. I ran a crew. So some people didn't do nothing. I mean, they just did what I told them. And most of them, and that's what they were. Oh, yeah, you were following your lead here, Larry. What did you do? <laughs> <laughs> So what happened was, I, first thing you have to do, obviously, like you said, yeah, is it enough money in it to worth it? But the first thing you look at, people think, oh, how much money is it? No. Can you get away with it? Is there an exit strategy? Because if there's no exit strategy, I don't care. I was going to rob a place for $12 million, And it was mm-hmm. in the, it was in the uh, Fountain Blue Hotel, where it lived, the nightclub is. And it, it, was used, it was called an H. Stern Jewelers. Cased it, did it, was literally going to kidnap the fucking lady, the, the guy take his family hostage, bring him back with bombs, fucking wipe it out for 12 million, talk the whole fucking thing through. And thank God I didn't do it. Jesus. If there was a kidnapping, there's a stat, there's no statute of limitations on kidnapping. Or yeah, murder. that's like 25 minutes. So when I talk about, no, there's no statute of limit. No. So, I, I mean, like 25 years in prison minimum. Like oh, oh, I mean, if I did that, I'd probably get life. I was, I was facing life anyway. And I beat the gun charge. That's what happened to me. I was going to get life. There was no getting me out of me. But I won the, uh, in a preliminary hearing. I won the 924C. It's a gun charge. And mm-hmm. I beat the gun charge. That's the only reason I'm sitting talking to you guys. Uh, <laughs> and uh, so to, the, to rob that Jewish story, you have to know to get out, obviously. Then, you have, see, there were certain things I looked for that were important. Obviously, when you go in the case, it, usually they were in plazas. Like mm-hmm. a Publix Plaza or a Lowe's or, or other stores around because you sitting in the parking lot now, it looks like you're waiting for your wife to come from the Publix or whatever. And you're really mm-hmm. casing the store. And I would know every fucking thing about that store. What time the mailman come? What police coming around? Did security come around? Were there a building maintenance check in? Did the trash come this day? What, you know, when did every employee come in? I actually teach this now to jewelry companies, jewelry prevention, uh, how to, to tell a person how not to get fucking robbed. But yeah. every time I walk down the street, I go, I had to rob this motherfucker so quick his head has been. You know, I mean, because <laughs> people get complacent. Uh, did, did you guys know about the big case that just came out a, a month, not even about a month ago? I just did a video on it because the guys claim they lost $120 million and Brinks said it was $10 million. No, I'm not familiar at all. With a that. Brinks truck was robbed. From jewelers, they do these conventions. They go from one convention to another or whatever. Well, they have a, a, a van. It's it's from Brinks, but it's actually like a, a truck. It's like a trailer truck that loads the shit in, and then they take it to the next thing. And it's insured, obviously. It's Brinks. It's a whole thing. Well, these guys, it gets robbed. Totally an inside job. Just go to my show, look it up anywhere. You'll see. Totally an inside job. How the fuck they know where they're gonna stop in fucking Nevada? At a mm-hmm. fucking no, the guy's going in and there's another guy sleeping in the truck. Who the fuck knows that? What is yeah. fucking the, you know the wizard? <laughs> so anyway, that gets robbed, and uh, in that case, inside job. 
totally well no 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 big it was they had they're like almost an 18 wheel of race oh no jeez yeah. yeah they have them like that that was pretty cool what is that what is that much in jewels look like <laughs> what no, is that's, that, that's, did that? that's zach no zach producer. does it our producer <laughs> you know, he that was here was at the beginning. <laughs> yeah he does a lot of stuff like that it's good <laughs> so so um Break it down for me, like, like, because I don't even understand, like, like, is this a daytime robbery where they're doing business and we're going well, in with masks and guns? Yeah. Is this Matter a nighttime? Of, yeah, they're thing? getting better, even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Try again, yeah. Zach. <laughs> <laughs> no, they Zach, have. We it. said bigger. <laughs> it looked like I don't know if they leased it, you know, and they paid it. I don't know how it worked and exactly how that worked, but it was like almost like an eighteen wheeler. But anyway, uh, as far as the jewelry store now. First of all, in my robberies, I even knew which way the sun. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's a toy. I knew which way the sun. Why was that on the news? <laughs> that was on the news. It was. It's the CBS I think news. The news article about toys. Unfortunately, <laughs> Google doesn't have a large enough truck. Here's a reimagined. What Google? How about Amazon? Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you go. Uh, I even knew which way the building was facing because when the sun hits the glass, somebody can't look in. So mm -hmm. there were angles and times that I would check wow. these stores out. You know, my first robbery, just to let you know, was a setup. The whole thing was a setup for an insurance job. I ended up making 150 k in my own pocket. I said, well, fuck this. I think I can do this shit myself. And sure yeah. enough, I do. Uh, and obviously, I got better and better and better. I had crews that were just unbelievable. I mean, I was so, you couldn't, I mean, Listen, I partied every drug in the book. I believe in them. I believe it's a person's choice. Now, if I commit a crime for that drug, I should be held, held accountable. Other than that, mm -hmm. I'm not hurting anybody. What well, stay, stay with me, Larry. I want to know how we rob a fucking jewelry store. We're, 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 go we're bouncing around everywhere. So we're, we know we, we, wait for, we wait for the light. We know when people <laughs> are showing up. What time of day do we hit it? And is it one person that goes in first to kind of a final scope or everybody at the same time to try and make it quick? Good questions, but you failed the first part. If you don't know what time the fucking sun is coming down and not know if it's the evening or at night, you know if it's, if it's the sun's coming up and it hits the glass or if the sun rises in the east and falls in the west, you know, and a building is facing one way, you know what time it is. It's fucking dinner time or it's breakfast time or whatever the fuck it is. So mm -hmm. that's easy. I mean, obviously that count, that mattered a lot uh, because somebody, because it didn't matter and someone could walk right by that jewelry store it can't see in the window. So it's like having a wall here. The only way they can get to uh, is going in. How many people of your crew actually go in? The whole crew goes in other than one guy? Well, I would, depending on the robbery, everyone is different. Uh, I would go in always. I would go in, take okay. down the main guy or my brother, who now has been convicted, so don't matter. My brother would fucking come in with me and or I'd bring him in as a second, like, oh, he's my partner. And if there are customers in there, do you go? Or Ooh. do you wait till they're empty? Customers. customers. Do you wait till there's no customers? No, it depends. You know, yes, in the store, but when per when customers come in, tie them up, and they're not a part of the robbery. Yeah. You know, one robber, one robbery I did it was in Sarasota, Florida, and uh, so I'm doing a robbery now. You know, they have buzzers on the door. A lot of jewelers. You know, like you have to be buzzed in. Mm. I like them. It's not good for a professional. It's not. It doesn't hurt the professional at all. That buzzer on the door. The only one that hurts is the bunch of kids that are going to come run and grab, smash and grab. Mm -hmm. Larry, they want coming in. He's got a Rolex. He's got a sports jet. You know, he's got a gold chain. Shit, he has money. Yeah. He's going to make money with this guy. You know what I mean? Listen, sure. doing business is a very shady business. We'll get into that. I mean. So then I would fucking go in. Obviously, they want me. Then I would usually have a, a pre-story. I usually say I was working with uh, uh, HUD or I was working with what's the uh, what's the, the uh Oh, and what's the organization that fucking goes and helps relief fund? Like, you know, uh, not Red Cross, but the FEMA. government agency. FEMA. FEMA, FEMA, right? FEMA. I used to say, I'm working for FEMA. And, you know, because if there was something in the area, we're, we're checking out the damages here. So I'm going to be here a month. I, You know, when I first got married, I've been married 10 years. I bought my wife a three-quarter carrot. I want to look at something better. I make more money. I mean, okay. And they talk to you. And the first thing they do is they want to show you what they got. So they don't just show you rings. They get the fucking mother load, I used to call it. They would go in a back room, never in a safe, or in a safe sometimes, but not mostly. 
they come out with a box, look like a, a, a baseball card box, you know, the baseball cards. Come sure. in, and it would be all envelopes. Now he put it on a thing and he opened it and said, let me show you. I'd say, let me see a carrot. I'd look where he picked that carrot up in the box. And then if I said, let me see a carrot and a half. And he goes this way. I know there's not much bad. But if he goes this way, they're all fucking mm-hmm. bigger diamonds. I would calculate that box in my head, just numbers wise, you mm-hmm. know, two carat this, give or take, quite, and say, okay, there's half a million. And I'm going to rob it, or, you know, 200,000 miles, whatever it is. So they would do that. They want me. I'm their customer now. Yeah. And I didn't use the disguise, but they never, ever got me right. You alternate yourself, you alter yourself. Wear glasses when you don't wear glasses. Have a mustache when you never wear a mustache. Part your hair a different way. Color your hair with fucking men's, you know, bleaching, 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 mm-hmm. all that shit. The shit I use in my goatee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he would do that. So, and now, I mean, I went as far as made business cards. I actually went into an area, and this was in the uh, Daytona, I think it was Daytona. Uh, I found, I, I looked for condos that were boarded up, not boarded up, you know, winter, you know, the winter, you know, the winter mm-hmm. uh, shutters are up, the winter shit. I went to the base of the condo. I saw it's the second floor. I looked up the number, you know, where it was, who was on it, who owned it. I became that guy and I got the phone number and I kept calling and making sure there was no one in there. Of course it wasn't, it was already done. That's me. I would walk mm-hmm. in and say, listen, I live down the corner. Here's my name. Matter of fact, Oh, yeah, well, I'm, I'm looking at nice rings, so they want to do your favor. Oh, you want to leave your uh, your your ring? And I had fucking ten thousand dollars of jewelry on I me. Mean, mm-hmm. You want to leave your ring, and we'll have it clean. You come back in an hour or so. I said, better yet, why don't you just give me a call, or I'll call you. So if I don't answer, don't worry about it. I'll just call you then. Sure enough, he called me, and then I call back, not knowing or anything, mm-hmm. and he thinks. Definitely. So actually, one of those guys, the reason I know all this, the FBI, one of the guys who owned that fucking condo that I did, his son was in prison or some relative was in prison for fucking Mm. robberies. And he was like the same kind of age and all this shit. And they thought he was part of this whole fucking thing now from prison. They did a whole fucking investigation on that. I go, it was fucking funny shit. Cost him a million bucks. You know, they gave me a charge in 2002. I got the same charge that Bill Clinton got. Filing a false Getting statement. Your dick sucked in the Oval Office. <laughs> Filing a false statement. I got um, so once we're like you're out of the store, he he knows where you are. You've you've already made yourself a p- potential customer. How much time passes between that and you going back to hit it? Depends. It depends. If I didn't know something, I might go back in there. Can I be honest? Hey, let, let me stop you for a minute. It's always going to depend, but what I'm looking for from you, Larry, is like an example. Well, this I'm one time... I'm giving you a fucking example. No, I'm you haven't. You we have it, Larry, I'm going to start treating you as a hostile guest very soon. <laughs> 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 I'm sure you've you've seen... I, I bet that you've been treated as a hostile witness before. <laughs> We're talking... I, think I'm going to get I want my you to tell me a story. <laughs> I want to hear a story about a specific robbery. Just pick any one. I just, one I robbery. Just one freed. I, I was one tell- robbery. I was just telling you about the Sarasota with the old lady. I, 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 I can't tell. Am I alone? <laughs> no, I, I hear you. So, so, like, lay it out. How, how does it go down? You Again, when you say every store, I did 25 stores. Okay. Every one mm-hmm. will be different. Now, I'll give sure. you a Sarasota store. Okay. You case the store. We go to Sarasota. You don't go to a bad neighborhood. You go to a good neighborhood, obviously. You want to go mm-hmm. where the, the people are. But in my robberies, they had to be in a plaza. They had to be in, a, in an area where there was a lot of traffic. The more traffic to me, the better. Obviously, then you case it. You How do you case it? You go to morning, night, and day. I'm there before anybody fucking gets there. I know their fucking cars. They make so many mistakes. Every one of them, they never stagger people coming in or out. They all come to usually the time, give or take. They're always the same time every day. And you know where they park their cars. So they're mm-hmm. easy to follow. You know who's in there. So you're going to know who the employees are. You know when the trash is coming. You know when their mailman's coming. They have them waiting for them. And everything they do is very predictable. So sure enough, Sarasota, Florida, I do one. And actually, it's near a dive shop. Uh, like, a, like, you know, like scuba diving. 
you know, mm-hmm. two down from the scuba dive, but it was good enough. So it was three of us. So I go in, I take the guy down, I get my guys in the store. They start working one cabinet, the other cabinet. Now I tied up whoever's already down. When I say I do it, when I walk in, they think they know who I am. I wait until they're between cabinets because they have buzzes all over the place. So if they hit a buzz, that's an alarm. So I know they even have buzzes in their pocket, even back then, meaning it was like a keychain, and mm-hmm. they could be able to hit it. And it, you know, that's how they would open the door for people on a buzzer, but it also had an alarm buzzer on it. So I knew all this. So I'd wait till they're at the right spot. They think I'm good, normal. I'd jump up, get out, get out, motherfucker. <laughs> and fucking in their face. I would transform in two seconds, and a guy's on the floor, back. I got foot, uh, slip ties, cuffs, done. Mm. He's done. And uh, I never gagged anybody. I didn't want anybody to gag or, or, or throw up and, and get hurt. Yeah. And he's done. Now, now he's done. I just tell him, close your eyes. Don't look at or face his head towards the wall. Or if he's close enough, I said, don't you, don't you move. You fucking move. They knew it. Never move. Never did it. They, guys are in. Open the door. If they had a buzzer, I would buzz him in. If it didn't, they would know. They'd go by. And they're looking like normal people. You know, they're not looking mm-hmm. bad. You get, the key is never be conspicuous. You know, like in South Florida, Haitian drivers, they always fucking go five miles an hour below the speed limit, and they're fucking in a left lane. They can't fucking drive. They're conspicuous. You know it right there. Mm-hmm. Don't be that guy. Do things normal, whatever it is. Yeah, you know, whatever you were going to do, you know, they would get in. I'd have their assignments already beforehand because I knew the store. You get the right shell, all the fucking shells. You get the left shells. I'll get the safe and keep an eye on him and get the office where a lot of certain stuff is. So you're cleaning them yeah. out. You're getting you're getting everything on the that's on display and you're going everything. To- when I left the store, they sold the whole store. You ever get and the that- wallets too? You ever go like the the, the pulp fictions? You, like <laughs> going, give me your wallet too. Let's no, go. no, no. You know, matter of fact, that that, that I'm gonna tell you that's that robbery about a guy. I called him out and they left. The uh, so we're uh, in this in this robbery. So obviously you're doing a robbery. These two old people. They're trying to pull the door. You know, once they do this, mm. I'm still in a suit and tie. They you can't mm. tell. I do have the white gloves. So I go over to the door, open the door. No, no, open the door. They come in. <laughs> I can bring them in. <laughs> take my gun. And I say, you're in a fucking robbery. The lady goes, <laughs> the lady goes huh? I said, no, 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 no. I says, no, you're good. Just come with me. I brought him in the back. I didn't tie him up, didn't do a thing. I said, just look at the wall. I said, this guy was a bad guy, so we had a problem. But just look at the <laughs> <laughs> so they fucking, They look at the wall. Now, we're getting ready to go. My moron, I had a guy with me since dead, but it's Jimmy. He fucking goes around. We're ready at the back door. We give him the signal to bring the car around to the back. Dump the fucking pillowcases in the car, and we're gone. So this moron comes around, doesn't see us quick, and goes back around the front. Now we're waiting the door open back there. I, I'm like, I get so mad. I close the fucking door. I go up to the two players. I'm just testing you. Don't move. I told you, you got to wait five minutes. <laughs> I didn't do shit. You know, I'm not testing anybody. <laughs> and fucking, I go to the front. I go, come on. And then he goes, and we get in a car, and we go. And uh, But those two old people were interviewed by the newspaper. Next day, they go, oh, he was a nice man. <laughs> <laughs> just robbed the place at 800000 but he's See, that makes so much more sense to me because mm-hmm. why make that? Why give that witness a reason to like give a to go hey, to yeah. show to you know because the cops are going to say, hey, could you come in and, and give us a statement about that thing you saw? And if they're holding a grudge against you because you put you put your hands on his wife, he'll he'll fly across the country if you had been rude, it, maybe just a little bit too rude to his wife. Mm-hmm. He'd have been drawing sketches himself. <laughs> no, that's true. That is true. But it wasn't even that like. I dropped the store in Sunrise, Florida, and this gets crazy. I end up running. So many people came into the store, kind of the same setup, mm-hmm. but people are coming in, and I'm fucking flex cuffing them, flex cuffing them. I had the total with the three employees, I had 10 fucking people tied up. I ran out of flex cuffs. I used to have them for the <laughs> I ran, you know, I used to have them for the feet and the, and the uh, hands. 
So I stopped putting them on the feet after so I said, wait a minute, you have you got rock up? No, we don't have any. Because we only carried so many, you know. Yeah. So this one guy was mounting off the man. And he's he's tied up. And I'm like, what the fuck is this guy? A cop is in my head, you know? See a cop? What the fuck is going on? What is he doing? So I walk up to him, I look at him, and he's looking at me. I grab his wallet. That's what triggered that man when you said wallet. I want to see if there's a cop. Not, and I took his ID, just drew it, didn't do any with it. Then I took his bracelet, and I never took jewelry off anybody in the store, even the owners or anybody. You know what I mean? I didn't take a yeah. woman's ring off. Um, I'm not, listen, I'm not a good guy. Not that somebody's ring wasn't in there getting fixed. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I yeah. didn't do it off a person. But so I take this guy's bracelet off. You know, to go, remember the thick mm-hmm. gold they had? It was a fagazi. You know, you know, fagazi. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I fucking looked at him and said, you piece of shit, motherfucker. <laughs> fucking thing. What are you doing? The fucking girls in the counter started cracking up. The fucking <laughs> girls were cracking up, man. They fucking were funny as shit, the girl. <laughs> so they, they must have been a jerk off, you know what I mean, to them or somebody or whatever. He they probably feet. wanted to laugh at any jokes you might be telling because you did have a gun and they were tired. No, no, <laughs> nah, you could have done a tight five and kill see how funny he is with a rifle. <laughs> you know, what's the thing about revolvers these days? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, I'll tell you, it's so fucking crazy today. Guns and fucking rifles and shit. You walk out, you're getting you're fucking killed now. I mean... You know? Did you ever encounter anyone who had a gun, like just a civilian in any of these uh, situations? Well, I'm going to go to the last robbery then. So we do the last robbery. Little do we know until now. We case, this is in Fairless Hills, Pennsylvania. I end up casing the store. It was a good store. But when I case an area, I might case 20 stores that meet my, my criteria at first. And then you wean them down. What you can do, is it the most money? Quickest exits. There's a lot of reasons I did there, certain things. Mm-hmm. So I picked on this one. Now it's about five miles from the last one. I mean, the last case I did, you know, the case of across mm-hmm. town or whatever it's called. I do the robbery. While we're doing the robbery, a lady comes up and has to put her hands, you know, close to the window because of the sun. I was mm-hmm. telling you how it works. So she put her hands up and sees us robbing the store. My brother and I, mm-hmm. we fucking, I, I see, move, bolt, bolt, you had to go. You know what I mean, there's no stop everything, just go. Mm-hmm. Now we have the car out front. It was like we walked, you know, we pulled up. It was, it was again, the car was a uh, rent a car from Florida with fake plates. It was fake, mm-hmm. fake plates. So anybody got them, they never can get to us, whatever it is. And I always uh, robbed, uh, used a non descript car. It could be a four door cameo, a you know, ca- was a, Cam- a Camry or whatever the fuck it was. Mm-hmm. You know, something that was normal, re- regular cars. No hopped up car. Mm-hmm. So we run for the... Now, first of all, when we first robbed it and got it in and put him down, I take six guns out of the ba- out of his safe. Six guns is do that. Put them in my bag. Thank God they saved my life at the end. You'll hear this. So I fucking... Rob, see the guy go, gotta go, gotta go, boom, we bolt for the fucking door. As we go right near the door, we see the glass fucking flying. <laughs> We're being fucking shot at. The Jeez. fucking guy gets out of the fucking flex cuffs. And there's another gun there. We didn't even fucking see it. We fucking shoot. We jump in the car. I get in, driver's side. He gets to the other side. Just like this, I'm looking right at the fucking thing, put it into, it comes in love with the gun at my head. I fucking go like this, he shoots the bullet, goes right in the middle of the fucking thing, goes through, skims my head, a little blood, skip, and goes in my brother's back, through his back, into his arm. Oof. To this day, it's still in his arm. Oh, to no. This. So, anyway, yeah, they know about it. So, anyway, boom. Fuck her is we had to get away like fucking something you'll see on fucking, uh, you know, one of these crazy shows, movies. Mm-hmm. And I mean, the, the community was outraged that this guy's just shooting out. How did he know he's going to kill somebody else? You know what I mean? This guy was just shooting. Mm-hmm. Well, we get away again. 
got away because it was well planned. I had an exit strategy. I, I knew the route to the T, how to get on every major road. In fact, it was so close. We pull up to a toll and I got a bullet hole right in my fucking windshield. And I got to go to Brooklyn or in Fentil, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. We, how I did it is I, I waited to an uh, uh, 18 wheeler. I got behind the 18 wheeler really tight. When the 18 wheeler pulled through the fucking booth, you know, cause then you didn't, you had to pay toll. It was not as shit. You had to pay. Mm-hmm. I had the exact change, everything ready. When he pulled through, I pulled up past the, the thing. So the, cause the guy's doing something. And mm-hmm. I, you know what I mean? Like the, the booth is here. I would pull here. So he couldn't see the windshield mm-hmm. and literally mm-hmm. lean back and give the money like that. Yeah. And when I did that on the first one, it said, be on the lookout for it. And I could see he didn't have any fucking, you know, he didn't pay attention. I knew mm-hmm. it, whatever. We get on the fucking turnpike. We get to fucking Brooklyn. Uh, we, we, again, the gangster place and the place where that place was, they had, we had an apartment on the second mm-hmm. floor of that. Took my brother up there and we, we did it. We did, I was going to drop him in the hospital, but I thought he was, you know, just drop him there or whatever. We thought we had that plan, but we didn't need to do that. We get to the fucking goddamn, I clean up. We get to the fucking thing, you know, running again, gangsters. We have friends. We send out car to get the glass changed, Brooklyn Auto Glass. Boom. Literally. Thank God it was a rent the car from Florida because there's no stickers in the corner. In New York and other places, they have the registration, no mm-hmm. stickers in the corner. You know, what are you going to do when you can't get that? Yeah. They didn't, Florida doesn't have that. So I had the whole fucking windshield. In fact, I had that done when I had a half a million dollars in jewels in the trunk. <laughs> I was less than that, 200, because again, we had to get out of there quicker. But anyway, get the thing. Now, back then, you got to remember, this is 1996. Uh, you, you could fly anywhere. There was no 9-11 shit or anything. You just mm-hmm. give a name and cash at the counter and, and get on a plane. Literally, that's what you do. Mm-hmm. So we had that plan to go. We ended up getting him. We had him set up, sent him back to Florida. And I was going to take care of the business up there, which I always did anyway. So he gets back. And we were going to set him up. I call a buddy of mine here, another wise guy. And I said, hey, Louie, I need a doctor. What do you he goes, I don't know. He goes, but I got a vet. I said, all right, I, my brother's got a bullet in him. We got to take the fucking bullet out. Well, he's also a builder, you know, like a contractor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's building Judge Torpy's house. They set up a, 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 a door and fucking, you know, saw horses for a fucking table for my brother. But thank God they didn't use it. So <laughs> he had it all set up. And when we got home, my mother's a saint. I live with my my my. What I put my fucking mother through, uh, it, it just, I don't even want to say. My mother is really. She, I, she never cursed in her life. It's just it's the weirdest shit in the world. But anyway, my mother's been a nurse, so she was working at a, a, a doctor's office around uh, mm-hmm. right where I live, and she was one of the head nurses at this doctor's office. So what my mother called, we did. Hey, we came up with the story that. Larry and Davey were playing with guns at the bar and Larry shot Davey and he came <laughs> to the hospital because he does. Larry goes to the fucking prison because he can't have a gun and all this mm-hmm. shit. And I end up fucking going to uh, uh, my mother takes him and takes care of my whole brother, literally takes care of my brother. Take, you know, doesn't take the bullet out because she said it would cause more damage. Again, we were going to get a vet. Yeah. But, you know, and she took care of her penicillin and, and, and all that, make sure it didn't get infected. And what I did not know in this whole case is that when I robbed the jewelry store, I was caught by a major case squad from Quantico, Virginia, the biggest, the, the FBI, the mm-hmm. best of the best. And they are the best of the best. Anybody who tells you they're not is all lying. So what happened was that they go in the FBI and they flooded the area. And I didn't know they flooded the area. So when they don't fuck, so when they fucking do that, I go, what the fuck am I going to do? You know what I mean? And they went to every single jewelry store within X amount of miles. They confiscated every single camera from every 7-Eleven or Wawa store. Because when I was convicted, I had a conviction from Savannah, Georgia, Mm -hmm. me in that area, getting a cup of coffee in the Wawa fucking store. And they got me on film. So they placed me there at the time of the robbery Mm -hmm. and everything else. FBI fucking had fucking crazy amount of fucking shit. And they, they ended up catching me. Be, everybody gets caught eventually, I think. What, uh, when, when you get 
the big score and you get all the jewels and everything, like I know you're saying like, oh, it's $800,000 worth of jewels. Is that 800,000 as worth like what you could get from the mob that you were selling it to or no, 800 grand? Like that's the total amount and you'd get like, I don't even know what a percentage is. Like, what yeah, I usually get about 30% depending okay. on like Rolex watches. I would bring Rolex watches in. I would get $2,000 $2, of Rolex. The regular Oyster Perpetuals I went for about 5,000. I did 2,000, 2,000. So if I had 50 of them, I know the number right there. There's 100,000 right there. So okay. how, how it worked was like, Depending on the robbery, if I got a million dollars out of that store at 30, maybe 300, maybe we negotiate to 350, maybe it's not good shit, whatever. But I used to get the good shit, you know, with diamonds. Mm -hmm. So that's how the money end up works, you know, with diamonds and stuff. You know, they rob these diamonds and the reason they do it, the biggest robberies lately, you'll hear them all, the one in France was $136 million. Mm -hmm. If the guy got 20%, you can't rob 20 million, you know. 20% is like 30 fucking 35 million. Yeah. You can't rob 35 million in cash anyway. Anyway, you can't do mm -hmm. it. And that's his end. That's the guy's end on that end. Jewelry is always the, the, the smart way to go in robberies. And most people got caught by their fences. Uh, somebody snitching it. You know, these guys robbed 5 million out of Tiffany's Jewelers in New York. Mm -hmm. I was out. I said, I wish I'd known them because you know how they got caught? They sold a fucking diamond ring up in Harlem for crack. And fucking, of course, one snitch to another snitch or whatever mm -hmm. happens, they end up fucking getting arrested. Now, and it, God was in on that. They could, I would have bought the whole load for him for a million. I would have yeah. sold it for two million. You know what I mean? Maybe a million, whatever. Interesting. Is there, uh, is there, a, no, you need a fence. Is there anything yeah. like intimidating or weird about like, because I mean, you're, you're selling these to guys that are higher up in the mob. Like, Scarier no, guy. I'm selling, right? him to, I'm selling him to a guy who's connected to the mob, but it's in the business. Okay. You don't so, sell him to your next guy. You're kicking up anyway. You, 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 whatever you do, whatever you rob, whatever you steal, whatever you're a bookmaker, you're kicking up anyway. So, so I was, give uh, envelopes to my boss. Okay. So there was, you know, as long as you were making money and, you know, earning, you weren't worried at all about like higher ups in, in the mob. No, matter of fact, the higher ups want you. I mean, you're you're the earner, mm -hmm. you're the money maker. You know, in fact, the only reason I had to be with the family, so to speak, with the family, is because I needed that protection. Because if the other families would have found out that, hey, there's Larry's a, a big rob, they're gonna take me hostage. You need to fucking put an iron on me if I don't have yeah. protection. So when you have protection, everybody knows. You don't listen. You can't fuck with that guy. He's with the Gambinos. Or he's with the you know Columbos. He's with the Genovese. Mm -hmm. Whoever the fuck it is, who okay, it doesn't matter. You're gonna if you're with one of those five families, the others are not gonna fuck you. They're gonna start a war over some fucking idiot trying to fucking mm -hmm. you know because my bosses are gonna fucking fight for me because they're making money. Yeah, it's all about money. Don't let anybody kid you. The fucking mob is all about money. That loyalty shit is all bullshit. All about money. No loyalty. Just that's a convenient Listen, little. Look at it. You want loyalty? Look, look what fucking Gotti, uh, uh, Sammy did to Gotti. Look what fucking people do every day. You know what people. You know, you can't mm -hmm. even go like go there and talk about loyalty. It's it's been fucking got now. Obviously, there's certain people you but you see it happening every day, and so it's about money. Who's making mm -hmm. the most money? Joe He's Messina, a fucking boss of a family. Fuck a boss of a family. Fucking flip. How, what, what the fuck are we doing? You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How does that work? Is uh, you mentioned like jewelry always being the smart move for people who are trying to make a lot with you know make it relatively easier. So robbing banks, that's stupid. No reason to ever try to rob a bank in in your mind. Well, banks. First of all, banks don't carry a lot of money. Even if they did, you might want to go to a warehouse. I knew guys who did this. All the armored trucks that go to the warehouses. But even besides that, you're automatically after you by the feds because it's a federal crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're FDIC approved, uh, uh, insured. So the federal government is insured, so that makes it a federal crime. Actually, a jewelry robbery is not a federal crime. It, I, may, I didn't make it federal. My actual charge is what they call Hobbs Act, or interfering with interstate commerce under the RICO Act. Mm -hmm. Under RICO, is in, like murder could be under the RICO Act. That's not a, murder is not a federal crime. Whatever mm -hmm. state you're in, you kill unless it's on federal property or something like that, federal agent, something of that nature. Uh, you could rob McDonald's and the federal government could make it 
federal because McDonald's gets its fucking French fries from Idaho. Mm-hmm. And they can say, now you are interfering with interstate commerce, which is called the Hobbs Act. You're going to get federally fucking convicted, uh, uh, federally prosecuted. And they do it under the RICO Act for me because we had, I was interfering with interstate commerce, all these robberies from different states and everything else. So they made, and they knew who I was. They knew I was with the mm-hmm. family in New York. So they, they loved it. But they didn't get anything out of me. I went to prison for not telling. That's why I Does it, went to the worst prisons in the world. What would someone do if they didn't have the connections to sell uh, jewels? Because because that's the thing that we I think we've discussed this before, like many years ago, maybe just or maybe just a discussion I've had with friends. It's like, why would I rob a jewelry store? I would then have jewels. I don't I don't know what to do with fucking jewels, right? You know, mm, as a normal guy who's not connected. Well, we just we, well we just said that we just said that earlier. Oh, okay, like, okay. You know, but no, uh, it, it's a quick answer because it wasn't a place like that. You know, you could take jewelry and piece it off and be fucking and never get caught. You go into a jeweler down in somewhere and say, listen, this is my grandmother's piece and I, I'm looking to get rid of it. And it's, you know, it, it might, maybe it's a ten twenty thousand $20,000 piece. And the guy goes, well, he's trying to, you know, he doesn't know anything about jewelry. I'll give him 10 grand. He'll just shut up, you know, mm-hmm. and he's not reporting it. He's going to take it out or resell it or whatever it's going to be. And you just got 10 grand to walk around the street if, if you're going to do something small or like that. Mine, you needed the fence. You needed the fence in the jewelry business. Otherwise, you could have never got rid of them. That's how the guys from Tiffany's got caught. They didn't have a fence. The fence is the guy that, first of all, most people, even when the fence gets caught, what do you think he's going to do? He's going to fucking rat on the guys. Well, what are you getting the fucking jewelry? Mm-hmm. But the guys I had were all connected in, in, the, in, and there was no rats on my case. There's not one rat on my case. How does so, the fence do his job? Like, obviously, he takes the diamonds in and gives you cash. But like, what does he? He doesn't sell the diamonds. Does he sell yeah, the diamonds to a jewelry store? I, absolutely, the fences are diamonds. Use like the fences are usually jewels themselves or, or something. The, I was telling you earlier, the jewelry business is so fucking crooked you know obviously i can get into the how diamonds go from de beers in africa and how you get mm. fire and be all that mm. kind of stuff i went to the gia institute which is a gemological institute of america it cost me 10 grand under the table to a four of us in it but mm. i went in that to learn about diamonds i want to mm. know about the qualities the cuts and, and what they mean because i don't want to get fucking robbed you mm. know it's like knowledge is fucking king and anything you, you can't do. trust fences no. Well, again, <laughs> you got to trust yourself, man, because yeah, yeah. I know what's there. Now it's a haggle of the price, you know, and they're not going to haggle too much because I'm bringing them so much. You think he wants to lose me to even go look for another mm-hmm. guy? You're already giving him a stellar deal. It's yeah. hot goods, right? You know. Well, he's getting the best deal. Nobody can ever buy his diamond cheap and he could sell it because he's buying it for fucking nothing almost, you know, mm-hmm. it, depending on watches, you know, anything. He's making he, – you could, he couldn't buy it wholesale to sell retail – like he can get from steel, you know, 30, right, right, right. 25%. That's whatever. what I'm saying. So he's not going to get too, uh, he's already getting this stuff 80% off. What's he need? 85%. Right. And not off. only that, though, not only that, they don't want me to go to another guy and say, wait a minute, I'm a piss Larry. He's coming here every fucking two, you know, twice, two mm-hmm. times a year. Mm-hmm. Fucking, I'm making fucking. Attack. Now he gets his price. So if he buys it from me, at, let's just say you said 20%, 30%, 40, whatever number, he tax on 15%, sells it, and he pieces it out. I ha- I actually found out a lot of my diamonds that I robbed went to California and they were literally sold out in California. And it's mm-hmm. funny because I thought later in years, I should have just opened a store on Rodeo Drive, not give a fuck, put a fucking hot looking broad behind the fucking counter, whether she knew what the fuck she was doing and sell shit <laughs> at a fucking decent price and fucking could have made a ton of money and right or did it, you know, could have did a lot of things. You can only do that with obviously common pieces. You couldn't do that with signature pieces. Anything that's made mm-hmm. that's specifically for some, it's a signature piece. They got to break it up and they got to make diamonds, brooches, whatever they're going to do out of it. You know, and, and that's important. But I think back after the fact, man, I should have just fucking kept it all, opened a fucking store, and I'd have fucking maybe became legit. Nah, never would have happened. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't have worked out when you had to nah, replenish yeah. your... I had a question from earlier. So you said that you never heard anyone who wasn't in the game. That was part of your code. No kids, no like old people or well, we'll 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 in a minute. But, but you yeah. didn't say you didn't say it, but I, I interpreted like no civilians basically. You know, if, if they're not in the game, you're trying to, to, to not hurt them. Did you ever lose? You're in the game, right? Maybe someone else that like 
all I'm hearing about are your wins, right? The time you, you made a guy wrinkle free, the, the, the time you, you muscled here or there. You undefeated in this, or do you have any times? No, uh, I'm only defeated once, and that was by the federal government, and they fucking okay. win. Uh, I never was shot or shot at. I've been in cars where somebody shot at somebody in the car and stuff of that mm -hmm. nature, and I wasn't hit or anything like that. So as far as, like, and fighting, you know, we didn't fight. There was never fair fights. I mean, there's I was somebody there. tougher than you out there. Absolutely. Right? There was a guy right. around when I was around called Tommy Karate. That guy's got more bodies. He's probably on the internet. You can look him up, I'm sure. T Tommy Karate? Yeah, Tommy Karate. That motherfucker. He, he, Sounds yeah. like he works at a birthday party. No. no Joey <laughs> Karate. They, they, they were That's Joey Karate, you're thinking. No, no, no. No, no they were killing. Look up Joey Karate. Is he from yeah, Parks so and Rec? Oh, that is oh, the guy from oh, Parks and Rec. So, so this guy, is he's uh, incarcerated now. The J Tommy Pateri is his name. Karate. Pateri. And he was like a big enforcer, and he's he's locked up now, or no? Tommy Pateri is his name. Is he alive? Uh, I think so. Okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Pateri. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's a lot of guys. Sorry. You're right, Woody. Obviously, I, I me, tell everybody me too. that. Me too. Whether it's fighting, whether it's... I used to tell you, listen, dude, if you think your broad is with you because you, you think you got a big dick, well, there's another guy with a bigger dick, with more money, better looking, better educated. If she wants to be with him, she will. She's either with you or not. That's what I was throwing at that swinger. Ah, he doesn't that. want her. Like my girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, and, and, and you're right. Obviously, there were guys I knew to stay away from, if you want to call it that. And it was just an intuition, Woody. Like, you know, don't put yourself in that position to get fucked, you know, to mm -hmm. get in a, in a bad way. Uh, you know, you, you got to read people. And I think that's what a lot of people don't get. The, the mob or prison, I think survival for me was more, it's not just my brawn. And it helps to be a little bit intimidating. It helps to be a, a, a good fighter. But listen, I was scared of a guy named the East, the guy, Tommy Broke Steel. This motherfucker was a crazy little motherfucker. You never feared the biggest guy in prison. I never slept, ever. So for 11 straight years, I never, ever slept past 6 o'clock in the morning, ever. I got up, I had my boots on, and I was ready. Because when they opened that door, how do I know? I The night before, I walked down the tier, and you look in a cell, and there's a guy fucking a guy, another guy shooting heroin, another this, this. They're, they're crazy already. Mm -hmm. Fucking Lawton's Law, going to steal my fucking broad. You know, well, Lawton's going to steal my dope. Or whatever. And I have no way. I don't know. I never even saw it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I don't know. In prison, it's, it's a whole different animal. Would you look in the cells head. when you walk by? I thought that Ooh. was a... Would you look in the cells when you no. walk by? That? That's a faux pas, bro. No, what I'm saying, he thinks you did, is what I'm saying. Oh, I, I mm -hmm. follow, I follow, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, listen, in prison, you don't even go in a cell. You knock on the frame when the door is open. You don't, that's my house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, when you're walking down the tier, you're not looking in the cells, but he might show you go by. Him. I think Lawton looked at my cell, show me fuck. He knows I got the dope in you. He's fucking crazy anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've seen guys get killed by being in their bed in the morning. So when the doors are cracked, you put your boots on, you sneak, and you go out, get your coffee, and, you know, talk to your friends or whatever you do. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> you just don't know if, it, if, if you did something to someone. It's like, you know, tension in prisons is crazy. In a penitentiary, I watched the kid come. There was a sad story because he come to prison. He didn't know, pissed somebody off. He was in the shower, didn't know to go with someone. I don't mean go in it, of course. You go up at you and me or buddies. You wait out front while I take, you know, I went in mm -hmm. there. Now you see three guys come and you hit the wall and fucking I'm putting my boots on. And I, I don't give a shit my dick there. I got my shank in my hand and, my, and we can fight. You know, you, there's more of it. That's mm -hmm. how you prevent things. This kid didn't know it and he was stabbed in the fucking shower. He fell down and the water didn't go down the drain. It was all blood going straight down the TR. Don't we'll forget that. And it, it gives you a fucking heads up. The little did he die? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, he did die. He did die. They what did, uh, you, what know did when they re you know when someone in prison dies when they recount? Because that count is an official count to Washington, D.C., actually to the Bureau of Prisons. So another biggest corrupt fucking mafia gang in the world. 
<laughs> what did what did this guy do or what was his perceived slight that got him stabbed? You know, I don't know the whole story, but it was somewhere he pissed off these guys. And I don't know. He was a young kid. He was pretty new in prison. He was probably 22. The reason I started what I did when I got out is because I saw too many kids, young in prison come in there and they fucked up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not saying everybody. It's how you handle yourself. It's a lot of things. But I've heard rapes and I heard it's not every day, but I don't even get raped. It fucking, to this minute, it boggles my mind because I, Larry Lawton, could not get a fucking heart on to fuck somebody who don't want to be fucked. It's here. Mm-hmm. Unless it's Trimix. But no, it's here. Unless it's Trimix. My, 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 <laughs> my point is, it really boggles my mind because I really couldn't get an erection. If, you know, I don't give a fuck, guy, girl, whatever your preference is in life. Doesn't matter. Could you get it? I couldn't. And I never could get wrapped around well, my There's head. only one way to find out. Yeah, well, nah. Yeah, uh, no, because then I'm going to sit there with a limp dick. <laughs> How embarrassing. <Yeah. laughs> Here's a rapist. You can get it up. Uh, oh, that's funny. That's <laughs> so, how, good. like, you see on TV and, and movies and everything how much the rape is played up and everything. Was it as just no, as big? No. As, it, no? It, okay. It's more coercion rape, if you want to call it that. I mean, I. I've seen so much crazy shit in prison. I've seen guards fucking used to take this one inmate out to clean the in between the cells, and he was getting blowjobs and fucking the inmate was getting blowjobs and fucking the guard. It was fucking crazy, crazy shit. But the uh, you see rape, you do see him, and you'll hear him. The worst thing I've ever heard, and, and I kind of touched on it earlier. You know, we're, it, it's about nine o'clock, and we have a countdown at uh, lockdown at nine thirty, mm-hmm. and we hear screaming. And I mean, I'm not talking about bullshit, kids. I'm not talking about hey, you know playing around. I'm talking a man screaming for his fucking life, and we knew who he was, but we couldn't get up to that tier because mm-hmm. the fucking tier is locked down, ready for lockdown. And they're screaming, lockdown. Everybody goes, you know, everybody gets to their cells. Now it's early, whatever. You see everybody come running. We don't see anything from there. And the next morning, we get out of the cell and uh, we look up to the cell and there's crime scene tape across the cell, the door. Because you will get charged for a fucking crime in prison. So mm-hmm. anyway, this crime scene tape, and we I told you, I never, got, never slept past six, so I'm out at the, you know, the table. One of our friends who works at the medical, you know, the, the infirmary, comes in with a piece of paper. And I'll never forget it. And I remember the screen. He said, you guys got to read this. And it said, in, I have a picture of the kid in my program, I think. It was face blog app, you know what I mean? Because he's alive. Mm-hmm. It said, inmate's blank na- anus was cut with a sharp object from the top of the anus until the scrotum and seminal fluid was found. And it had doctor report on the test and shit. And I, I'm like, I, I read it twice. How, mm-hmm. Why did they cut his? Uh, you know, you know, was Woody, it Roberto. I Woody. believe Roberto. He's the only one. Yeah, who made it a yeah. that was good. I never thought of that. One. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that is true. But what, what you say is it really it boggles your mind because why would someone cut someone they want a tight ass and all that kind of shit? Because rape again is not a crime of sex. Rape is a crime of violence. I've heard it's that. Time yeah. of dominance and violence. A, mm-hmm. But they cut this kid, and he didn't die. We knew that. He ended up going to infirmary. They stitched him up. But just even to this minute in this day, when I tell a story like that, my fucking head thinks, you know, fuck. I mean, you know, touch between your fucking legs, your taint, and think about mm-hmm. getting cut with a fucking. It's rape. nightmarish. It really is, and you think about what that kid's going through for his rest of his life. You know, that's the worst kind of a rape, if you want to. I mean, I heard other rapes. Mm-hmm. I did an interview with a guy named Bill Dillon. You guys should have him on your show. Bill Dillon, anyway, he, he, he did 27 years in Florida State Prison, found innocent. They gave him a fucking year. Yeah, all they gave him was a million three. They should have blew him every day of their fucking life. Anyway, <laughs> that does so sound he, better. He was gang. He tells the story I'll on take my the show. million three. He was gang raped his first day in first day in prison by five guys, put a pillowcase over his head. Fuck, he was a 21-year-old blonde surfer boy right here from Melbourne, Florida. Let me ask you, what do you think he could have done to prevent that? Probably nothing. Right, because he can't beat up again. No, no, no. no, That's not in the car. Nobody could. Nobody. Could he have just, maybe he was not quiet enough? Like, did he get no. attention in some way? No. First day, Woody, if it was down the line, 
I'd say maybe he didn't hook up with the right people. He just didn't know what he was doing. Didn't know the area, the prisons, didn't know what was going on, who to connect with, that kind of thing. Maybe he did, you know, did stupid things that just- He didn't play Survivor right right, and make the right alliances and stuff. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, if he was in there longer before it happened, he could have did a lot of things. Uh, And then I would have said maybe. But, you know, this is just some, it's like, can you prevent a robbery in front of your house right now that's going to happen? You know, if a guy comes to you up to you with a gun in your head, there's nothing you can do about it. You know? it is so do you think you're just a victim of being born in that body? Like, like you just wasn't a tough guy. He wasn't. Not only tough guy. He was 21 years old. He was a blonde head surfer boy, good looking kid. Uh, whatever you say, it matters. You know, And he was vulnerable. They, you know, they didn't pick on. Listen, like anything else, there's two types of people in prison. It's called predators and prey. Mm-hmm. I was a predator, but I didn't prey on people. There's a difference. Right. You know, I stabbed two people in prison. I got stabbed. I got, I got stabbed twice myself. So, I mean, it, you know, you, it's fair. You, you're going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah, think it was fair. <laughs> well, wait, you stabbed two people. You got stabbed well, you know, twice. Even, even, track even. Yeah, this is like double balanced accounting. I don't hey, know. Hey, Woody, I'm still on. I didn't that. hurt anybody that wasn't in my business. They're all in that business. <laughs> No, uh, I actually did hurt people, and you know that. I mean, just putting the fear I did and all the stuff I did on. I never want to take that lightly. You know, listen, I really mm-hmm. did put fear of, you know, people. But people got to get over things, too. That matters, too. Like, so I, I can tell my story super quick because the audience has heard it before. When I was a teenager, my house was robbed repeatedly again and again and again. The guy would come in, steal cash from our house, and come out. We blamed each other at first. We didn't know what was up. Turned out. There was a guy, one night I was up super late and I heard him creeping up the basement stairs. Holy shit. I opened the door, I started screaming at him. He fell down the stairs uh, and then he ran away and we, we didn't catch him. The police came with their canine dogs and everything, but uh, I think they caught him later. I read a guy with the, the sort of fit the description in the paper, etc. All right, nothing there. For the next 10 years, I had night terrors. I slept. I used to sleep downstairs on the couch. That's how I heard him. And uh, I slept with a knife under the couch. I didn't feel safe in my own home anymore. It was violated. So I take my pretty mild thing, right? A guy came in taking cash. I don't think he had any violent intentions. He just wanted cash. That's terrifying. Like like, like anybody who minimizes that, like your home is where you feel safe. Yeah, I mean. Mm -hmm. If you – if if you've ever come home early or or been home and like a, 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 someone comes into your house, who has every right to, you know, your your spouse, your your loved one or whatever, they're home, but you mm-hmm. didn't know. Kyle, your mic dropped out. But uh, yeah, to, to talk over him while he fixes that. <laughs> yeah, that was it. I didn't feel safe in my own home anymore. And that was a really big deal. Mm-hmm. Having said that, if I was walking home from work and abducted off the sidewalk, I'm not sure I'd feel safe anywhere. Like yeah. it, it just. So anyway, you well, just put it fear to people. I, I know what it's like to be on the other side. I know what you're saying, Woody. I got my golf clubs robbed, and I felt like, what the fuck, motherfucker? I wanted to kill these kids, whoever did it. And I was so mad. <laughs> and obviously, here I am, the biggest fucking robber, and I'm, I'm mad. That this one I got. <laughs> but I, I got golf. I didn't have money, and my buddy gives me golf clubs, and they get robbed out of the trunk, and I'm fucking, I mean, I am. And, mm-hmm. I, and somebody said, Larry, you robbed fucking, you know, 18 million. To you fucking robbed 25 cents. You robbed for you to do a kid. Now you're fucking. You're way ahead. Uh, it's karma, yeah. Larry. I got <laughs> my point. Was, I do get what you're saying it, with the fear thing, and but I also do believe. Again, I made amends with a lot of things, and people, you know, to my apologies and stuff because it's never right. But you got to get over. It. You can let anything in your life kill you. I got abused at 11 years old. I can make that destroy my whole life. You know, and oh, it's everybody's fault but mine. It's everybody did this. I'm this. I'm this crazy. Were you hit? Was it sexual abuse? What happened? Yeah, 11 years old by a priest. And it's in my book. And it, okay. actually, my writer got it out. And, and again, I could vilify. I'm not really, I don't believe in anything, but that's here or there. The, mm-hmm. You can make a lot of excuses in your life. You can blame this one, everybody, and do everything in the world. I always took, I was tortured. I don't know if you knew that. I was strapped down naked, beaten and tortured for 11 straight months. Broken ribs, document, FBI came, everything, fucking five people, everything. Because I was fighting the abuses of people in prison. The prison killed three of my friends. Literally mm-hmm. killed them. Uh, medically and stuff. I mean, literally, one guy was puking up his lungs and guts and they didn't get him out of his cell for 30 minutes because they didn't find a key and they didn't give a shit and they came. Mm-hmm. on another side. 
Anyway, I started writing articles. There was a big article I wrote uh, in the what the uh, Arctic Beacon it was called. Uh, I compared the United States prison system with Abu Ghraib. Abu Ghraib was the prison in Iraq that where mm -hmm. we you remember we tortured the Iraqi mm -hmm. and made the election. Yeah. Well, yeah. I compared the United States prison system to that and worse and worse because it was going on. They took me out of my cell once a month after breaking ribs. They stripped you naked. And they put you in a, in, a, in a, on a slab, and it's called four point. And I, I remember, yeah, they go with these things. And the guy takes his dick out, pees on my face, and, and he says, "Keep writing, Senator's law, and keep writing." And the guy's spitting on me, and, and they leave me there, and then they put me back in the cell. And then, and I was getting maced. I got maced, concussion, grenaded, and, and shocked. Uh, I was violent Jesus. too. I, I, I was fighting them, and I learned that you can't fight them physically. You can't. When I got smart is when I when I started effect, getting more uh, uh, effect on them and answers or even higher ups and senators involved. So it does help. To, it's all mm -hmm. bullshit politics, but it does work. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it, I think if it wasn't for that, my father, who, who set things up, how they were stealing my mail, the the, uh, the fucking the postmaster general will arrest their mother. They fucking mm -hmm. I get the warden come down on my fucking I'm in the hole. He goes, Lawton. He goes, this lieutenant's going to pick up your mail every day. The other one was, the other guy was fired. The other guy was demoted. Is that good? Who the fuck am I? I'm a fucking lonely inmate in the fucking prison. What the fuck are you telling me this shit for? We found out because they were stealing my mail. My dad went to the postman and said, General, they put like a track letter. Or I don't know how they do it. They caught mm -hmm. them fucking stealing mail. Now, they're allowed to look at it. They're allowed to do a lot of things. But you can't steal mail. That's fucking a federal fucking event. It's a bigger deal mm -hmm. than people might guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Even more so. What we yeah. But, you know, and so I could take all those. I actually had a judge. I told my buddy, he says, Larry, I know you well. I know your stories. I, I looked you up. I looked you up in actual archives. He goes, I almost believe you could be bitter. I said, bullshit. His name Dave. I said, I no, I don't believe that, Dave. I says, I could take that and become a piece of shit or, oh, it happened to me, this kind of crap, bullshit. Or you can learn from it, teach others try to either prevent them from going, maybe not doing the things, or understand how to handle it or whatever it is. And you know what? Every one of you in this room right here, the four of us, five of us, we all have fucking some baggage, some shit and shit, and you, and you handle it. You fucking, somehow you did what you had to do to handle it. You did. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here sitting here, all you guys, uh, myself included. And, and I just hope you take that and try to help somebody, whatever that is. And I tell that with, with Kyle's stuff, with his whatever, the weed or whatever, or you take anybody with a DUI, I tell them, listen, you got a DUI, now you know the process. I hope you teach others not to do what you did. Either, you know, help them not to do it or... Oh, it, I tell people, it. always vacuum seal your drugs. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. That's the takeaway. Spend some money on a good one, too. <laughs> you don't that keep that out of the vacuum, you of vacuum, vacuum like mushrooms, vacuum seed mushrooms. Because <laughs> nobody gives a shit about weed. Not anymore. You might be surprised. Yeah. No. Speaking, speaking you're, you're of right, weed, Woody, Woody oh. you're hundred percent right. What you just said, because I just found out a dude got like thirty years for pot. Again, two hundred fifty pounds or some shit. Like I don't give a shit how much it is. How the fuck are you giving people this kind of? And we're paying for it. You, me, you know, our taxes. That's, <laughs> yeah. It doesn't do anyone any good. All right. This I'll episode of, <laughs> yes, this episode do of PKA, a, we're going to do a few. Uh, I'm sorry, Woody, go ahead. I was going to ask you to do gummy bears last. Yes. Yeah, like gummy we'll, do the, we'll do the gummy bears last. We're going to hear from a couple of wonderful we'll gummy bears. You want gummy bears? <laughs> we'll talk about the gummy bears. We're going to do a, a few advertisements. This episode of PKA is brought to you by Blue Chew. And I forgot to pull up the ad rate. Here it is. Uh, <laughs> I just remember we're grateful for the Blue Chew I just, ad. just remembered uh, I should probably have it loaded. Uh, spring, <laughs> spring has finally come, so let's help you do the same. Ooh, That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, confidence can take you far in life. It can also help in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate. That's where Blue Chew comes in. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? 
it's all done online. So no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Very discreet. It says custom medicine. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free free when you use our promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the five bucks in shipping, folks. That's BlueChew.com promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank BlueChew for sponsoring the podcast so, so, so much. Free is um, a good price for the hardest dick you've ever had. On our knees. Un- your, your dick's going to be so hard, you're going to be, oh, is this okay? So, <laughs> BlueChew.com code PKA. Check it out. This episode also brought to you, speaking of penis... Lock and load another oh. penis pill. It helps you come more. It makes your orgasm better. Every everyone's talking about it. Lots and lots of very smart yeah, people are. are busting more. They're all coming. <laughs> They're all coming all over because of their hot daughters and all sorts of reasons. <laughs> oh, <Jesus> <laughs> <Christ>. <laughs> We're gonna lose our lock and load sponsorship somehow. There's no way we'll lose it. We are fuck. lock and load. <laughs> <laughs> no, and that is ten percent off, folks. Code PKA or code Jizz. Over at Derek's website, linked below, you can get 10% off of anything on Derek's website. Whose idea recommend- was Code Jizz? I, I'm not trying Kyle's. to take- Thank you. I wasn't trying to take credit for it. I legitimately couldn't remember because I'm so high. <laughs> it was <laughs> Kyle. one of you used it. We all use it. We, we all use yeah. it. We no, came I- up with a formula. We tested We'd be the bell of the ball months. the first day in prison. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, that guy's leaking. Just- I'd be like, I can't help it. It always does that. It just leaks when I get excited. That's the Pygeum. Dude, the leaking is one of the best parts. Yeah. Yep, you're pre coming. It's if we were making stuff up for nonsense sake, we would have sold a smaller bottle and we'd tell you to take one pill a day. You got to take yep. five in the morning and four at night because we're trying to hit <laughs> efficacious dosages, folks. We would have done this to you. We'd have like this is a bottle of selenium. This these pills, like, like we could have done this. Like, yeah, take take one of these a day. It doesn't do and shit. We could, and put sugar in here if we fucking wanted. But we didn't do that. We came up with a formula. We tested it thoroughly. Tested. It's and hilariously and effective. I, you will notice if the I'm, difference. If I'm not mistaken, I believe it is still marked down. Ten dollars oh. off from oh. its normal price. So check that out. I think with our code PKA or you can get it for thirty five dollars right now. Hit it. Holidays check are coming up out. soon. Holidays are coming up soon. You wanna you wanna get the stocking stuffers? Okay. You wanna get those lined <laughs> up? Everybody's gonna want to. I'm telling you, they're gonna sell out. The closer we get to uh, to the to, to 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 Halloween, everybody's gonna want to be giving these out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, those sexy nurses aren't gonna fuck themselves. They're not. Maybe. <laughs> no. So lock and load. Code PKA or code Jizz. And if you want to check anything else out at Derek's site, use those codes as well. Use the Nitric pre workout. That is fantastic. Actually, best pre workout in the game. I've protein switched to his protein. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, yep, I use so those. I. I bought protein somewhere else. I, I used it up before I switched over, and uh, I am I am digging it. I make that uh, protein French toast out of it. You didn't oh, buy it, did you? The vanilla tastes good. No, I get it free. But, oh, good, good. Uh, okay. but I was it, gonna say, like, like, like you were like, yeah, what I, got I would it, and I switch like, to. I like it. I, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I genuinely, I'm pretty happy with the it's protein. Very, I like it more than the old stuff. Yep, I super agree. high quality stuff, uh, and. Now this page has to reload. Oh, okay. Oh. We're going to hear from another wonderful, wonderful sponsor, Wonky Weeds and Lock, or not Lock and Load, Death by Gummy Bears. <laughs> if yeah, I you're in your find... game tonight. Fuck. Literally, yeah, I had both, I had both pages. Did you Adderall before the show? I had, <laughs> I had both, both pages open, and then when I opened them, they did that refresh thing, except I'm reading this from the, the chat. Are you just learning to read? Guy. What you the heck? sharper than a prison <laughs> shank, my friend. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. We're going to hear from a couple of <laughs> sharper than a prison shank. Thank you for that. This episode of PKA brought to you by DeathByGummyBears.com and WonkyWeeds.com. Are you or a loved one sick of mediocre or even bad THC alternatives? I know I am. Well, we've got great news for you. DeathByGummyBears.com and WonkyWeeds.com have you covered. Death by Gummy Bears and Wonky Weeds were founded by a group of passionate professionals who were sick and tired of low-quality THC alternatives that are spray-coated and very often incorrectly dosed. That's why DeathByGummyBears.com and WonkyWeeds.com had the boys in the lab cook up high-quality, powerful THC alternatives that are accurately dosed and actually taste great. Looking for a super strong 100 milligram Delta 8 gummy that'll put you on your ass? Then DeathByGummyBears.com is for you. 
Looking for a more mellow, relaxing high? Then the cartridges, disposables, pre-rolls, and distillates you'll find at wonkyweeds.com are more your speed. You can also get gummies at wonkyweeds.com that are weaker than the fucking world beaters over at Death by Gummy Bears. So whether you're just trying to get absolutely shit housed or just a, a nice, relaxing night at home, we've got the Delta 8 or THC alternative product for you. With so many satisfied customers all over the USA, American-based wonkyweeds.com and deathbygummybears.com serves all states where hemp-derived THC is legal. So whether you're a current THC enjoyer or just interested in trying something new, go to wonkyweeds.com or deathbygummybears.com and use code PKA20 for 20% off your order. Once again, that's wonkyweeds.com or deathbygummybears.com, code PKA20, 20% off your whole order, whatever you get, the gummies, the cartridges, distillates, whether you're at wonkyweeds or deathbygummybears.com, that code PKA20 will save you a lot. I'm all out of drugs. You're all out? Drugs. Yeah. Yes. More of these carts. Mr. Wonky, (laughs) if you're watching this, I need more of your your magical, what was this? uh, No, no. I want the the, the, uh, HHC, right? Yeah. You you know, you know how uh... dopey, dopey high when I watch my space TV shows. And I need like, I know you've been sending me like four at a time and I get it. Like, like I bet they're a little expensive, but I bet we're selling a lot of this shit. So if you could send me like a solid dozen, that'll get me through the (laughs) week. Vapes. And... (laughs) (laughs) because because i start getting the shakes when i start running low and i go into this downward spiral but i draw the curtain so a a solid dozen well he's he's looking for the uh a fortnight easily uh, uh, you know but Please, pretty please. Aren't they the same top. thing as vapes? I'm confused. No, yeah, no, the disposable the cartridges. It's those are know, the vape the, cartridges. The he wants more of the HHC. The disposables we got are Delta Eight. HHC is is a lot stronger than Delta Eight. So, Kyle, this is how good of friends we Thank are you. today. Literally, I reached out to him and I'm like, I'm pretty sure based on the time that Kyle's out, can you ship him another thing of carts? And hey, so look, I'm gonna be. I got. I've you. got your. I've got your. Uh, your your UPS tracking link for you. I appreciate that so much. But let me just be honest with you. I I think they sent four of them last time, maybe only three. I went through those in two days. Like like, like 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 when I stay up all night, like 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 get gaming or something, I'm just puffing mm-hmm. it. Like I'm doing here on the show, so I'm dopey high the whole time when I'm playing. I've been playing Fallout with my girlfriend, and so <laughs> she's never played Fallout before or any Fallout game, and I'm pretending like I haven't either. So, <laughs> <laughs> but this is like an RPG mystery story, right? We're trying to figure out who who kidnapped our son and who killed our husband, and I'm just I'm over here like. I bet it's a guy named Kellogg, and I bet he's <laughs> right fucking there. <laughs> and, and oh. We're like, we're walking down the railroad tracks, and I'm like, I hope we don't get ambushed right now. <laughs> <And there's laughs> no rats come out of the yeah. ground because I've played thousands of hours of that game. Like, I know that game well enough to quote the characters. Well, like, it's a fucking movie. I, I, know I will where talk all the ambush to him. Points are. I'll talk to him and make sure that we get a a hero's shipment lined up for for Kyle. Yeah, there we go. I I am exaggerating about how long it took. It, it took like they've been gone for a while, but I do. I probably smoke two days and one of these is gone. Like like one of these cards is gone. I'm I'm liking the disposable Wait. cartridges. Taylor knows what I'm talking about. What they're T8. What are they? They're, Delta they're the the Delta Eight ones. Yes. So these we, are interesting. Um, yes. So I'm talking to people who probably all know more than me but i like that you get high faster and you can dose i hit it twice and i'm like eh, three and then mm-hmm. you know you hit it a third time and i'm like i'm gonna uh, take a tolerance break if you're this serious. is right that gets you high i'm it, gonna I'm oh gonna take yeah a month off. i'm gonna take <laughs> sometimes, a month off Kyle, sometimes two sometimes three never four don't be <laughs> <insane>. <laughs> let me tell you what i do with these let me tell you what i do with these i create a fife and i'm like <laughs> I'm smoking like a half dozen of them at a time. They're all cooking. The lights are all blue. <laughs> and well, I've got this fire, edible and, and, take too long to hit. Oh, yeah, I don't mind the weight. The See, so got, I used to be. And, can, I, can I respond to him? I, I I used to be pro edible, and I still am. But the dosing is really tricky. Sometimes I want half of one. Sometimes I want three quarters of one of those uh, wonky ones, the, the lighter ones. Rarely a hole. A hole's a lot for me. Yeah, but, so the uh, stuff we're talking about is legal in the states where marijuana is not legal. It's mm-hmm. made from hemp. It gets you high as fuck, but it's covered under the farm bill. But we're but it, you can get it anywhere that you can't get legal weed because those businesses keep each other out, right? So well, here in they, Georgia, they, there's a place in Florida here 
that you could well it's medical i don't know if you got medical the, there so it so you've also got the delta eight competing there yeah but i don't nobody gets this shit from i mean i get my stuff wherever but it's the edibles just for maybe because of my age my meta- metabolism has slowed down so much mm-hmm. it takes that, two hours for me for him to kick in and, oh, and Kyle, i was just gonna say that two hours it takes for that's me. standard that's just standard metabolism. i take a punch bar they're, they're 25 milligram, unfucking real best shit I've ever fucking taken. I give anybody, I buy them by a fucking case, but and I, not that I eat them that much. I actually give them out as gifts. This is I kind of want to get you a death by gummy because I'm pretty yeah, sure like, our like, sponsor like, will kick your ass. So <laughs> these are 100 milligrams each. Now, granted, it's Delta Eight. It's that other shit made yeah. from hemp, and and I don't. I'm not a fucking chemist. I can't explain like how that shit works. But anyway, you get 2,500 milligrams in one of these little bottles. 25 100 bangers and for a normal person one of them will fuck you up to the point where you're like i'm not driving i am not fucking i'm gonna sit in this chair or lie in this bed those are my two options i tried it i i had like half of one and i'm like is it irresponsible to make something this powerful (laughs) you know it's the when i give the punch bars and and i like you said we all have whatever you go to right And and i listen i'm no rookie i do whatever and that fucking shit hit me like ketamine where the fuck I was like a zombie, oh, like a fucking, God. you know, it yeah. fucking, I've done every, and I've tried every, in prison, most of the drugs, you know, I did a lot of acid in prison and shit like that, and certain drugs more in prison, but those, those drugs today, we never had weed like they got fucking today, man, I will tell you what, I don't even smoke weed anymore, I smoke rosin, you know, resin, rosin, mm-hmm. my, son, my mm-hmm. son was big, big, you want to talk weed, just talk, we're talking to a guy for about a strain, you know, to do, because I got a cigar yeah. coming out. I got my I, own cigar brand coming out. Actually, I got the CEO of Oliva Cigar, the third largest company in the world. He's coming to my, right here tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I'm going to do a show with him because I partnered with them and they put up a zillion dollars. And I got my own brand called the Crooked Diamond. <laughs> and it's, and it's it, we have a, a, a club and the Crooked Diamond, we have a, uh, Four, three three type cigars and they're good cigars and the ten dollar cigar eleven dollar cigar they're good cigars and we're even giving a cruise away for your audience we'll tell your audience we're giving it that all they got to do is subscribe to our two youtube channels and our uh what is it called oh and our newsletter that's it and they get entries into a free cruise for two where are we two, going huh uh, Bahamas. It's, it's coming out of court it, it's it's coming from uh Wherever they fly in, they two people fly in, they take a limo to the ship, they get a, 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 a the balcony room, and then we're all going on it. My whole team. Who gets, who gets to pick the winner? Uh, it's that, ram, that randomizer, that thing they do. That randomizer. Oh, okay. So I know that getting... guy. Yeah. Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I slipped him $15. I would have tripped to the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish it was that easy. <laughs> but so we're, we're, we're giving that cruise away, and uh, – that's in November. And we're picking it next month, October 3rd. And it's every, I mean, it's, it's going to be what? Thousands, not fucking millions to take a shot. And if the person's from out of the country or under 21, they could still do it. But they get the newest Air MacBook Pro, whatever it is, the 2000s, whatever the fuck it is. I don't even know what it is. You want a MacBook? It's a, the new one, whatever it is. It's say about 1400 bucks, he said. So it's about the same price as the as the crews we're going to give to the first people. So it, it's that we're doing crazy. We got a cigar club shit. This brand shit, you know, when you have a brand that it, my son wants me to get weed because, you know, I love weed. I love all whatever chemicals. So I know the uh, weed is a plant, but the, uh, he wants us to get it because we, we got approached by a person to get our own, like, I don't know if it's a strain they call it or no, what mm-hmm. is it? Uh, is yeah, what it is? strain. Yeah, yeah, you could name. Where you do it, you dang it, it's your whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. Listen, I'm getting old for this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm um, new to it. I don't think I ever smoked pot until I was 48. What? <laughs> yeah. And uh, wow. no, no, I did it in the in the Dominican Republic a little bit, but that barely counts. I I went to Colorado and tried it for the first time last year. Really? Yeah, but I. I still like talking about it as a sponsor because there's other people like that I represent. I feel like I have customers who need to hear the rookie's perspective. Yeah, I, I love that. Yeah, I, I think that, I think we're, we're perfect. Our, I think we're perfect perfect at selling that product because you should. You know, pot you represent, 
you represent you know, that like target audience that hadn't done it before and is like like when you ate the like the leg and it got <laughs> you high i had so many people oh. message me like was woody joking around and i'm like no like, like no like, woody's <laughs> fucked up he's like all right i'm ordering all right i'm ordering two bobs i'm ordering two bobs. <laughs> you sold a lot of it just because they were like oh okay that's how it works i forgot i took it and taylor and had like tolerances yeah 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 you don't have the tolerance level like whatever drug i did a lot of acid in prison it takes me a lot of more acid to go tripping and 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 i love psychedelics and, and and i actually love them because they're coming out with a lot of stuff uh mdma is now curing ptsd it's it's in, you can look at all the medical literature they're actually the university of mississippi has the only class a license from the federal government to test that stuff uh psilocybin how do i join that study I keep hearing psilocybin. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> I keep hearing psilocybin is a cure for depression. It, and, well, and it's MDMA too. Yeah. Uh, you're right. I, I take them both. They're, they're really, I, I always like psychedelics. You can never overdose from them. You, they, you, you can't die. You can't, it doesn't bring your heart rate. It doesn't do anything. Can you pause right. there? Literally never? Like no you one can, ever has? You cannot overdose from it. Okay. You could take as much as a, I had a buddy in prison. He, was, he, he went to prison for life for mm -hmm. acid. And he had oh, 30,000 tabs, used to file a Grateful Dead around and stuff. And oh, he yeah. had a hundred hit vial, a hundred hit break in his pocket. Oh, he did to no. his body, hundred hits. Now, I didn't say he wasn't tripping for a long time. In fact, he was so fucked up, he sold all his worldly possessions for a skateboard. <laughs> this is it, a skateboard, uh, two tickets to Jerry Garcia concert. And a, a skateboard, two tickets, or something else, or like like, or a guitar or some shit, for his whole fucking goddamn his furniture, his everything he fucking owned. <laughs> I mean, he got that fucked up. But you won't overdose. It's not like it, like heroin. You can, you know. Right, you're not gonna get you hurt. Just die. Yeah. Have you ever done no. meth? I've been watching Breaking yeah. Bad. I, I've I, done. I, I've done pretty much every drug. I'm trying to think one I haven't. What effect does meth have on you? Because I can't tell by watching Breaking Bad. Okay, have you done coke? No. Okay, if you do coke and meth, they're kind of a light, but meth lasts a lot longer. So is it like an Adderall almost, where you're just in a sort of good yeah, mood, hyper? Yeah, yeah, you know, it depends. And again, anybody know, I, I actually, when I speak around the country on drugs, I tell them, listen, you control it. Don't let it control you. Drugs mm -hmm. is, a, is a personal choice. Now, if you commit a crime for it, go to jail. If you go rob something for it, go to jail. But what you do in your own home, I don't care what you do. Uh, you're not hurting anybody else. If, if you, you, they shouldn't give you something. Oh, you're disabled because you're a fucking drug. Well, that's your problem. You did it. That's it. Mm -hmm. But in, in all the drugs, you control it. Don't let it control you. I was very, I, I guess you're a little lucky how you do it. I don't have that addictive personality where you mm -hmm. do one thing. I've done heroin. People go, oh, don't do heroin. You're gonna fucking do heroin. I never shot it. I snorted it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're gonna get addicted. No, you do not. You do not. It's like any other. Careful with that, though, because some people do. Heroin is the scariest one to me and, and all the opioids, right? Even the ones they prescribe and such, because I, I, I've just observed good people who had their shit together lose their shit. It's, I mean, it didn't happen to you. I follow. But, it, but watch this one. You'll like this. I got I got 15 vertebrae done in my back. 15. All crushed right now. Zipper from my back to front. I took. 180 milligrams of oxycodone, which is mm -hmm. six 30 milligram pills, every single day for 11 years. Nobody's ever seen me high on them. I got off them on my own, and my doctor buddies, you know, actually, one of my friends is the biggest pot doctor in the state and one of the biggest in the country. His name is Frank Filiberto. He's a doctor, he's classes in Cal, every, you know, he's one of these pot and he's also an ENT surgeon and a plastic surgeon. I mean, the guy's mm -hmm. 70 years old. He's fucking a genius. But he says, like, you never see a high because you have all these pain receptors. How opioids work is that they go through your body and they attach to pain receptors. You know, throbbing of pain wherever it's at and it'll dull the pain. It never cures it, but it mm -hmm. dulls it so mm -hmm. you can get by. Mm -hmm. What happens is I had so much of it. That's why it can never get to the endorphins in your brain. When an athlete or you or somebody breaks their arm, they take an opioid and it works. But when there's no more pain and it's not through your body, you still take it like they tell you. And then it goes through your system and it gets to the endorphins. 
eventually the endorphins want it and that's how the addiction comes about. But if it doesn't get to the endorphins, it, it, you can't do that. It, it won't make you addicted. Now mine did physically, but I weaned off them. I went from six pills a day. I did that for three weeks or a month and then five and then five. And on my birthday, two, I think this year will be two, two or three, two years. This October 3rd is my birthday. I never took one. I mean, it just, again, I'll, I'll smoke weed, I'll do other things, but it, it, I do do things when I want, not because I have to, if I have to do a show or if I have to go on TV, NBC, like I get a call for a lot of robberies for, for network TV. Mm-hmm. You, know, you don't want to go there fucked up, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, I was with Cheech and Chong on fucking Fox News with fucking the Huckabee show and Tommy Chong is fucking hammered. How he fucking function? Like Kyle said, weed affects me worse than those drugs. Hmm. I mean, I'm talking about if I took my gummy or something like that. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about taking a couple of hits to mellow out. I'm talking about, you know, take one of those gummies. I just took two gummies at 20 milligrams. This, that's good for me to go to sleep in about two hours. You know what I mean? Two and a half hours. Is, there anywhere, where, uh, is there anywhere where LSD is legal? I like think well, I know mushrooms is now legal in Washington. DC. Yeah, but I hate mushrooms. Zach but, says Oregon. Do you? Why do you hate mushrooms, Kyle? Ah, it's like a. I, it, they like bum me out. It's like you've got the kind of this like happiness, like, and then when you use all your happy juice, and then you like have this sort of like afterwards, it's just like, oh, well, now I'm kind of bummed out. I like used all my happy juice. Now, <laughs> when did they and, bum and, you out? Can I? I want to afterwards. Ask like, like, like. So like you enjoy the high, afterwards. and then kind of the hangover is being bummed out. Yeah, like like once you've had your fun, it's like, oh man, I'm real bummed out, and I'm trying to put my finger on what's bumming me out, and I can't. It just feels like I'm in a pit of despair that that I manufactured with with this silly drug that that only made me giggly for a little while. Meanwhile, LSD is way cheaper. You don't have to power through disgusting mushrooms. You can just put like three or four tabs on your tongue, and you're done, and you don't even taste it. It's just paper, and you do a dozen hours of silly giggly look at the walls pulse and breathe and melt that's that's cool let's watch some fun movies oh fantasia i just remember the other day what dirty was afraid of when we were like watching fantasia he freaked out we had to pause the movie big projector screen dark room the five of us all chilling out it sounds a little gay but it was just a great bonding experience we're all on lsd and and uh dirty this bless his little heart he's like stop stop the tv it's scary it's scary he's like curl up in a ball and i'm like oh shit stop it stop it i'm like what is it buddy show me the scary man who's scaring you and (laughs) it's mickey fucking mouse it's mickey fucking mouse did he have a bad trip no he's just being a big baby okay (laughs) I, i actually was with uh He's right. Acid lasts longer. That's what only difference I really find out. How long does uh, it take to? And I do mushrooms different an hour. If you do mushrooms, an hour, and it's juice, like maybe thirty minutes. It's, it's one of those things where, like, maybe thirty minutes in, I'm feeling, it, and then by an hour, it's like, oh, it's real now. And then, even that's slower than I. It's hard to dose if it takes thirty to sixty minutes to hit. You, I, I'll take this is what I felt food. about it though. Like, like, because I was scared of the dosage. I took the one hit at seven p.m. and eight p.m. came came along, and I felt tremendous. And I was like, "Is it? Am I peaking?" And they're like, "Yeah, more or less." And I'm like, "Oh, I definitely want another one. Give me one more." And that one hit, and I'm like, "Oh, I th- this is one of those rare moments where twice as much is twice as good." You mm-hmm. know, there's with alcohol, you're always chasing that perfectly buzzed little in between moment where to. you're sociable but you're not wobbly on your feet. You want to be not between those, over right? Afterwards, yeah. right? It's hard to stay in that zone with alcohol, but with that LSD, it was perfect. It's like, oh, I definitely, I'm like, I want as much as I can get. How but much? But you've more done do LSD <laughs> that one trip, right? Yes. Yeah. So we don't know if you got lucky or if this is a normal. Oh. Every if LSD is always like it's that. It's how everyone else felt as well, except for okay. the one guy who was like, he was. Look, I love you to death, dirty, but he was being like white girl with a Zima drunk. Like, like everybody like, then, like uh, I, 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 everybody tries to chase their best high or whatever it is in life. Mm-hmm. Mine was I, I did four four hits of acid, good shit, and I floated out of Atlanta, and I literally was looking down at the prison. I was literally fucking floating. I, I, I swear to my children, I was floating. Of course, I wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, but that's the high I try to chase, and, and it's hard to get to that. And of course, you don't want to go because where's the next level you'd say to yourself or whatever it is. But I found that like it takes me more 
with acid, like he said, if the more you're depending on the person, how much they take. I've learned that. Have you ever heard of DMT? DMT. Oh yeah, that, mm. I I really want to do DMT. None of us I, have tried. I, I love. DMT. I want to break a bunch of laws doing it. Though. DMT is one of the greats. I love DMT. Now, there's DMT is. You know what is? You know, if you ever heard of ayahuasca, of course, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Same that's same. what it's really like. It's only an intense high for about thirty minutes, so you could understand yourself now. Like you. Yeah, we're we're pretty people. familiar with DMT around here. We've got a uh, we we. We were all on a call like this once with some of our viewers, and one guy went on a whole DMT trip right in front of us. Like, like he took three big hits back to back yeah. to back, and we got to see him. And he described what he was seeing with his eyes closed, it. and it was, it was really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. So I think, would you guys do it? Like, like let's legal ramifications aside, let's say they legalized it, and you could go to, down to the gas station and you get a bar like this, and it's DMT. And it, would would you? Would it, you it hit that kind of. You mean like it kind of scares like me. It looks like pot. Um, it looks. Like I've pot. seen it in vapes like this, and I've seen people also smoke it out of oil pipes, which for the, the uninitiated is like a crack pipe. You know, you got the gold. Someone told me that's DMT. Um, maybe. I don't know what yeah, you got. Yeah, Kyle, to answer your question, since you asked, I would do it if I could find a reliable tour guide. Right, That's oh. what I'd be looking at. I need a subject matter expert to help me on doses, to understand my goals. Analytical. And, the answer uh, everywhere. The answer everywhere. <laughs> Woody, that, that, what you're saying is right. Let me tell you what I, I just came from Colorado. I was there and I went to Red Rocks. I went to a Denver game, uh, uh, a Colorado Rockies game, Frisco. Uh, and I was with a couple of psychologists, you know, that were in there. And they want to do the psilocybin and they're going and they want to do the acid and the DMT because they say they are now reading enough literature about it that they want at least experience before they tell somebody how to do it, what to do. So what you're saying is like normal for people. I'm a risk taker, obviously. I've been a risk taker my whole fucking life. Yeah. I mean, you don't go rob and fucking do everything I did in my life. Mm-hmm. So I don't look at drugs. I look at, listen, uh, at my age, if I dropped dead today, I had a fucking craziest life in the world. It is what it is. But I, I so I jump at those things. I want like he calls that he want to try that, want to do it, experience. You know, I'm one of those people. As long as you, I always say one thing, and I've been around a guy with a bad trip. I've been there, and ne- they're never that bad. In other words, they fucking, you know, it's over. It's six hours on acid. He'll tell you, that, Kyle, mm-hmm. tell you. But the Kyle didn't tell you the best thing to do on acid is when you're coming down, jack off. Because <laughs> I had a flight. That Kyle, why didn't you tell me? No, it's pretty. <laughs> Why? And I used to do it two or three times because it's a nerve drug. So it feels like your whole fucking body is coming out of you. Now, you can't do it when you're peaking. Obviously, it's like like most drugs. At least I couldn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, and but when you're coming down, it is the it was it was like another high. You know what I'm saying? Okay. It, it's like okay. In a pure I'll, high, I'll, whatever you want to call I'll, it. I'll beat one out you next time you I'm, in, I'm here. Yeah, on the way think, down. Did Zach on write that in Oakland oh, you can smoke the shit legal? I'd rather just not go to Oakland. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I don't know. I if saw some talking footage. About what you should do is just it looks be like around somebody that you trust. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in in a, and and a safe environment like like your officer, like here we do what you know. Be somewhere everybody's comfortable. Everybody mm-hmm. knows. Everybody's safe. There's nobody mm-hmm. gonna. That's important because that's a little shit that gets into your head. You know, yeah, I, I mean, I only have my the only experience I have with DMT is watching the guy in our hangout smoke it, and he vomited. So well, like, that a little. Was there. The a first time bit. he had a great experience. That's true. Second, and then yeah. he like back to backed it, and that's when he had the bad experience. Yeah, and, also and that was probably because of too much in a short amount of time, right? Well, also, Dirty told him that he was on fire. <laughs> that was mean. Uh, you know, again, DMT. Like when you when you, when you pull a DMT. It depends, you know, the best is take it in for, hold it for three seconds, take a three second pull, hold for three seconds, do it. If you do up to three, I mean, some people like myself that are a little big and they just move, they might take five. And it takes you to a place like you really are fucking, like you'll go through a tunnel, you know, you'll, you'll, you know, I always tell people, you want to go speak to fucking Jesus? I don't know who the fuck he is, but there's a guy out there, you know, talking. Or a <laughs> out the there, you can go you, talk. Do you, talk do, you see, do you see another person there? When you uh, I have. I, I saw, I mean, I thought I was literally fucking talking to fucking an alien or spaceman, you know. Man. What did he say? I don't fucking remember now. I was so fucked up. Damn, was, you really should have written <laughs> that shit down. Did I tell <laughs> you yes. that's been important? <laughs> I couldn't write. Are you kidding me? 
<laughs> and I tell you guys, and out of about- all the drugs I did in my life, that DMT or like he said, LSD acid is or microdots, same kind of class of drugs, were uh, which was mescaline. It was all. I'm all psychotropics. I love psychotropics because I, if you listen and you start reading about psychotropics, Einstein, some of your fucking greatest artists. Your great band people who wrote the greatest songs were doing all tripping and, and a lot of them because it opens up. It, it's an amazing drug. If you never try it, I'm not, a, I never push drugs on people ever. That's a personal choice. But if, if, if it's in your head to try it, go with two things I told. I've been around a couple of guys with bad trips, and here's what they do they fight it. They fight it. They think they can control it. They want to fight mm. it, and they have that bad trip. Let the fucking thing hit you, man. Don't give a fuck what happens. Oh, kind yeah. of like love, fuck, you know, get laid. Uh, fuck, you know what I mean? Just let it hit you. If you're you t- see your mind, probably not man. something for you. Won't lose your mind. Tight, you know what you do. If you're if you're at all tense, like like see that would like I feel like I would do it or I'd be right about to do it and I'd be like, Am I tense? Am I stressed? I'm probably stressed about something. Mm-hmm. Something's stressing see, me out. Something's like see, I like, can tell you that do any of you guys get paranoid. No, I know. Not with paranoid. not with smoking like, weed like, at all, no. If you like, don't we get also paranoid, stoned. if you don't have that paranoid bug, some people do. Yeah, no. Those are the people who are more apt, and I don't know why, but it's always at the everybody I've seen, it's the guy that's like, Did you hear that? They're coming. Oh, what the fuck are you talking? <laughs> Take another hit. But I uh, you know another hit. <laughs> I haven't you told you guys about mind bloom mind. yet. Except I man. signed up with this thing called Mind Bloom. I, I think I told you I was gonna do it, but that was months ago. They sell ketamine. It's kind of expensive. Um, I think it was twelve hundred dollars for six hits. So that's a it's it's not for everybody, but um, it's legal. They're doctors, and they sign up. They 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 ship you. They have clinics pretty, now. Yep, ketamine. Yeah, they ship you this pretty bougie kit with like a high end blindfold, some ketamine, some Zofran, so you don't get sick. Are you, um, are you serious? Yeah. I, what is your He's question? Right, Kyle. I know I'm, I'm so good. Go tell ketamine. me more. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm in. But you guys, I love ketamine. ketamine. Ketamine is very addictive, though. Be very hold on, hold on, hold on, Larry. Some. Hold on, Larry. We, we're going we're gonna to hear uh, Ooh, Woody's ketamine. Tell us, tell so us they sell you this, this bougie kit with the blindfold and um, the Zofran and this and that. And, and it comes with a blood pressure cuff to make sure that like you're appropriate condition to do this. And before you do it, you talk with a the therapist. And you go over your goals as you want the what you want this trip to be. Like, what are you working on? What are you doing? You know, this and that. And um, uh, then they give you the audio track to listen to. And it, it's pretty interesting. So to take ketamine, for those of you who've never taken it, you put it under your tongue and you wait. And uh, the therapist described it pretty well. She's like, it tastes like you think a pharmacy might taste. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> mm, bad. <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. And you have to keep it under your tongue for seven minutes without <sighs> swallowing. Okay. And uh, while you do this, you're listening to their audio track, which is designed for this. So uh, like a chime goes off at the seven minute point and then you spit it out and, uh, you know, put on your blindfold and they give you this. Like the soundtrack is influential. It's like motivational speeches and mind opening things about the meaning of life and um, like what's important in this world, how fleeting this time on earth we have is. And uh, it between the therapy with the counselor, the therapist and the audio track, by the time you spit this stuff out, you are really influenced to have an insightful trip and then the whole time you know you have your goals you're trying to work through like what a sprite feet what do you want to happen on the other side of this trip and it lasts two hours and then at the end like the counselor dials you back up and she has you write like your thoughts while they're still fresh right ever wake up you remember a dream very vividly Mm -hmm. and then whatever 40 minutes later you can't remember it at all there's a Mm -hmm. similar kind of thing going on so you write your notes as soon as you come out of this trip as to like what conclusions you reached while you're in this ketamine induced high it's as if all my ideas are not subject to the second guessing that they normally are right you know if you say "Ah, i've reached this conclusion you're like yeah you know it's not that simple there's some things on either direction of this. this is why it was hard in the first place when you're on a ketamine high, the, 
every idea you have is brilliant and unquestioned and and just like this is your this is what the answer is for you so i just sort of wrote down all these things like relationship things life things career things finance things mm -hmm. and these were my answers at the time now well you know they don't necessarily survive you know your sober yeah. inter interrogation of them but uh it is pretty neat to see what your mind arrives at when it's unencumbered by is the uh is the blindfold okay. just is that for the full two hours or yeah. just the, that's for the well it's set for the first seven minutes i think i wasn't okay. blindfolded when i waited with it under my tongue so i have so many questions how did yeah, you this find so what's the service called mind bloom okay and how did you find out about them a friend sent it to me and said like you know what you might like this and and <laughs> I don't know how to say this without being an asshole. I didn't talk about money. I don't know how to be an asshole. But $1,200 for this, it, this is reserved for people who have $1,200 to throw away, right? It's not mm -hmm. everybody. But, it was uh, how many hits? Forgive me. Six. Yeah. So here's what happens. They give you a dose the first time. And they're kind of aiming at the low side of right. And um, I came back and I was like, you know what? Like, I was high. It was influenced. I liked it. But the truth is, by 45 minutes in, I felt like ever be drunk and you are drunk, mm -hmm. but if your mom was there, you could act not drunk. You could fight it <laughs> yeah, and undo yeah. it. Yeah. And I was like, I, I feel like I was kind of there, you know, like I, I was mm -hmm. definitely influenced and in, in doing it. But the second hour, I was almost trying to be drunk, like white girl on white claw. Trying to keep it going. Yeah. So they doubled my dose What's for on? the next five. And, and that's what happens. They send you one dose, you report back how it went, and then they send you the next five. Okay. So. I got questions. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. I, well, my question was, like, what's, what's to stop you from being like, you know what? I decided to just do all these drugs and not call your therapist back. I just really wanted to get real high. It's so, 1,200. Um, the first one, I don't know. You like I, – I, I guess I didn't think to question the program the first time. I wanted the therapist to sort of be there and guide me through it and help me with my goals and stuff. Uh, the second one, uh, I went. it was a little confusion. Like I went to schedule the second one and they're like, oh, that's unguided. And then they were texting me like, hey, why haven't you done the second one? I was like, low key, I did, but I did, you know, your website said that was unguided. I'm a little mixed up. And then three through six, <laughs> you're just on your own. So, you know, they don't do that hand holding once you mm -hmm. develop your own expertise. I'm I'm curious. I don't know what ketamine costs on the street. And I know that doesn't that really doesn't matter because I don't want to commit Expensive. any crimes. But but here's why it does matter. If I found out that ketamine costs like like LSD is cheap as fuck. LSD mm -hmm. is like twenty five dollars and we're going to get out of our minds. <laughs> so if I found out that, that they were selling me twelve hundred dollars worth of ketamine but really it was $12 for the ketamine. I'd be like, God damn it. Is there a place I can just travel to and make a vacation of this and do it so, there? Mexico. Pause there. I know the answer to this. Yeah, that. It's yes. I paid a lot for this, right? Some people are going to call me stupid, but I get to choose that I value mm. the therapy a lot. No, 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 so, no, 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 no. You, right. you kept yourself out of any possible legal trouble while getting exactly what you wanted. Well, you haven't heard me through. Oh, then I'll listen. I can go to a place locally, I've learned, like in Raleigh, where they give it to you by IV, and it's stronger and cheaper and better, right? But I still don't feel ripped off because I feel like I got the value out of the set, the setting, the audio, like all those service. things. I was brand mm -hmm. new, right? Yeah, you know, service. If uh, When I finish that, if I, okay. if I still want to do this again, I might go and do the IV route the next time around, but... Um, uh, for me, it was like, is this a look, North Carolina thing? I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm mind bog I'm boggled here by the idea that ketamine is being slung out on the street. Ketamine by is a prescription fun. drug, and doctors are given leeway to prescribe what they think helps you. Period. It's uh, given out by anesthesiologists pre-surgery frequently. I'm told. See, I knew that, but like, okay, it's not like I can go somewhere and get some laughing gas. There's not some doc who's like, "Hey, you want to go on a little silly trip real quick?" <laughs> like that doesn't happen. So why it is if you have a cool ketamine? dentist? <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> it smells like bubble gum. Hey, Woody, I totally get what you did. Totally get what you did because of the experience. It's like going to a, a great massage parlor or whatever it is. It's it's an experience. When I, I did ketamine, 
and have done ketamine and done acid. And I'm with Kyle. I like the acid a lot better. And I, even to I'll tell you what, I didn't do that seven minutes. You didn't have to do that. You know, mm-hmm. we did a, 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 a dropper, you know, like, a, you know, the, what do they call them? A fucking, uh, for eye the like an eyedropper. Yeah. Whatever. Under the tongue, boom, let it. I fucking totally enjoyed the high because I felt like you said, I didn't give a fuck kind of deal, like whatever it was, but I couldn't even stand up. I couldn't, like, I could not, I could, I was laughing at myself. I could like not that. fucking stand up. So when you think of that, how do you not stand up? It's fucking, you must have had a much higher dose than like this yeah. like, uh, introspective journal. Well, I, I, yeah, the yeah. seven minutes, it must have been crazy. But I, again, I've done a lot of drugs. LSD or acid or whatever which you, you want to get me always to the best place that I've been where you can was, laugh. Oh, shit, he's got off. his fucking ketamine kit. God they damn, call, what is you know, they call what it? God damn. It, they call it <laughs> ketamine. Dude, a couple of names dude, for 2000, 2005, Woody would not recognize this man. This, this, <laughs> this, this, this yoked ass fellow what, coming, coming in with his ketamine kit in his mansion. <laughs> <laughs> having, like, having a wait, ketamine, what? yeah. Dude, you, you said that so well. Walking in with his ketamine kit and his mansion, like that's, uh, this is the coolest is that, thing you've ever done. <laughs> this is my uh, bougie little ketamine kit, and I open it up. I can't stress enough how high quality this fucking uh, <laughs> I think is. It, it's got like little pads here. Anyway, uh, bucks. Um, <laughs> this is a notepad. I don't write very well, but I type well, so I didn't use it. It comes with this tricky little pen. Everything about this is high quality. This is the blood pressure cuff, if I could open it with one hand. Um, and finally, I don't want to show this too carefully because it's like my doses and personal information printed on it. But uh, these are the ketamine tablets. And, oh, this is the anti-nausea Zofran stuff. And this is just my freaking bougie little oh. ketamine experience. Did you need the anti-nausea? I haven't tried it without it. I'm finished, Zach. Oh, I, I wonder, I'd like to hear others' experiences of doing it without it because, I, although, I, so I'm going to do this. As, is this North Carolina? Is this everywhere? Like, what? It's my impression it's everywhere, but I'm not sure. I just know that it's in I, Raleigh. I am going to look, at, I'm going to find the closest way to go somewhere and get an IV of fucking ketamine. Although I do hate IVs, but I'll do it for this. I, I, <laughs> I give me the anti, if they'll give me the anti nausea, I'll take, I'll put the IV in myself. That's you the problem. You don't need an IV. That's for sure. I, I want to fuck. I want the hardest hit I can get. I want to go somewhere. It's just gonna get there quicker. It's not so much harder. Hard. I mean, you know, it's just a process, but it's gonna get there. Well, however they'll give it to me, I, uh, if it's legal, then I'm absolutely down because I love shit like this. I I never thought I would do ketamine because it sounds so. It's like, how did the dealer get this? Because it's like an anesthetic. It's like it's a horse tranquilizer. Yeah, I've heard it. I've heard cat tranquilizer. I think vets just have it. I get. Do you have to rob a fucking vet to get the shit? That seems so shitty. <laughs> <laughs> I know a guy who can rob anything. <laughs> Hear me out. He's a crooked jeweler. I, I bet got good shit. I bet if you break into like an animal hospital, that that they've got like the you know the animal version of some really good stuff, but under less scrutiny than a, than a pharmacy or a hospital. Here you go, Kyle. You get uh, caught robbing some dogs. You could probably just. Kyle says there's there's one in Atlanta. That's that link he gave you. Zach linked it. Prescribed by a physician licensed to practice in Georgia, ketamine for off-label treatments is legal. Boom. So you can you can get on it. I I, I was just told by a a friend of mine who's in this business and he sells to doctors all kinds of stuff from MDMA to all the psilocybin ovary. And he talked to me about ketamine. He goes, Larry. He goes, they think they had a uh, opioid addiction crisis in the country. This ketamine is going to be worse. This is what a guy's really? been around for a long time. He said is very, very addictive. Now, yeah. I've done it a couple of times. Again, I didn't have it. He goes, not everybody, I'm always. He goes, yeah, you oh, seem I'm resistant to addiction if you did the opioids like that. Me, yeah. I can't speak to that kind of le- I've done, I forget if I've done two or three trips. I think it's just two so far out of the six. Yeah. So. And, and I'm like, it's been four weeks. I'm not pulling for it or anything. I'm actually behind schedule. You're supposed to take it weekly the idea is that it they call it i don't know how much of this is bullshit but it seems to be in actual research they call it i think neuroplasticity where you're Mm. just a little more influenced 
where you can program yourself to have happy thoughts and be good. And you should take it weekly. So the sort of neuroplasticity sets, it's cumulative. Mm -hmm. I haven't done that properly. I took one, waited two weeks, took the other. It's been like four weeks since then, you know, so I'm not following the program like I'm supposed to. Okay, uh, but it, describe the high to me because this is kind of out of your yeah. uh, your normal sphere of uh, oh. influence. This is this this is different. Everyone's so bad at describing highs, and I'm no better. Mm -hmm. But um, for one, I was in a very good mood. Um, they put me in this sort of set and setting that I was there to work problems out and not waste the high, mm -hmm. right? So I'm like intentionally thinking about. Uh, you know, what to me are the major things in life, like family, finance, relationships, like all that shit. And, uh, you know, what brings what's what brings actual joy and happiness at a deeper level, right? Not mm -hmm. roller coasters, but like fucking fulfillment. And uh, so I'm there like processing those kind of thoughts, you know, getting ready to take notes on it afterwards. And every thought I have is the right one. It's like, aha, you know, this is what fills Jackie's bucket. Aha, this is what fills mine. Like I, I've, I'm rising at these brilliant conclusions. Mm -hmm. And uh, in addition to that, it's just a really sort of happy vibe. I've got the, the music playing that normally I'd get bored to, just like rhythmic sounds and gentle mm -hmm. music. But under ketamine, it is not the least bit boring to me. It is just facilitating and, and happy and joyous. Carry on. Do you think you'd like to just take a whole bunch of it and watch Star Wars? Wouldn't that be f pretty fucking cool? You know, they program me to feel like that's a wasted high, right? To, to be like, you know what, this... I hear you, right? You're like, hey, there's more highs where that came from. But uh, to me, like, I I really got into sort of the... They have... Mind Bloom has audio tracks, right? They're labeled one through six. And uh, if it's your third time doing it, you listen to the third one, and it's sort of a speaker putting you in the mindset to sort out problems and issues and okay um and, that's what and I was do you feel for. do you feel like uh maybe you solved any issues that maybe you didn't even know you had and like, like you know you i've ref I referred back to those notes and i found that my conclusions were good ones and i just need to be reminded of them like ever read a motivational book Mm -hmm. And you come out of it like the best version of yourself, right? You finish seven secrets of highly successful people and you're like, fuck, yes, I am going to start my day with a to-do list and then work it. And I'm just so much better than I was before. Yeah. And then four months later, it wears off. Mm. I refer to my notes and my conclusions and be like, you know, uh, I was supposed to be winning friends and influencing people. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like uh, I refer to my notes and I'm like, you know what? I was right when I said this, you know, like this is, this is what fills Jackie's bucket, for example. That's and uh, I'm you know, gonna I do need this to do as soon this as well. possible. What it, like, I'm going to look at all the like available claims. I don't understand quite how they're able to do this, but there, there's a way to like, just get me a, a whole bunch of ketamine and take it at home while I watch movies. That's all I want, if I'm being Doctors honest. Like, don't I'm, I'm, face a lot of scrutiny, and I like this, it, about what they prescribe, <laughs> right? As, <laughs> as maybe you have some limited experience. Like, hey, all these are legal drugs. They typically They're don't calling it Obi-Wan Kenobi therapy. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like I... I you know, this is a legal drug. It's not usually used for you know this purpose, but it turns out that, you know, if a doctor thinks it's right for you, then you can have it. And the academy maybe falls under a, a, that kind of umbrella. Wow. So we give those doctors a lot of, uh, a lot of leeway, huh? Yeah. Like, like we just kind of just trust whatever they say. So ketamine as a street drug is expensive. Probably a good is idea. What, is what Larry said, right? Like pretty pricey. He did say that. And it's, is it, is it like not safe on the street? Like it's not the quality. I, I don't even know. I don't know shit about ketamine. No, I, I don't either. But I know the guy I was with and I trusted him. Obviously, that's what I always, I always say. But I didn't have anything Woody had with the head. Maybe it was other stuff I was fucked up with or whatever. But, <laughs> it, it, you know, I had the fucking like total feeling he's saying. But I didn't get like I could, you know, my life. Or maybe it was just that we would focus on. I, you know, I oh, try I to run away from shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> in my own way. And so I, everybody has their their outs, you know what I mean? Whatever they do. So, I yeah. hate to bore people with my freaking repetitive mushroom story, but you know, when the the time I did that, that it worked, I was at a campfire with good friends. The set and setting has a big impact on your high, and mm -hmm. probably everyone's done alcohol. That has an impact too, right? Like if your dad's letting you drink and you can't act like an asshole, then 
that's one experience you might have with alcohol. But if you're with your friends and you're like pumping it up and it's okay to be the ridiculous uninhibited version of yourself, mm -hmm. then you get a different experience from alcohol. Ketamine has to be the same way. You know, they just sort of put me in a place where I had some pleasurable deep thinking. So that's really fascinating. I did not yeah. know that you could get you ketamine do it, for these purposes. You got to do it, Taylor. Uh, not at, not at twelve hundred dollars for six of them. Well, no, we'll find a cheaper way. Like, like, like we don't need all that therapy stuff. Like, like he was interested in that, but our, we aren't necessarily. Well, I don't know I, about you, but I, I want to, I want some ketamine. If I was going <laughs> to do it once, I would spend the first one trying the journal thing. Give see me if six I little actually doses. Give anything. me one big dose. <laughs> if, if like if like those fools said trips f two through five at once <laughs> like, do, like do it for the environment if nothing else just br one bottle full like, if after <laughs> if after i take one in journal i'm like let's see what i got and it's like how to fix the amazon lord of the Rings show and it's like okay well i'm just gonna do drugs like, <laughs> this You're was what i was really show. concerned about there's pages of this <laughs> <laughs> And you get insurance to cover it. Oh, I'm I'm so into this. I, I'm gonna do a little more research. I had no idea. You would think when a drug became like willy nilly prescribed that there'd be like, hey everybody, guess what? And like there'd be like yeah. a party, like you in the streets or something, like like uh, a, a ketamine cared. party. <laughs> yeah, a yeah. ketamine <laughs> party, like for real. Like, like, <laughs> I, I figured you would have like a party? Google alert set up for drug legalizations. Is, is your blood yeah. pressure fine, Kyle? I forget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I gave oh, it highest you. in class. <laughs> yeah. Always number one. No, nobody even comes close. At your uh, age, it should be. Mine's uh, also I, fine, but I have to work to keep it fine. And that was a yeah, thing that I, I was I, like, you know, it, it was like it was cool, but that I was worried on like game day that it would be high or something. But it the testosterone um, definitely raises my my uh, mm. my blood pressure. It's just a consequence, and all the red meat I eat, but also raises my uh, raises my blood pressure. And so I have to be really careful with salt. I can't use as much as as I can't salt my meats properly because I eat so much meat. If I'm mm -hmm. like on a bulk, if I'm actually eating like two fucking pounds of meat, just the amount of salt that goes on two pounds of meat a day is a lot, a lot of fucking salt. It's too much salt. But uh, last time I got it done was when I um, got that blood work done maybe two months ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I sent you my BP, whatever it was. I don't remember. Oh, and I, I, would, I, I couldn't tell you what a good one is. I'm not that guy. Oh, 120 I always have to Google. Is the answer. Every time yeah. I do mine, I Google and I'm like, all right, we're good. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, that's my ketamine story. I wanted to tell it. No, sick. I'm I'm so glad that you said that. Uh, yeah, that's I'm, awesome. I'm, I'm super into it. Um, I, I just want to like, I, I want to say how bummed out I am. This is a quick MMA thing for what they're going to do to Nick Diaz in a couple of days. It Nate. seems like, um, yeah, Nate Diaz. It seems criminal that Nate Diaz is a like an old older veteran. Um, and they, it's his last fight on, on his contract and they are making him fight an absolute lion a, at a, at a 175, 170 pound lion of a man who's like 25 years old and is, and destroys everyone. And they're, they're going to make Nate, uh, fight this guy as his last fight. And Nate's such a tough guy. And so it's like a, an actual gangster that he's going to stay in there and, he might never be the same after what's going to happen Saturday night. Like legitimately, he might die. Like, like it could be the first death in MMA. He might be so scarred that it's disgusting to look at. I predict he's going to be spitting blood at this guy and talking shit and smacking him while this guy rearranges his face for 25 minutes. It's going to be a devil's advocate. It How looks close bad. did he come to beating the current champ in his previous fight? Really fucking close. But how did you see what the what Kamzat did to uh, to him, to Gilbert Burns? He just destroyed him. Like, Kamzat is a monster. Oh, oh, oh. I did see that fight. I remember Kamzat winning. Did he finish him? I think he might have in the last yeah, round. I think he finished him. But I remember... I remember, I remember, I remember it, go ahead. I, I could be wrong. I remember it closer than you did, but I'm not, like, fully confident. He's going to get destroyed. It's going to be embarrassing. And, and like, I think it's the that. worst thing I've seen the UFC do in a long time. I, I, think, I think it's bad for their brand what's going to happen Saturday night. Hey, what they did to Ken Shamrock, though, back in the day, uh, when he's fighting Ortiz and he was way out of it, he shouldn't have been, been in the ring at that point. He's my age or close to my age. I kind of yeah. disagree, and here's why. So I, I do agree that there was a bit of a mismatch. The Tito Ortiz, he won he won all three of those fights handily, and he was never in it, it, Right. I mean, yeah. Having said that, 
Those were the most lucrative fights they could have offered Ken Shamrock. And, you know, I remember the third time Ken Shamrock got his ass kicked by Tito Ortiz with this giant feud that they hyped up for years. He hugs him and he's like, dude, we made a lot of money. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know that they did him wrong. He should have been like, Tito, if you weren't retarded, you'd let me win this. You know, (laughs) for for, for the money aspect and the people aspect, I get it. Mm -hmm. Here's what I always say with the fighters. And I knew Angelo Dundee very well. Uh, and not only that, uh, Mark Randaz, who's the cruiserweight champ of the world, is a good friend of mine. And uh, and I sparred with him. It's funny. I told him if he hurts me, I'm going to kill him. Because he hurt <laughs> me two decades. But uh, what happens, and you know this, Woody, they keep taking a pounding. And it just fuck. I mean, you look at the great fighters, the Joe Frazier's, the fucking Muhammad all Ali. Die, they can't even speak. You know I mean? Mm-hmm. It's, and, and as a one of my best friends, the doctor, told me what happens, why boxing and getting hit in the head a lot, which Shamrock did, inside the brain, it goes, the brain goes off the walls and it keeps mm-hmm. damaging it. It's not like just one smash hit. It's getting multiple bangs all the fucking time. So you take, you know, I hope, I agree, I would did the same fucking thing, you know, as, as Ken Shamrock uh, for the money and everything else that went along with it. But, I mean, is he going to be fucked up for it? I don't know. We'll find you can out. See, it, this is different, though. You, you see Nate preparing for this thing, and they're, they're like, how have you been preparing, Nate? And he's like, I quit preparing. This fucking beat me. Like, he's overweight coming into this. He, he didn't train. Like, he's, he's just showing up. He's literally showing up to take his beating and get away with his contract and be a free agent. He, 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 he comes he out there that? like, yeah, comes out there like, I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And he's like, yeah, he, <laughs> Fucking do it. Beat me. <laughs> does, he, does he think he can win? Yeah, it's, it's this happening weekend. Saturday night. It's a it's okay. pay-per-view. And then they double fuck the guy by making that fight card really poor. Like, like he's at the top of the card with nothing beneath it. I'm not gonna buy it because it's not worth the $75. And he gets points of that pay-per-view money. So if they stacked the card and they'd thrown like actually, I think Tony Ferguson is fighting somebody I've never heard of on that card. Here's how shitty it is. It's not the, the kind thing, make him fight Tony. They're both fighting on the same night. They're both mm-hmm. the same size. Those two old guys could have fought and won them, and they both could have retired at the end if, if things went a certain way. But instead, they're just feeding him to an absolute monster who's going to go right on and like face the champ as soon as possible, as soon as they get that whole Usman thing sit sorted. Did you see what Zach wrote? The pre-fight press conference was canceled due to safety concerns. What? Well, were they worried that the two gangs were going to fight each other? Maybe because they do that. I know, I know Kamzat has a history of doing that, um, that fucking cowardly shit that Khabib did and like jumping people set with like seven of his guys at a time. Because they, uh, him and like seven guys went after uh, Paolo Costa the other day at, a, at, at the Let's pause the there. Institute. Nate Diaz's crew does the same thing. Yeah, he's number. a scumbag motherfucker too. I don't like him either. I'm a Conor McGregor man. He's a good. Old fashioned values <laughs> kind of guy. Hey. Family first, Connor McGregor. <laughs> hey, hey, Kyle, I, I beat, they they had an interview tomorrow. We'll be talking about it. The Oliva Cigar Company that I partnered with, they had, an, they had, they wanted a deal with Connor McGregor, like uh-huh. what I got the deal. And after, you know, they had their meeting with him and they go, oh my God, way too difficult to deal with. And, and that's what they were saying. And they ended up getting, you know, getting me for this deal. But it, it's funny, but you mentioned Conor McGregor. I love the fuck. I, I love the crazy motherfucker. I love the way they get crazy. Yeah, they're all awful people, more or less. Um, people don't really like to watch the good guys fight as much uh, for whatever reason. You know, the guys who just have, I'll tell you who I feel bad for, fucking uh, Cheeto Vera. You ever, I saw that guy posing with mm-hmm. his whole family. So Cheeto's posing for his whole family. He just won the fight. And uh, his mm-hmm. daughter has this weird birth defect, this syndrome, uh, where like she's got like big fish eyes bulging out of her head, and her face is all misshapen and shit. And they're like, "Yeah, he's trying to raise money to get her head fixed." I'm like, oh. "Fuck! I hope he gets to fight for the belt." God damn, that fish-eyed girl was so hard to look at. It, it hurt. It was like that oh. Sarah McLaughlin commercial with those little cat kittens with the boogers in their eyes. In the What's his name? Cheeto of... Rivera. Well, I, that's like his nickname. Um, 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 is it Vieira? Like, like ha- for some reason, having you feed it back to me like made it Chivlin race Rivera. out of my mind. Cheeto Vera. That's what's coming to mind. Let me find him. 
Is it Merwin Rivera? Chino Rivera? Marlon Vera by chance? Yeah, Marion. That's it. Oh, now, now look. Now look for his daughter. Or Marlon Mariah. And excuse me. No. Is it Merwin? Oh, M E R W. I found her. Did you? I found her. Yeah. It's very unfortunate. Um, but when I saw that, I was immediately on this guy's side because they were like, "Yeah, every time he fights, he can like afford more surgeries." And I was like, "Oh my god!" When uh, you got to move room. Like, so oh. she has Mobius syndrome. Mo and, oh, that's uh, a terrible movie. <laughs> um. I, I see her picture. I guess we can show it, but we'll try to be respectful. I'd rather. No, 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 no. I made a mistake. No, 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 Take no. it back, Zach. I'm sure you'd respond quick enough. But yeah, um, we are not. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. In like, based on my lessons learned, it was probably a mistake to put her on camera. You know, like I, I'm sure he's has the best of intentions, but um. Now he's exposing her to a level of internet criticism that didn't have to happen. See, that's a big concern right now. With with see, Conor McGregor went after Kamaru Usman on Twitter because Kamaru Usman got kicked in the head the other night, knocked the fuck out. His little girl, I don't know, she's nine, ten, eleven years old. She mm -hmm. sees it. She's sitting right there. She's crying, inconsolable. Like people are trying to be like, "Oh, it's okay. He's fine." He's laying there unconscious with his eyes wide open, and it's on the big screen. Like he looks dead. Of course, he wakes up after 30 seconds or so when he's fine. Um, mm -hmm. But but like Conor McGregor's <laughs> like, how dare you bring your daughter there and expose her to that? Like and it's just like Conor McGregor, you're the big, you're the worst, you're the worst. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Conor, fine, that I wasn't my plan. <laughs> I thought I was gonna win. Uh, <laughs> I yeah, he's like scumbag. He is. He is. I he love knows it. what a dick. Oh, he's you been. know who's worse though? Um, um, who's Andrew uh, Tate is that the guy? Um, I saw. Uh -huh. All right, so if this was uh, like one of those fake fake tweets, then then I'm just wrong. But I saw this like tweet with him, and someone had like a kid with like, I think a kid had like a syndrome like this maybe, and they were dying. I don't know. They need money for a surgery, and they're trying to raise the money on Twitter. And he's like, "The money to save your child is nothing to me. It's nothing. You think I could just I could just flick my fingers and you could have it. Beg me for your child's life." <laughs> for your child's life and i was like that's the most awful thing i've ever seen in a tweet that is, <laughs> is, is a wealthy man telling another grown man that he is a failure as a man because he can't keep his child alive and that he should oh god look at this that is, is real i don't know if it's real see that's the thing oh, oh my yeah. gosh so they, I'm going to read it out loud. Read it for yourself. Uh, I, I, I can't fucking Or have a literate me. friend help you. And there's this uh, kid who needs surgery. It's a GoFundMe. Andrew Tate replies, do you feel like a failure that the amount you need to help your own son is less than a quarter I spent on one of my five cars? I will help you if you ask. It's nothing to me. Your comic books have failed, but I'm a success. Ask nicely and I'll save your son. Good golly. That's, uh, that's the worst thing I've ever seen on Twitter. <laughs> That is despicable. Makes me want to go back into my old days and go back to see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a, I, if that's Christ. real. That's a look like you don't know the backstory behind that. For all I know, that yeah, like, we don't even buddy, know if it's real. But if it we is. don't know if it's real, for all I know, that's like his buddy. Like like if I tweeted that to you, Taylor, or or like vice versa, like it would look insane. But we'd yeah. just be goofing around. It'd be some yeah. weird inside joke we'd come up with. I don't know the backstory of any of that, but if that's all on the up and up, if that's literally a man with a sick child and that's literally a very wealthy, you know, influencer, be it make, tell him to beg for his child's life. That may be the most awful thing I've ever seen on the if internet. If it is real, on Twitter, for I, sure. I also, I, if that is real, I like that it had some likes. So someone who read <laughs> that was like, yeah, fuck them. Like, <laughs> you're right, that, Andrew. Get, they need to get their says, shit together. Zach says it's real, but five to six years old before he was famous. I wonder. I was. I, I'm having a haircut today. I was that talking makes it worse. Barber. He wasn't going for clout or influence. He was being <laughs> he probably was. despicable <laughs> randomly. <laughs> Why did he get canceled? That, did he get canceled for shit like that? Did he get canceled for saying women hit the wall at thirty? And I think that's funny. Or did he get canceled for the it is trafficking? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't get it. He got canceled before I got a chance to get red pilled. So I didn't. I didn't ah, you missed it. You could have been red pilled. I didn't. <laughs> I, 
I didn't like what he was selling because I had that that uh, that other fellow, that Kevin Samuels, whatever his yeah, name is. It's I, gave me. I, I, I preferred okay. his message better. It was less mean. It's um, less me, but it was less concise. Like I, 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 there were always these Kevin Samuels. I'm like, ooh, 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 this title and thumbnail has sucked me in. And it's a 33 minute video. I'm mm-hmm. like, where is your highlight, bro? Like, I don't know. That that was my issue with Kevin Samuels. I have a a prison question. You just did that, that with shorts. You're right. We just did that with shorts now. It, so, I have a prison question that kind of like works for all of us that we can all kind of like meld together a topic. Like, like okay. out here. Like, Hell, what prison did you go to? <laughs> 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 Jessup. I think, I think Taylor spent most of his time down there. Um, no, the um, Rikers. Fuck, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, prison TV, TV in prison. Were there TV shows in prison that everybody were like, oh, it's fucking Thursday night. Such and such is coming on. That's what every TV is going to be on. That's what this TV is definitely going to be on. My, this is my chair, and I've sat it here. You, you, not only can you not sit in my chair, but by, you can't sit in the spot where my chair sits. Was it like that? Before um, Larry goes, I want to make a prediction. The TV show Prison Break, based on the time he was in. Was it popular? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't remember that fucking show. It was I was <laughs> in from ninety six to two thousand seven. So I don't know what prison break was. I watched one and reviewed one series on my channel. You know, there's some bullshit. I I couldn't even get into season two. The guy gets out of prison. It's not prison break anymore. He's got a map <laughs> oh, they go back to prison. <laughs> yeah, he's got a map on his body, some bullshit like that. But no, the show we watched and we used to bet on it and actually have pools on it was Survivor. Oh, I got into that recently. And we would go like out, like now you say we, our group. Then you had black TV rooms, Hispanic TV room, white TV room, and general sports rooms, what they usually have. Mm -hmm. So that's in in, in the prison system. And the TV show, I mean, you do. Also, a lot of people, even I did, used to watch The Wire, if you remember The Wire. Oh, Mm -hmm. The Wire is tremendous. You guys had HBO? Whatever that was on there, I don't know where it came out. We had why. <laughs> why were you watching The Sopranos? We, 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 we did not have TVs. A bit. We had four TVs, and when the guard said lockdown, you're fucked. You know what I mean? And they put them on what they want, technically, but we kind of try to maneuver that to get what we want. Yeah, yeah. And they know. We used to get to watch all sports, uh, like the Super Bowl, all the way to the end, even if it's lockdown. NBA Finals, every game, they wouldn't lock the prison. Most prisons are locked down at 10 o'clock. They'll mm-hmm. let you stay out. You know, out, out into the, out the, you know, to watch the game. Everybody yeah. wants to watch the game, to watch the game. They'll do that for every major sport baseball, basketball, even hockey. So they'll, they'll do that across the board, every prison I was in. Obviously, they don't have to do fucking shit. <laughs> and mm-hmm. all they do is say, for the safe and orderly running of the institution, you know, that's how they work at. Mm-hmm. But, you know, so that is exactly how the prison system works. Were there any, uh, Big fights or arguments over bets on Survivor? Are you kidding me? Uh, stabbings. Uh, fucking one guy got beat with a lock. That was going, that was the biggest thing. We used to put money up and, and pick a guy, you know, and it was fucking, you know, I mean, we'd gather in a fucking TV room. You'd see guys argue with during that fucking thing when they kicked the guy off or whatever. <laughs> yeah. the, 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 what they call that? Like, used to, tribal yeah, council. Tribal council. Tribal council. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Tribal council. And fucking, you'd see fucking two guys get up and start fighting. I mean, fucking, fucking blow out, fucking hit somebody with a fucking, it, it, we fucking, <laughs> went, the next day we're all laughing. Somebody's in hole or nobody got caught. And we <laughs> fucking laugh. So we, we did like that. That was just survival, man. It was a fucking great fucking show. So it was hot. That would be intense survivor watching. You're like, God damn it. If Rudy survives this episode, I got to like go stand by a guard. Like, yeah. like you have to <laughs> take care of yourself. You know, like, you, you know we, we, it's fun. You know, I still to this day, I think they should make a Survivor episode. You know, not, no, not Survivor, Naked and Afraid. You know, the Naked and Afraid thing? Yeah. Put two convicts on that fucking island. <laughs> Put a female felon, ex con, and me, or, uh, you know, one of you, you know, a, a mm-hmm. felon, young felon. Put them on that fucking naked island. I'll bet those motherfuckers will walk through 21 days like it's fucking a joke. <laughs> you think so? They fucking, I was in prison for, I was in the hole for three years. 
Wow. Two fucking years in the fucking mm. hole. 11 straight months. I look at Survivor, I say, I'll sleep for fucking 21 fucking days if that's what the fucking days. You know, it, it's, they don't, I mean, we had it where the roaches are going in your ears, Atlanta. So you used to have to put tissue paper in your ear. Otherwise, roaches will get in your ear and get there and get fucked up. And we had the rats fucking coming under the place. So, I mean, we had all that shit. It wasn't you got like, rapists. There's not rapists in the world. Even woods. worse. You know, worse than a rat. Well, there it, might be. If you guys haven't seen in the last, last month, USP Atlanta Penitentiary is on Senate investigation as a threat to the southeast region of the United States of America. Not to Atlanta, not to Georgia. To the southeast, they left doors open. There's, there's a whole, just Google it. Take you two seconds. Fucking, they, they did this whole fucking, I did this video on it because they still have the rats. They let cats, they left the door open so cats can go in and get all the rats that are in there. Stray cats. They let people fucking leave. They fucking disabled the cameras. The guards did this. Disabled the cameras. The guards were bringing in so much dope that they fucking uh, uh, disabled the fucking drug sniffing equipment in the prison. It's all in this fucking article. I'm like, holy shit, I was there for Jesus. fucking years. I'm on the fucking, I told you, my notary to fame. One of my fans said, you're on the same page as Al Capone. So it's fucking, <laughs> we're laughing so fucking hard. I'm watching this fucking thing about these fucking, all about Atlanta. And they go, they said 33% of the guards are corrupt. Goodbye. I mean, like, just think. You three, one of you are corrupt. <laughs> yeah, one of it. us is earning off of a corrupt prison system. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got stock, you fuck. When, when no, you uh, saw the 33%, were you like, eh, it's higher than that? Well, you know, really, it, 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 that that didn't shock me. What, what, and even the guards bringing in money. We, I was in there when we had a guard. That, we, that he was make, The guard was bringing in dope every week to this one cell. The one inmate was a Latin king. He was making ten thousand a month in prison, in dope, in dope dealing, in and that's in my time. So now that's you know you're talking about nineteen ninety, uh, it was ninety eight, ninety eight, mm. and uh, so ninety eight he's making ten grand a month in prison. He was a killer too. It's crazy motherfucker. This is a this is not on prison, but we should probably talk about it. The queen died. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a oh, real bump. Oh yeah, ninety six. I, that's you know, I just go. like her next to all the presidents. I don't know who the first one she took a picture with was. It might have been Gerald Ford, and then everyone way before that. She How's became, that FDR? She became king in nineteen fifty, a queen. Nineteen hmm. fifty. All right, anyway. one seventy two years now coming on, and or whatever. She's just over seventy years, so maybe fifty two, but. So every president, Long that was while. Eisenhower. Then it was Eisenhower to Kennedy. It, I'm just thinking that. Crazy Dennis, to me. Yeah, I know. It's just how, how many presidents she's taken a picture with. I, I, I You know, I would I might have picked her to outlive Biden. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. I don't remember if any of us had We do a death pool here. I always win it. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I don't remember if we, we did one for like people who are over 50. Or no, over so. no, we did. We only but, did a young um, one most recently. Yeah, uh, so so got those lines out there. I'm sure that I should check to see if that South Atlanta rapper ever got found out. Thirteen like, presidents. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh shit, that is a lot. Yeah, That's I have like as, as an American, like I see it and I'm like, oh, the queen died. Like and like I, it you know doesn't really impact me, but like I gonna- see like people who I follow or like I see all these like viral like tweets from Irish people. They are like. A lot of them are very stoked. That oh, really? That she's dead. Yeah. People in Ireland. There, there was this like huge, like uh, big old uh, viral I was thing. On, uh, <laughs> oh, there's a man. There's I, I was on my way back. Looking like from... it's prom night. <laughs> 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 Look at how little this jacket right. is. <laughs> oh, is. Look that at that. We didn't have time to get our jacket fitted up for prom night. You weren't supposed Look, to that chick on the my... right looks. The chick on the right looks like the fucking sorceress. From uh, from He Man and the Masters of the Universe. Pull that up, Zach. Pull up the Sorceress from oh, He Man yeah. and the Master of the Universe. Do, do you like Trump's Matador suit though? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> fucking Olay. Oh, <laughs> fucking no. Amp Palace. I told you I wanted oh, something really? fancy, <laughs> dude. Like like like, 
our presidents have been embarrassing since uh, since since Obama. As far as like a guy who can go out there and like represent us like physically and and, and like 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 intelligently on the world stage, I feel like it's been embarrassing Bush. since Obama. The last left. two, absolutely. Yeah. I, I I think that Bush was bad. Oh, that's <laughs> that's not even. I'll fucking do it. No, <laughs> Don't I, fucking find it. Tell us what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Because um, now everyone's forgotten the original thing. I, I'm, nah, I'm going I don't I'm know about single minded here, Taylor. I, I got to do this. <laughs> he's just got a one track mind. He's got to get stuff done. <laughs> he's got to be like, there, that's the picture I wanted to compare. Photoshop those together real quick, Zach. Pull up the lab, <laughs> Photoshop those together, do a superimposition, star wipe, <laughs> make it look good. It was all about the star wipe. Oh, just filling up time until Kyle finds his picture. Kyle, come on, get back on mission. What were you talking about? I, I mean, I'm too high to, to do Be two things at once. Friday, right? So I, I, I just the sorceress with the crown yeah, of fucking sure. uh, like like fucking crystals and shit. It's the whole reason that he man is fighting. God damn it! Um, no, I don't remember where we were. Forgive me, I didn't realize how important we were talking this was. about how how <laughs> without He Man sacrifices, none of us would be here today. Okay? Uh, touche. Yeah. Well, he, he won the Cold War. I think you need more. <laughs> we're about Donald, I think we were talking about how uh, Donald Trump was a terrible president. Um, uh, or no, no, no. I, I just no, he, was an, representing he was an embarrassing president and an embarrassing representative on the world stage. And I think Biden equally. So I think that everybody keeps going like, oh, if you zoom out, Biden's not behind red stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. He still. He, he he meanders back and forth between like kind of scary and maniacal and and like old man who's forgotten where he is. I saw him try to move quickly the other day. Kind of, he did the kind of little shuffle, and I swear to God, he did Mr. Burn arms. He did like the Mr. Burn hands, <laughs> and he did like a little shuffle. Like it looked if 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 he were playing a vampire in a play, I'd be like, oh, nice vampire walk, bro. Fucking, you nailed it. How long? Mr. How long you been practicing that, that Dracula? Oh, that's that's cool. like he's doing the Dracula step. That town. I said this today uh, at a at, at meeting, actually, with friends. It's, can't we fucking find a fucking person under fucking 70? This should be a law. They have a 35-year-old minimum age. They should have a 70-year-old maximum age. Because these motherfuckers are just... I, I, we can't find two fucking better people. I want Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay? Yeah. He already got his him. sex scandal out of the way. No one's got better biceps. And the man is a winner, okay? You're making a lot of strong points here. He's I, basically American. Just make him honorary, right? Just say I, he was born in Memphis. Listen, you think it could we're not American. Could he, could he like, knight him with, Indian. like... I hear you, Larry, but you know, like Obama was born in Kenyan and he became president, so... I, That's, I, I, that is a verifiable fact. Donald Trump <laughs> told me that. <laughs> yeah, so if if... if Obama. That's what president. the classified well, files I, I, he had. I, I, was, I guess he had Obama's first certificate. certificate. That's why the <laughs> FBI raided him. That's what those files were. Oh, that were when this all tracks full is circle. True. Mm -hmm. Yep, he had the yeah. Epstein. He had the Epstein fucking uh, like like pervert list too. <laughs> what if? Oh, oh what if it turns oh, out that shit, his that, that his birth his birth certificate turns out shows that he was twins. He was fucking sister sistering his entire presidency. <laughs> I, I, I gotta say, I think Trump would have kicked his ass. Remember, Biden said, "Let's fight." 100%. I think Trump would have kicked his ass. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, not if it's a bicycling race. If like it's, Joe uh, will get lost anyway, he'll never. Yeah, that's, that's true. <laughs> get lost. <laughs> yeah. No, I was supposed to fight someone or something. He, he, I wonder if Donald Trump could ride a bicycle. No, no, he can't ride a bike. You kidding me? Bikes should have the same age yeah, restrictions as politics. Donald I would put money on it. Like, like, like if he needed to ride one, like down the down the street, you know, to the neighbor's house, he totally could. He could I, not up a hill. Crash. Not up a hill. He like, would like, crash that flat or or down. Overhead. He would crash that motherfucking boat. He'd not if it's like a ten speed. If it has yeah. the drop handlebars, I don't think Trump gets it done. We, oh. You know what they should do? You know, you know that roller coaster park, Cedar Point. All mm -hmm. those super fast, fun roller coasters. They all have to run the gamut, do all those roller coasters because I think it might kill the the Here's ones that thought, are too old. Here's a thought, Taylor. Ro put them on the I want a biggest, sexy president. baddest, coolest roller coaster. Last one that stays on becomes president. I, I, I want a, good deal. a sexy. I, <laughs> I want a sexy woman president. That's that's my hope for this. How next about cycle. a fucking competent president? 
Well, get out no, of here, Larry. We are so <laughs> far past that. Get out of here. No. Get the fuck <laughs> out of here. You and your I'm talking <laughs> like uncomfortably back. big tits. Okay. Like, like, so big. And, and, and like if it's if there if anyone ever addresses the president's cleavage, the presidential cleavage, they're immediately mm-hmm. like scorned canceled thrown out of the oh, press yeah. room can you believe yeah, she they puts brought them up on proud display madam always. president Chris, christiana hendrix's breast <laughs> line because that's who i want i want christiana hendrix i think she's canadian i so take awesome. back my saying that i believe in young people <laughs> <laughs> jugs i want nah. <laughs> i want someone who could easily be in jugs magazine to be the president of the united <laughs> states i don't see why not it's been a joke for oh, years yeah. it's been a joke for yeah. years i mean i mean bush seems so dumb bush bush Thanks. for for i know he went to yale and like mm-hmm. there's just part of me that like that doesn't he didn't get up. into yale because of his grades he got in because oh, the president oh, 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 no, no 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 he didn't just get he, into yale he graduated from yale with a degree so, like he has to get through so many barriers every really. professor he's was George, on the take he's George, was no, every no, no, professor no, no, no. I, I'm asking because I don't know. Was every single professor on the take? Wouldn't they need to be? They they don't even have to be. They they're not. How does he pass math? Yeah. How does he pass history? How does no, he no, credit? You, you're giving them all credit, Kyle. If you I look at know. a video, Kyle, that I did on the Daily Show with John Stewart. Okay. Mm-hmm. Fucking, I did it with John Oliver, and it was a clip, and we had Harvard, MBA, MIT, fucking the best fucking students in the world. They would not sign an ethics oath. Legit shit. Look it up on the internet. because I ended up going to speak to these kids. They made it into a funny clip. You know, fucking The Daily mm-hmm. Show. And I've been on there three times. The fucking... I yell at these Harvard and NBA guys. I wish he could put that clip. It's the funniest fucking... It was the funniest clip that year. They really wouldn't sign an ethics oath. You're talking MBA from the best... Like you just said, these schools... That's why I say I think you're putting more credence into this fucking school. You know what the school does for you? It fucking does bullshit, and it fucking gives you connections. It gives you a yeah, motherfucker. Connections, connections are probably the biggest thing. And that's what it's like. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying George Bush isn't an incredibly connected man. What I'm saying is to graduate from Yale with a fucking degree, he has to get credits. Or there would be, there, at the end of the year, if, if you're telling me that he just skipped all of his classes and no one told on him, and then the person who, like, I don't know, counts the credits at the end of the year and puts a stamp on a piece of paper, like, when every professor was like, uh-uh, he didn't go to any of my classes, they were like, fuck you, if you tell anyone about this, his father ran the CIA, and he'll fucking kill you. Actually, your I wife mean, is dead now. Yeah, kill her. <laughs> like, that shit didn't happen. He went to Yale and he graduated with a fucking no, yeah, degree. No, you're, you're like, like, think about the NCAA. Do you think that every single player in college football is, like, actually passing every single class? Yeah. Like I think- they, they they get special treatment. And like, if you think they get special treatment to play tight end, the guy who's the son of the former head of the CIA and former president, no one is failing that guy. No one. And so there are like, people like there at are people no point who academically in his, can't play though. That happens. That rarely, like you have to just say, but fuck you to do that. But that's true, but it's also not the president. I'm saying that at no point in George Bush's tenure at Yale was he like, oh God, I don't know about this geometry test. And the kind I, of I'm, I'm worried about this. And like, the, no, he wasn't. The kind of ball players you're talking about often don't graduate either. They they fucking go into the NFL. They go right to the N- NFL, just like so it doesn't right matter. So like, there's no one to mind any any of that. But you're we're talking about a guy, a famous guy, maybe yeah. top ten most famous people uh, of our time, faked his way through Yale, and nobody's ab- ab- here to rat no, him not, out. Not even fa- no, of, of course. Like it's a it's I like have an institute. The same institute. question yeah. is Kyle. Like like on one level i can kind of get that he's a vip who got special treatment cool on the other hand like he did he just not turn tests in how the mechanics of this work was i mean he like, able to wanna... do, was it hold on was he able to answer the questions wrong and the professor just pretended they were right answers did he give like three quarters credit on every answer for ridic- like at blanks like for how years does, and how years, does someone who can't do the courses get passing grades? You, you Every get, professor's in on it. Yeah, it's not in on it as much. It's I mean, look at how Yale, Harvard, all those institutions are funded. It's pretty much like all legacy, all legacy donations. If you're a legacy of Yale, you are going to get in for the most part. Like like if, if your family goes and your family, like I guarantee the Bushes are donating large amounts of money to the endowment of Yale. Of course, they're going to keep it. Hang on a sec. I just found a bit of it. Do you know what his degree is before before you look? In, 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 in accomplishing missions. 
<laughs> um, he, he got a degree in a Bachelor of Arts degree. Uh, oh, in history. getting in history. pretty reasonable, in isn't history. it? History. <laughs> now it's all starting to add up how this man graduated Yale, and, and, and then everything else makes sense now. He's got a, a silly degree where he probably didn't have to take any real hard uh, classes, like, 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 you know, the kind of classes that an engineer or a yeah. doctor, the your I, typical Yale graduate or a, a legal guy, like, like I, I just... I, 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 I got to go and get you, Kyle. Kyle, every one of these guys, if you make it to the president of the United States, whether you like them or not, they're smart motherfuckers. Some way or the other, they're smart motherfuckers. Oh, absolutely. Uh, you don't get to where they are without either political manipulation, whatever minute, family manipulation. Well, I don't give a fuck what it is. They're smart <laughs> people. I mean, I mean, it's hard to take away the, the, the brains of them. I don't care who they are. Even Trump. Whatever you want to say, they're smart people. Now, I think George Bush is a smart man. I don't think he's quick witted. I don't think he's uh, he's calculating. I Ooh. don't think that George W. Bush. I don't think I I think that he was a puppet of his vice president for his entire first term. I think the second term he tried to grow some balls, and you saw how that went. Um, That's how it, I it, remember it, it too. I still I'm, I've got a little bit on Larry's team here in that I think George W. Bush's competency was in like relating to people, and that he was able to convince and persuade. Oh, yeah. Far better than most people know. I bet if you're in a room with George Bush, you feel like a million bucks and you're on his mm -hmm. team coming out of it. Yeah. Uh, is that enough to be president? I don't know. I don't know yes, how that happened. It was. Ronald Reagan. <laughs> like, like Ronald Reagan was reading a fucking script the whole time. He's just an actor. The fact that they trusted an actor to be, I guess, like, you you know, they're all bullshitters. Yeah, I'm so why not a good him. bullshitter and liar. On my wall, I got, a, I got a plaque. I marched for Reagan in his inaugural parade and I was in the military. And I marched down Pennsylvania Avenue. I got the plaque, the Ronald Wilson Reagan plaque. Thank you for your service. <laughs> 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 Fuck you, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do it about twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you're better than I. I can't get it there yet. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you need Trivax, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I don't think of him as a smart person. Like, 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 and I guess what you, what you mean by smart person, like, matters, right? Like, I think he would be better equipped running a Staples or a Best no, Buy you, department no. store. Every one of those dudes are or, or doing like youth people. baseball camps. Listen, you can say what you want. He's Every that guy. one of those fuckers are smart people. Whatever Your they dentist do. is smarter you than, than George smart Bush in, by a factor in, of in 10. Podcasts and what we do, <laughs> what are you gaming? Or however we all work, we do. These guys uh, are I, smart in, in, in either organizing people, Reagan. Great organizer, put great people around them. That was the best leaders always put the best people around them, the smarter people around them. them. No, I mean, I try to even that. do that. You guys, you know, everybody tries to do that. I do, guys, that, but I don't think Trump did. But you're right. I think Trump, well, his ego wouldn't let him do that. I think that's yeah. his biggest problem. Good policies, bad, bad fucking. I, but by the way, I'm so, I'm so still like confident that Trump's going to be president and none of these charges really? are going to matter uh, because here's what's going to happen. That fucking. Uh, he, he nailed it. Like, like, like he had his appeal about the, all the evidence moved up 30 miles from where it actually happened. And they draw straws to figure out which judge is going to take over the case. He, he got a lucky draw. He got a judge that's his judge that he appointed. And she assigns this special master over the evidence. So we're frozen. Everything's frozen in time. The election is going to move forward. He's in your election mode already. They will not press charges when he's just about to get voted into the White House one way or another. So it's it's, it's over. He's going yeah, to He's the death of the Republican Party. He'll make himself innocent as soon as he wins. Listen, my, as I'm going to win. Bullshit. I'd bet on that. I'll bet with you. I've, I'll make I've we'll already make got too much bet. money out there. I've already got too much money bet. It's hundreds and we'll hundreds. We'll make a side bet. We'll put it online. We'll I have so online. many side bets. It, 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 <laughs> everyone won my what? action. I picked I, Trump, I I picked I Trump to be the president of the United States six months ago. I'm a libertarian, so I have no stake in the game. I owe, that, I've mm -hmm. changed, I believe, less government, but leave me the fuck alone. I don't care who I fuck or drug, whatever, all that. Leave me alone, but, but, but less government. Mm -hmm. But we still need it for certain things. And that, that's just a little, I think most people are like that. Socially liberal, fiscally responsible, hopefully. Most people. I don't really the care. The death anymore. of the Republican Party <laughs> will be fucking Trump in any part of their election. If Ron DeSantis runs for president 
he wins in 2024. I will bet any man here. Oh, I got oh, I got you there then. Oh, yeah. What do you is want? Is he pretty bet? popular? Like, like, I don't want to get crazy or anything. You want if he bucks? runs, if okay, Ron he's gonna run. He, run, he will run, and Trump will stomp him in his own state, or he'll be so close to stomping him in his own state that DeSantis is like, fuck, I can Ron barely DeSantis win won't, my own state. Won't run if Trump runs. Trump will Are run. you sure about that? Trump yeah. is running for his life. You're you're about to see Adderall Trump. He's fucking <laughs> coming. All right, he's fighting for his life. If he loses, Melania. Think you like freak. Sudafed Trump? Where do you see Adderall Trump? <laughs> he's gonna all get into his memes, thirty-eight waist. All those memes of him <laughs> like ripped. No, he's gonna show up fucking for with his A game this time because he's fighting Not for his life. Topic I like. <laughs> Dude, yeah, I, I would think actually. Trump put... loses. I think Trump has lost his magic, and also, I think Trump's message has become too me, 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 me. When Trump went in two thousand sixteen, I... yeah, I'm an idiot. All right, when when he ran in sixteen, he. uh he was like, I, I want to do this wall. I want to do this with foreign policy. What was with this Iran thing? It was all about why. Drain the swamp. The, I love drain the swamp. swamp. Sure, sure. This I'm is like, what he yeah, wanted to do for the country. Him. You go to his rallies now, and it's they're doing me wrong. Can you believe they're doing this to me? What they said about me in Russia, me, 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 is, is his ego won't let him talk about anything but himself the things at he these says, rallies, and it sucks now. The things his magic is gone. Dangerous. He you said know, he had good policies thing. on immigration, I believe. You know, he oh, I like his immigration policies too. Certain good policies that I like. I wanted that wall. That Terrible mess. I mean, you needed to tie it to Mexico didn't money. come up with the money. <laughs> oh, I'd have made it happen. I can't believe he kowtowed to Mexico on that. Like, yeah. like, like how are you going to prompt? That's how you know he never I, when, thought he was going to win. I, I said, when he no, promised no, that Mexico would pay for I it, said, he knew he would never win. I, the, I, oh, biggest, pause there. I, I, I want to go. He would constantly say things that would he knew would be proven wrong later that day in two weeks. Like it, he just seemed. It seemed like if he could get past the next five minutes, he'd worry about five minutes, <laughs> five minutes from now, and he would just tell easily disprovable lies constantly, not worrying about them being disproved because that's a problem for tomorrow, Trump. <laughs> not, today, Trump is doing fine, and he just ran his whole thing that way. Uh, Woody, and it worked. He got three billion dollars worth of free media. Three billion dollars worth of free it was, media. It was wild. That, campaign. Um, that now I have an answer for that too, and, and it's to his credit. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So he would call in to like Fox, Fox and Friends. He'd call into CNN. He would just wake up in the morning and call, 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 call. <laughs> and Jeb Bush is like, "What the heck? Why aren't you showing me as much?" And they're like, "Dude." You're a lead of the primaries. You're second in the primaries right now. You think I won't have you on my show? Call. Trump calls. That's how he gets <laughs> CNN on CNN. Trump is calling. Trump is making this happen. Call me. You think Jeb Bush couldn't have gotten that free press? He didn't. Why? Because he was afraid he'd look dumb? I don't know. That didn't bother Trump. So Trump, Trump was audacious, though. Like, like the thing about it is, I don't think we'd ever seen anyone be so rude and like WWE. Like, 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 all right. So I'll, I'll, do, I'll put it this way. There was, there was SNL and then there was mad TV and, and mad TV didn't have the budget, but what you it had was, it but what, what it had was they, they, they didn't care. They, they would, they would say the dirtier jokes. They would show the messier stuff. And Trump was the mad TV to everybody else's SNL. It, it was like, wait, did he just curse about uh, one of the, one of the Jeb Bush? Is he, is he saying that that man's father is a serial killer. Is he, he was making talking fun of that about guy's height. I remember Did when Trump told us little? his plan for dealing with China. He's like, it's easy to negotiate trade deals. I pick up the phone and say, "Listen to me, motherfucker." I'm like, <laughs> you're you're at the lectern right now. <laughs> like, you yeah. can do that. <laughs> and I said, "Listen to me, idiot. You're gonna pay this much, or I'm gonna kill you." Like, <laughs> no, the, the motherfucker part is important. Like, he yeah. really said that. Oh. And then, oh, and then it killed me. He would get mad because he called Hillary Clinton nasty. Right. He's like, she's a nasty woman. She's not <laughs> nice. And it's like, you have the mouth of a sailor like, and you're calling her nasty. Wait, wait, mouth of a sailor. That's when the girl, the guy and the girl come off the bus and he kisses him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, he, he grab him by the pussy. Right. And just lie yeah. talk it. I he, love that. That didn't matter. Didn't matter. They tried or, really hard to make it matter. <laughs> or it was countered it by the man. fact that Comey announced an investigation into Hillary at about yeah, the same time. I don't know time. if that's bullshit. Listen, Trump just manipulated them. 
I told everybody the biggest con I've ever saw in my life and all the fucking mob shit, everything I ever did is Trump convincing Ohio, Arkansas, Mississippi that he likes them. <laughs> that is the biggest motherfucking con you will ever fucking hear yes. in your life. I, I went and saw him in person. Scumbag. He don't give went, a fuck. He's he's entertaining. I like like I don't look at Trump as like a leader. I, or, or that's not why I went. I wanted to see the fucking show. I, I see it like going to like a WWE wrestling yeah. event and somebody <laughs> being like, "Wait, why'd you go to that? Don't you know that the Undertaker is there? He's a murderer." He's like, Dude, <laughs> I'm going to see the fucking show. <laughs> like, that, you and, know what? There, Donald Everybody Trump went is to on a news. show for you because you never cool. knew what Trump was going to say. No. Nah. Oh my I mean, god. He was, it, it was a master manipulator. The and Washington the full, Post. 150 million people. It just goes to show you. I don't know where you guys are from. I don't worry about it. the fucking middle of the country's IQ has got to be 70. What's <laughs> wrong with that? I mean, like, I, in, that? no, in, in, in defense of like, because because I see this like, oh, I fooled all these people. He doesn't like them. It's like, you realize like the Democrats like were out and out being like, we don't like these people. They're flyover retards. And then Trump was like, Hey, we're, you know, I don't date you as much as them. And it's like, <laughs> and so a lot of people like literally voted like, yeah, this guy is an app more of an outsider. He doesn't seem to outright hate me for being a middle America fuck. So yeah, that's a huge it's reason. So why people no, no, no. Taylor, Taylor, I agree with you. I, I'm just saying mm-hmm. it, it's amazing how, Whenever he said anything, nothing benefited fucking them, whether it's universal. Right. Health, it, well, he it, got in and he did nothing except for the, the, the big tax cut and for the rich, and that was <laughs> just about it. All right, fast forward a couple years. It's election day. You guys are in the voting booth, those of us here who still can. And I can. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm neither can I. And so uh, you go to pull that lever. It's either um, Joe, it, excuse me, it's either uh, Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. Oh, I hate Harris. She's out. Donald Trump. Yeah, I'll throw Trump. You're in not the allowed day. to vote. I'll go Trump so again. It doesn't Boom. matter. You know what? I'll, I'll vote for Trump. you. I'll vote for you, Larry. I can't vote. Him. <laughs> when I go in, I'm going to say this is Larry Lawton's vote, and they're going to say it's a crime, and, and I'm going to say they're going to make you a felon, and yeah. now you don't get a vote at all. And I'm going to say I was joking. I was joking. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Let me tell you why. What's it going to be, Woody? Kamala Harris to me is the worst fucking person on the planet. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know what, Woody? You've won me over. <laughs> now, I'm voting, now, now, I'm, now I'm doubling Woody's vote for Kamala. <laughs> not, like, like, do you know how that might go over well? Nine out of ten felons agreed they would not vote for Kamala Harris. Listen, <laughs> hey, listen, don't go to prison. If you voted for Kamala Harris, <laughs> oh, yeah. too vocal about it. Hope they can't pull that info if you go to jail. Oh, They'll be like, God. "Hey, idiot, you're here now, and you can be exonerated, and she's not going to let you out." Yeah, I, I, y- y- would you vote for Trump? No, 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 sir. We have the evidence. It says that you didn't do it, but it takes a judge to sign, so it might be a while. What if it's Kamala and Michelle Obama on the same ticket? Oh, come on, that's not even a question. I'll, I'll take Michelle Obama fucking over half the fucking Republicans I know. So Forget today, I way. think it was today, they did the... Uh, the uh, I don't like the, her either, The though. unveiling. They did the unveiling of <laughs> Obama's <laughs> presidential portrait. portrait. Now, normally that would have been done by Donald Trump, but he broke a 40-something-year-old tradition of every president unveiling the previous president's uh, official, you know, painting. That, that, mm-hmm. That's a portrait, yes. And so... 
Biden has to do it for for uh, for Obama. And uh, it was actually a really nice ceremony. Like both the first ladies spoke. Joe Biden good like painting. Joe Biden like sucked everybody's dick. Like 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 oh you're so good Obama. You were <laughs> this and that and you sh-. and it, the speech ended like and you still are. <laughs> he's lost all of his hair now and uh, he just like so frailly goes over and obama like i wish that man was like like i wish obama could run for a third term i honestly do oh I like do. some someone yelled they michelle was speaking and someone in the crowd goes i love you michelle and obama goes like gives him like like mean mugs him and it was so funny it was oh like, was like, it did it work out funny like he was making a joke it was hilarious mm-hmm. like, like oh, he, okay. he, he 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 like 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 animatedly like like made a point of being like well, he's a very charismatic <laughs> guy. You yelling at my wife? Here, <laughs> 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 don't you know what I can have done to you? Secret Service, make sure that he knows that she's mine. Hey, Mike! <laughs> no, no, Big Mike, come here. <laughs> See this guy right here. Look at looking that, through the presidential portrait list here. Yeah, I do. I do not like that Obama's doesn't have anything behind him. All the other ones, they've got backgrounds. They've got, especially in the olden days, they had like whole setups, like globes you behind and stuff. You know why? Because Obama's always looking forward. Change. <laughs> what if? <laughs> what if? Um, I'm in the background. You're just letting the artist off. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Biden <laughs> unveils Trump's presidential <laughs> photo and brings the tradition back, uh-huh. does Trump come? Uh, I bet he, not, he would. He doesn't. I bet he go couldn't resist. Pre- he doesn't go to those uh, correspondence dinners. He broke that know, tradition you know, as well. He would not show to be mocked. No matter of anything, you know, especially now. I think oh, we don't do. think he'll show though. I, I'm sure they they would allow. He would have. To. They can't like, I mean, like no, you can't come to your I own mean, portrait unveiling. So much fucking baggage right now. I mean, he's gonna be bombarded with a zillion questions. He won't answer them, obviously, which he shouldn't. So, mm-hmm. but but what does he gain? I mean, do you stay a low key so that people aren't seeing you? Yeah, what about the indictment, Mr. President? About the indictment. This is a guy with narcissistic personality yeah. disorder. He's you showing know, up. being told that he's gonna have a ceremony to honor <laughs> his greatest achievement. <laughs> he might go. You're, what he, he uh, might or or hundred percent, but shouldn't be. It's an interesting though. optic, though, because you're stepping into the lion's den. You're stepping in there with the guy, uh, his home go. field advantage. Biden has all the prestige of the office behind him. He's there. He's at the White House. Like, it could be a bad him. look. By Biden could Biden could win a quick little, you know, well this that and the other while he's on the microphone. He's he's like, you're not a strong man. You're not a strong leader, and uh, that'll be shown to everyone very soon. Not a very good photo either. You know what? You can see yourself out. And he could just peace out, and it would be like... <laughs> Mike's turned off. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> it, you, you, know, you know what? Unpl- unplug the microphone. You got the gun. My microphone. You get your <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking, fucking this is a presidential microphone, oh. yeah. and it's for winners. Yeah, <laughs> he could flex it. so hard, but he doesn't. But he doesn't have the balls. The, the, or, oh, or he the doesn't have the balls to flex, yet. quite frankly. No, <laughs> you know, like... like, like, like Hey, but, we but all you can see where he could he could do some new. some tiny version of that that can make Trump look bad. You know what so I mean? So we want to all bad. make Trump some way. Trump is our fucking thing. This is mine. I mean, like when I think Trump, I think just something fucking great. He's arrested, fucking, you know, something happened to him. Fucking his son is fucking found out. You know, there was a big rumor Jared Kushner told on him about the fucking documents in the fucking house. That's the big rumor. So I'm just waiting for like a mega fucking morning. I get up and it's Trump fucking shoots fucking somebody. Trump jumps off a building or Trump does something fucking crazy because that man can't go out without being the headline of the fucking day. I don't give a fuck what you tell me. That's what he lives for. He And, 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 I, and I listen, it's part of what his success is. No question. If he no could way. get uh if he could get a smart guy behind him to help him run his campaign and tell him the things that people want to hear and the things that people don't want to hear, Mr. President. They don't want to hear it. I know it's true. You know it's true. We both know that you're gonna be a three time president because you won that <laughs> last one. But we can't say that shit. Uh, when good. we're in power, <laughs> we're gonna say it, sir. Here's what we do, sir. Once we're in power, we're gonna say they owe us a third term. And we're coming back for that third term, sir. But we don't talk about that until Operation Downfall is complete. <laughs> and then you get him focused, get him his fucking Adderall, and talk about the fucking wall, talk about fucking Im- immigrants raping women, talk about losing middle America and the Rust Belt, and, and, and talk about all the sweetheart deals the Biden administration. Have a list 
the, have a prop that rolls out like Santa's fucking naughty list and start mm -hmm. start nailing execs, start nailing politicians, both sides, red and blue. Fuck the midterms. We're going for the general election. If he did some shit like that, he could come back and win the presidency. 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 But I think we're going to get like a milder version of that. But the, the best part is he's probably running against that old coop. You know, Kyle, I think you're officially fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, think he's if you good really at it. Think that fucking scenario. This guy's got. Oh, no, I don't he's think he will. I think he should get a fucking goddamn. They got video of other people looking at these documents. Oh, the documents won't crazy matter. Those shit. Uh, it'll be illegal to fucking talk about those documents. Anybody that talks about them will fuck themselves. It'll I be a whole if, thing. If Trump followed Kyle's plan, he <laughs> might win. Having said that, one, I don't think he has the personality for it. He has rock to flag talk eagle. about himself. <laughs> and yeah. uh, I don't know, rock flag eagle? Like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> rock flag it's always eagle. sunny. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, I don't think he has the personality to follow that plan. That holds him back. And... Um, Shit, I had a second point. Oh, oh, I think he's lost his magic quite a lot. You know, he just, people are tired of it. I, I don't know if Trump is great at running a campaign or terrible. Mm -hmm. The only person he beat is Hillary Clinton. One of the most unpopular, highest and negative the entire people Republican to field. Uh, true. Jeb Bush, though, Marco Rubio, like these yeah. weren't heavy hitters. It, those are not he, titans. It was a weak year to win the presidency. The weakest year. Mm -hmm. But... It's literally the first time he ever ran for anything and he became president of the United States. Is he the most fucking successful politician ever yep. or just one in a weak year? I don't know what the answer is. I, I can tell you he lost the rematch or the, the sequel, I should say, mm -hmm. when Joe Biden <laughs> stayed in his basement and raised money on Zoom calls. He had tiny little rallies where people sat in their cars 38 rows deep and, and you know, with 200 people all together and still beat trump how mm -hmm. well they weren't voting for biden they were voting against trump Again, yeah 100%. same i mean the, you know, pretty much he, the same he, reason he, that like he won in 16 people like hated hillary hated her it, yeah can he beat someone who's not somebody hillary? Could do whatever but what kamala what harris is, it, you know obviously any voting any kind of voting we all do it's got to be go to the republicans the republicans democrats the democrats it's, who are you gonna get the independents who are you gonna get those people in that thing and Biden or, uh, knew that the independents hated everything that Trump stood for in that point. And they just said, let's go on the ground. You're right. A, a, a brilliant strategy instead of get a guy who's going to make gaff after gaff. Really, mm -hmm. I mean, is I'm going to get back to the one thing I, I, I really hope this country does somehow, some way, in some way, uh, is get an age limit for presidents because we are fucking just getting older and older people and it's all about politics. It's not about the people. It's I not like it. We all need. It really <laughs> isn't. I like it. You get one of these new guys. If you put like a twenty year old in there, in there, they would ruin our quality of life trying to cling on to their own future, which is already lost. Just so we're all clear, and it ruin our golden years here. Like mm. like the next thirty or forty years are going to be fine, but after that, that's kind of it. We're, we're we're at the end of the 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 night here. This is almost it. I'm with we're about you, to go Kyle. back into the dark time. If I'm president, I'm running on a <laughs> fuck your kids platform. Oh right? no 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 no! That's not the platform. No no no. The smart <laughs> they all do. Not. No no no. Your kid, the platform. <laughs> I, no, you run on the your kids were already fucked before they were born platform. So mm -hmm. just deal with it and so don't try to think like about yourself. Ta don't tax my oil to try to carbon tax me. And I get all that. India and China burns the the. the it's the guys like even your kids, my grandkids, that are gonna solve the fucking all the crazy shit. Cause you, me, at least I'm dead. And I look at it that way, you know, fuck it. You know, mm -hmm. how do I, I, I want to see some of that. They, they've been talking about that, that, that big fucking chunk of ice in Antarctica or whatever, whatever melting for so goddamn long. They've made like eight, they've made so many movies about it. You can watch CGI age as it happens. <laughs> And to the point where I'm like, I just do it. Just fucking melt. Like it's gonna I don't, I even, I don't even believe there's ice up there anymore. I want to <laughs> see that thing melt and fall off. Like I just don't care. I don't care about the snow owls anymore either. Yeah, I think you thing fucking the other day, I'm polar like, bear stranded on a broken piece of ice. Dude, fucking drown, bitch. Me? Fucking drown. I don't give a yeah. shit about polar bears. You know polar what? Polar bear do? wouldn't save me. No, he wouldn't. Not in a fucking heartbeat. He'd eat your he'd eat your fucking liver exactly. and Fuck leave you to bears. bleed out on an ice cap somewhere. <laughs> they need to go south and find some brown bears to fuck and make growler bears and 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 just be chill with the fact that it's a little bit warmer now. I'm voting for Kyle.
This is this is where I'm at. I think you will be my friend. I know I'm free. What did you say, Larry? A vote. I don't know what you said, but it I'm sounds like you're not for Groller. Biden now, after that bullshit, what the? Fuck? We don't want Groller bears. <laughs> Honestly, like Once if we're the being Groller if we're bears, being... clean out all those fucking Canucks up there, then uh-huh. we move into this newly fertile land that that is Canada. Well, we we could do that right now. Canada <laughs> can't stop us. Well, let's wait till it melts. They'll, they'll a little have bit to ask politely, we and we'll now. say, "Oh no, no, we're going to go ahead well, and take it." Canada you know, really like, does seem like a bit of a failed society. Did you see that statistic Listen, I I the other day that said like the sixth, high, the sixth highest, the sixth highest leading cause of death in Canada is euthanasia? <laughs> really, the, the sixth, sixth highest lead? Yeah. yeah. Ah, the sign of a healthy society. Yeah. <laughs> but at least y'all have gun violence. The they don't sixth have highest gun violence. That's a crazy. So it's like heart attacks, cancer. A couple other diseases, yeah. and then optionally killing yourself. Yeah, that is imagine horrifying. COVID unless four chan lied to me. Four chan, yeah, that can't be. You'd be you'd be hard pressed to find a lie on four chan. <laughs> hey, Woody. Yeah, Woody. I'm the old fuck. Right. You're second. Uh huh. Can't do it, Woody. You can't do it like that. I can't do what. You can't be yawning, you fuck. You gotta fucking stay strong. <laughs> well, we are we're fifty five seconds away, gentlemen. <laughs> I'm oh, yeah, so we're... hungry, I'm about to pass out. Uh, yeah, well, you look eating. like you fucking can't fucking lose a few pounds. Just relax, so you'll be all right. I'm working towards ketosis. You're fatter than I am. I am. I <laughs> hey, listen, I went from two six, almost two sixty. I'm down to 225 today. You're living in a glass house, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this fat fuck. Taylor's not easy to push weight. around. <laughs> oh, no. guys, oh I better not catch you in prison. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I better not catch you 40 <laughs> years ago. <laughs> I got to shake this fucking guy. I see him on the street. <laughs> uh, you best, bud. <laughs> no, no, you better hurry up. Old age creeping in. You're right. But if I get you well, from we're all room, short on really time here at DKA. So <laughs> thank you, Larry, so very much for coming on tonight. Um, I, I, I love your stories so very much. Yeah, they were um, great. I enjoyed and, it. Thank uh, you. Very and, funny. Uh, yeah, I, I really did enjoy it. Thank you so much. Go check out Larry's videos. Check out Larry's book. Uh, we'll put links down below. And yeah. Uh, and yeah. Happy yeah. cool. Anything hey, else? guys, I just want to say this too. Thanks for redemption, man. Check Jackson it out. Redemption. But no, for real, honor, all that, I had so much fucking fun. I got to sit here. <laughs> Us too, man. I'm relaxing, having a few drinks, smoking Us a little too. bit, relaxing. You guys are fun. And Keep I'm glad up, Taylor's man. the only I one mean, that listen, had to die. I feel, <laughs> and that's why I do my show, mm-hmm. what we do now. And it's the real deal because the mailman walks in. Fucking, It's just the fucking, you know, it, it is what it is, like this. It felt mm-hmm. like three guys. We felt like four guys in a room. Laughing, joking, having fun. That's that's the way yeah. I love that's why I made my show the way it is. You guys are an inspiration. So, but keep so it going, man. Check I, out Larry's book. I we'll link Larry's it. book below. We'll also link Larry's channel below. Go check out and subscribe to him. Watch his videos. And of course, remember all the wonderful sponsors, Death by Gear Bears, Cum Pills. Lock and buy the fucking cum pills, everyone. Yeah. And that's a sh- and that's a show.